how to register the Smart Giga Arena. First, go to gigaarena.smart on your browser. Click sign in at the upper right corner and enter your smart mobile number. Enter the one-time authentication code sent to your number and agree to the terms and conditions in privacy policy. Personalize your account by choosing your username and profile picture. Congratulations, you've just taken the first step on your path to greatness. Check out upcoming tournaments and play arcade games. Just subscribe to Giga Arena 20 to join. To join tournaments, click the Tournaments tab. Find the perfect tournament with the search option. Find all the details about your chosen tournament and register. Provide your in-game name, ID, and other details. Make sure you have tickets to join. If not, then subscribe to Giga Arena 20 to get two tickets. And you're set. See you at the training grounds. Here, enter.
Okay, class. Uh, finish or not finished? Pass your papers. And uh, have a great weekend. Mahiwaga ang mga araw na ito. Pagkalipas ng dilim ay may bukang liwayway. May urong sulong at adilangan. Huwag mangamba. No buts, winning in game. Para to sa PA yan eh, yes. Di mo matiti na gaming bosses sa new level. Nasa kalye man o mo, well, you know I become a legend. Open fire, we unite, we winners. Built with pressure, the diamonds are made of. Switch in a lane na parang era. HP racing, may reset up. Built na katang buhat ni Hilda. Full load SS, parang Lyra. Susundan ko ang iyong bakas. Kasama pa. Pakita ko na jab like Beast of the Southeast Takas ang matawa Proud and loud Cause every enemy We devour Susundan ko Ang iyong bakas Kasama pa Taas na bumpay Na dito Dahil tayo'y malakas Para sa Pinas Mr. Abin ng lalas Hindi hindi ko waatas Kinikilala sa taas Malakas, kahit anong lane, we become the monsters. Malakas.
The 13th season of MPL Philippines is brought to you by the following sponsors. Smart, the official telco partner of MPL Philippines Season 13. Infinix GT Series, outplay the rest. Experience the MPL PH Season 13 action live at Shooting Gallery Studios. Tickets are now available on our official ticketing partner at SlashEvent.com. Don't miss any MPL PH action by following our official Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Follow MPLPH and TikTok as well for more content. And don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the official accounts of MDL Philippines. To ensure the equality and fairness of our games, MPL Philippines is also monitored and supervised by the Games and Amusements Board. For PM MPLA, for PM MPLA, for PM for PM MPLA, 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 Catch your favorite MPL matches every Friday to Sunday. Only at the MPL Philippines YouTube and TikTok. 4 p.m. MPL na. 4 p.m. MPL na. 4 p.m. MPL na. 4 p.m. MPL na. Maligayang pagdating sa tahanan ng pinakamalalakas ng Mobile Legends Bang Bang players sa buong mundo. I'm Mara Aquino. And my name is Hans Galeria. And this is... MPL Philippines, Philippines Season 13. 13. We're down to the final three games of the week. And after yesterday's bloodbath, what do you think is in store for us today, Hans? I feel like there's a lot of dugo in the land of Dawn now. I really want to prove that our opponents are not just for our hands when we get to the micro. That's why for all of our viewers there, let us know your thoughts because we want to know what you want to do for today. And to give you guys a glimpse of what we're about to see, Let's check out our match schedule. For the first series, it'll be TNC versus Echo. Can the momentum-driven TNC snap Echo's three-match win streak? And we will also know how much of a dark horse Minana is going to be this season as they go up against the world champions, AP Bren. And for the last match of the day, Blacklist International versus Omega, a matchup filled with players and coaches coming from different generations of MPL players. Kaya huwag na natin patagalin pa. Simulan na natin ang ating unang laban. This is TNC Pro Team versus Echo. Casters, paso. Coach Carter, Mr. Miyagi, Coach Anzai, Tic Tac and Ben Things. Sometimes the greatest headlines are written from the sidelines. Welcome to Hawaii at your service. My name is Leo. Here with two of the most eligible bastards in all of esports. It's Renmar Santa Cruz and Wolf. Gentlemen, how are we today? I'm doing great. I am excited. I love your opening there. Yeah. You've, you worked on that for an, a good hour in the talent yeah. group, so I'm glad that you got it done, man. I'm proud of you. Yeah, great intro, but even better introduction to us. Like, what? what's the term? Eligible bachelors. The most yeah. eligible bachelors in all of esports. Yeah. yeah, one thing I can say though, I am trapped in a wealth sandwich right now. Look at that. Look at what? these two. What are, you, what are you talking about? That's well, why you, that's why you have a podium. Success. I'm so lucky. <laughs> We're in for a wealth of action and, of course, wisdom because more than <laughs> the action and the excitement in the Land of Dawn, we're going to be seeing a 1v1 from the sidelines. Coach Ben Things and Coach Tic Tac facing off both outliers in terms of coaching staffs or the lack thereof because they are both lonesome. They, they both stand alone mm -hmm. in yeah. leading their teams. Coach Tic Tac, 
obviously finds this a challenge given that he is now alone. He was previously yeah. joined by coach Trevor and now he also needs to dig deep into the technicals because now he's yeah. both. He's a technical yeah. coach and a life coach. Yeah, and for the longest time, Coach Tic Tac has really just been the dad for Echo and of course instilling the discipline while Coach Trevor handed all the technicals. And uh, I like that uh, even before the hand, Coach Tic Tac was already very vocal about what Coach Trevor brings to the table. He was very aware of his own shortcomings and weaknesses as a coach, mm -hmm. but now he's taking the challenge to heart and it looks like he's yep. ready to take it. And of course, we have to talk about Coach Ben things, right? Uh, he says that it's not much of a challenge because he actually chose to be part of uh, of, of the t of the team to still be part of the team. I think the I, when I talked to him last time, it was probably right after MPL PH season twelve. He told me that the biggest challenge was to actually let go of extra income through creating content because it's always the, the temptation, right? For it's always a temptation for players oh, where sure. you take off a lot of your playing time just because you want to be a content creator, and that was his biggest sacrifice so far. And how soon and how early he made that decision, I, I don't think you would question his dedication. Because even, that was even before he had to finally say, you know what, fine, I'll do it myself. Yeah. yeah. And I, I like that he really decided to go into that. And I feel like it's the difference between the two coaches. Yeah. Of course, ben, Coach Ben thinks, player for the longest time, we always told ourselves yeah. and everyone agreed that he would be a really good coach. And here, yeah. He's finally here. Now, while Coach Tic sort of has like an adjustment period, while Coach Ben thinks was like, no, I'm ready for this. Yeah. Can I share a fun fact? Of course. Go for it. There is just one person, according to Coach Eb, that he can call a Kuya. Kuya means elder brother. There's only literally one person in oh, MPLPH yeah. that he can call Kuya. And that is Archie Tic Tac <laughs> Reyes. Oh, wow. The only person that Coach Eb can actually legitimately call Kuya. I mean, Kuya is a long shot from what I hear he's called in the boot camp, especially when it was the three of them leading the Echo uh, squad. I mean, Coach Tic Tac, Coach Trev, and uh, Ma Mitch. Yeah. They would call him Lolo. They would call him <laughs> old granddad. <laughs> they just straight up call him grandpa. Kind of well. foul, but you know what? I, I feel like Coach Tic Tac has never been truly ashamed of his age. He's yeah. always just been proud of it. Like, look at me. Is. This is a young man's game, but here yeah. I am shining as a coach. And what I like about the, the quote that he shared, actually, is that he acknowledged that he wasn't that technical before. And it, it, that kind of, uh, I don't know, maybe humility or maybe acceptance to whatever your uh, your pedigree is as a coach or as a, as a pro, as part of a pro team, and accepting that and then just learning along the way that's, uh, you know, Great for him. Let's get into the action, and of course, none of this will be possible without the help of our marshals. Ladies and gentlemen, they make sure that everything is fair, everything runs smoothly. We got a Wilbert, Patrick, Jeff, and Chico, who, by the way, has about 6,354 diamonds sitting in his account. That's a Let's lot welcome of our teams. The Phoenix Army have found a foothold towards their charge to the playoffs. With Captain Super Yoshi back at the helm, can they continue to get points against the hot streak of the Orcas and stop the Express? Always rise, it's TNC Pro Team! This is their fourth stop on the road to 12 straight regular season wins. But with TNC on the board and looking to continue their war advance, can the Express get through the army 
Someone looks excited. And so, let's get louder and prouder for Echo! And of course, welcome the two men at the helm, our coaches, Coach Ben Things and Coach Tic Tac. MPL Arena, welcome to the final day of week number two. How rich is this matchup? We focused on the coaches and we've yet to even talk about the players. Folks, here's TNC and finally I think they're with the starting five that they want to see. Super Yoshi back in the Rome. And it was instant. His effect, you saw the confidence in the rotations of TNC Pro Team. Having someone in the Rome who's really used to playing the Rome, leading the charge, TNC looked like a completely different team under Super Yoshi. That isn't to discredit Nomad because when he finally got back into the gold lane, he shone, he shined, he was MVP, he played really well. So I really want to see how well TNC Pro Team will continue this stream with rise and hatred but personally my favorite that i want to see in this matchup is heads they now be comfortable tnc let's talk about echo they're actually using outplayed in zyda now wolf talk to me about this the yeah. last time they did this was season 10 when they would switch week in week out that's right i think i think that echo really wants to make use of every single player that they have uh, making sure that zyda will i don't know maybe marinate in this kind of uh um, environment where you're always playing up against the top teams. You are trying to make uh, the most out of Zyda because there will come a time that Carl TZ will eventually, you know, <laughs> I'm not saying I will be in a few seasons from now, but that is very true for both Carl TZ as well as Ben Cutie. There will come a time that somebody has to take over. I don't want to think about that just yet. Uh, well, yeah, but yeah. you know one thing I realized? Echo loves fielding their MD former MDL players against teams that have MDL players. Heads? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, he's very familiar, and, and Nomad as well. Uh, not Nomad, but Head's very familiar going <laughs> up against outplayed Zyda and even JP. That's right. Yep, and uh, Zyda, JP, uh, and even uh, outplayed. outplayed. MDL champions, yeah. two-time MDL champions. Mm -hmm. And again, you see the breadth of their strategies here. It just fits. It just fits. Uh, anything that stands out come yeah. to their head-to-head uh, -head stats. So what's very interesting about TNC, and, and I, I like to remind everyone, TNC is a team that's only won one out of their three series, right? So they only won, they didn't even win a game last week. They have a high turtle control rate, which means that they really are very good at the early game. And I think that the main reason why TNC lost their previous series was because of their late game, but their early game. You can see that they have really practiced a lot when it comes to their turtle control. So the stats don't lie, they show their improvements on TNC. And I think you can see here, the one stat that Nomad has was turret damage uh, per minute. So that mm -hmm. means early on, they are going to bear down yes. on you. Early on, you're going to feel TNC. That's right. But these stats, a majority of these come from games wherein Nomad was actually not in the gold lane. <laughs> yeah. uh, something to note, folks. TNC is also coming from a fresh win. Uh, just yesterday, they went three games against Blacklist International. Uh, same with Echo here. They went three games against RSG in their last outing. So both teams are actually on high right now. Yeah. Yeah, and they're going to have to continue that, especially uh, in this specific series. Yep, let's talk about the Infinite Keys to Victory, Wolf. What yep. do they have to do? Well, they have to watch out for JP's hero, Oshan, at CNC. It's no longer the hero pool because of how big the pool is for the side of JP. As he's able to uh, pick up many, many different heroes. For Echo, don't hesitate. Go for the heads. Meaning to say that you really have to punish heads this time. I think that Blacklist International lost three of their... Oh, three of the... Well, it was a three-game series, but two of those games that I lost be was because of uh, heads. And then, hold on to your early game advantage. Uh, this is a big problem for TNC because we know that Echo can actually do this. They have done this before. They're really good at taking care of the early game and then snowballing afterwards. But for TNC, that is their main uh, point of improvement. They are really good at the early game, but they just can't finish. Yep, season in, season out. Echo have been working on their turn, have been working on finding a way to be aggressive once more after a mid-game power spike. And we've seen a good amount of it in Season 12, in Season 13. Now, we've seen this very lineup. Yep. The Zyda in the outplayed lineup do just the same uh, against, uh, was it Black Sea International earlier this hey. week? Earlier this week. It was Black Or last Black. week. It was last week, for yeah. sure. No, no, oh, against Omega. Omega, Against yes, Omega. Omega. Omega was ahead, and then 
They just flip the yeah. switch, turn it around, won yeah. that MDL Grand Finals matchup. Yeah, and I feel like that's something TNC Pro Team has to be careful of because we've seen TNC Pro Team, they know how to control games. Yep. Even when it was still Nomad in the room, Yasuo was in the Gold Wayne. Gold Wayne, I do it every, once a season, once a season. Uh, they know how to control games, but they yep. do fall off. So they know now they're they're up against a team that yes we're known uh, Echo is very known for taking control of the game early on and yeah. then they're not gonna let go but they can also make comebacks DNC Pro That's Team right. if they lead the game here they still have to be sharp they still have to be careful even yeah. in their victory yesterday yes. I saw some errors and a little bit overzealousness when they were trying to end the game especially when they're pushing with the Lord I think that yeah. most of like, there's even a, a, the deja vu moment in the bottom lane where they did exactly the same thing and the result was also the same because they were yeah. so aggressive with the Lord push. Yep. Uh, again, uh, watching yesterday's broadcast, TNC definitely need to work on how they use the Lord. Which now we're gonna try to post a question for all of y'all watching online. I'm looking at you. There's this one dude. Stop trying to incite a fight. No, we're all here to enjoy MPLPH. All right. <laughs> now, question: What would you rather have to trade out early? Do you want the Nolan or do you want the X board? Because both are still open. Both are still open here. Oh, whew, that's a. Uh that is a very interesting question. I would say X Borg should have a better, uh, I don't better stock between those two, just because of how much it can bring to big objectives. Going like, into you know, a blind target. draft, yeah, going into exactly, a blind. exactly. I mean, like if you if your enemies uh, allocate so much to just countering X Borg, which is you know, there's a, just only a little bit, only a little pool. When it comes to like uh, X Borg counters, so I think that yeah, surely X Borg should be the priority. But between T Echo and TNC right now, with uh, Nolan being available eventually, oh, no. maybe yeah. um, that's also that also means that um, TNC will just have access to the Novaria, which they really like for the hatred. But they ban it out oh, themselves. Okay, enough. good read. Well, I mean, Sanji does play a really mean Novaria, so understandable. So that baits Echo, I think, into thinking about picking up the Nolan. first pick Vexana. Uh, but then the Nolan is available as well. Ooh. So it's like, okay, take this Echo, you can take the Nolan, but we want to get things like the Vex and Ruby maybe. Yeah. Oh no, TNC, love that Ruby. Yeah. Yoshi rhymes with you, Ruby, and there's a reason why. Yeah, yeah. played really well yesterday. Exactly. It did. So this could this could actually be a Ruby stay, uh, stay night pick coming out from Echo. There's a, a big chance of that. What? No, you, Wolf, would they? Would they? First um, pick Ruby just to take it away from Yoshi? It, okay, well, that is definitely a, a surprise for me. That's a swerve. That's a big they're, swerve. They're letting through the Vex, letting through the Val, letting through the Nolan. Yeah. So you go Valentina coming out from a TNC. Do you pick up the Ruby this time or do you just go for the Nolan? Or are we just in that realm where, okay, we don't like Nolan anyways? <laughs> there's, a, there, there's a chance. I mean... I feel like with two teams who know how to control the early game really well, maybe both of them are quite hesitant to play someone of an assassin type. Yeah. They want to play those junglers that even if invaded should be able to handle well. Yeah, no one wants to no know one right now. Yep. Wow. And Valentina, uh, we talked about this in uh, back, uh, back in the talent room. She's making a big comeback. That's right. Valentina, um, in the absence of Novaria, you look for a mage that can actually output the damage in the early game. I'm oh, sorry, in the, in the team fights. Obviously, that is uh, an option. Okay, we're back to normal, boys. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What do you pair this up with? There is still is there still is the X Borg. We know. Um, and usually, when you go carry plus the Nolan, you want to look for an uh, or sustained kind of EXP laner somewhere yeah. along the lines of X Borg, Teresla, even uh, CC? Oh, no. well, Ruby is uh, always an option. Oh, eventually yeah. they get away with a steal. Yeah. Uh, but it's not the steal that we were all expecting. Yep. Yeah. We were expecting them to take it away from Yoshi, but now it's clear Yoshi's going to be picking up the uh, Minotaur. Yeah. What does Heads play here? I think mm. it will reserve it until last. It has uh, that Benedetta that's unforgettable from yesterday. So I think you, you're better off g just getting the Claude now if you're TNC. Oh. Just to make sure that you know you have a good marksman. marksman in the late game. Yeah, Claude. Maybe they'll even consider getting that little... Big dinosaur with the little guy oh, on top yeah. of it, the Barrett. Yeah. But, I, but I do like the idea of pick, picking up the Claude now, uh, yeah. just so that they don't have to fight for Marksman in the second phase. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, but it's easy. Interesting. Okay, heroes that cannot be bullied, essentially, in yeah. the uh, in the side lanes. Then you ban x -Borg now, or if you're TNC, right? Oh wow, you, you just set it up, you just make sure heads wins. Yeah. It's always heads, no tails. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, there. Predicted. Okay. Sometimes you gotta make your own luck, right? Yep. And also. It's funny, but it's true. Yeah. <laughs> it is. 
Uh, um, that's X Ward, like uh, your favorite uh, voice line. If I'm, uh, am Let I right? Amongst many, amongst <laughs> many, <laughs> amongst many. And uh, I would have, I would have actually guessed the Baksha as well for TNC, but they kind of put themselves in a spot where Ryzen needs to kind of uh, pick up, pick up a different hero this time. And the, ha not having access to the Baksha is kind of uh, difficult now for TNC because w you're going to be left with either Barretts or Martis. And I think, or, and Fredrin obviously Fredrin, is there. Yeah. But you don't want to use the Fredrin when there is when there's good front to back from Echo, like yep. carry yeah. as well as Ruby. So it's likely just the Barats. Yeah, Barats. So just the Barats or the Martis. Martis. Yeah, uh, at least that way you get a minus one. And I get it. Fredrin is will that be a roll? difficult. Is that a roll? Oh. They're considered. They were thinking that the glue would go like it, man. there. No Interesting. This might just be a Martis. Pretty good pull. Yeah. Look good. at this young man. Oh. Okay. Oh, oh. Uh, not bad. Look, did he get lightboard out of that? Yeah, lightboard. It's a uh, higher th lightboard. Oh. I feel like in any other time we would have gotten high for a lightboard, but at this point yeah. there were so many skins that so we're just like, hey, lightboard. Yeah. Still beautiful, by the way. Still beautiful. Okay, so you're you're gonna be left with Martis here, right? Here, TNC. And it could be a good like. Is a singular ruby enough to stop a Fanny? No. No. What ah. if? But. But. No, there, never mind. There, there is that potential of a Kaja still for Echo, and oh, then yeah. you put... Okay. Oh, oh. baby Dyroth! Oh. The Dyroth jungle, right? No, this is Dyroth XP lane. XP lane. Against, oh, against the CC. Yes, 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 yes. And speaking of... And you need kind of, some kind of poke, which means that Vexana being, still being open up at this point. It's... Oh, no, Vex. Yeah. This is really good. I, I think yeah. Echo created a very aggressive and hard-hitting lineup. Yeah. I think the Claude is ju just makes a lot of sense here for TNC. Agreed. That's your main late game hero. Safe too. Yeah. Very safe as well. There's not much that can actually be a problem. Maybe the, the Nolan is going to be a problem, but you have Wind of Nature anyways. True. So I think uh, just the Claude is just a, a good closer. For Oddly this enough, hero. TNC's draft is very slippery. Yeah. If they need to protect their cores, I'm talking about the gold lane and the mid laner. Yeah. They can. Yeah. Yeah. Does look good for them that way. What? And. There was something that you mentioned uh, to us, Leo, where it seems like m the meta now does favor dive. Yep. Uh, again, just looking at what heroes are big, yeah. the trinities from roll to roll, they yeah. all seem to play from either close range or oh. mid range. And okay. Wait, oh! no! This is this is this from the, last night. Okay. Is this okay. the fabled gold lane Roger? Yep. Yes, it is. We saw this last night. MPL yes, Indonesia. Is. RRQ versus Evos, Evos in the classic derby, game That's number right. three. Skyla. And they won it. Skyla. 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 Oh, wow. <laughs> but now it's no mid. No mid. No mid. All right. Okay. Folks, again, I know you're part of this. 81% to Echo, who is still, by the way, undefeated. They've lost games, yes, but not a single series. Can TNC yeah. snap that? Well, it's going to be a difficult. Um, the task always. I think of for TNC, every single series that they play now is uh, always a tall order just because of the fact that teams have already established their chemistry. I mean, look at this team. Yeah. Even when you know that there is, there are two new players, young players from MDL, we know their caliber. They have played in the MPL before they played in MDL. That's how strong this team is. They've been round the block and here they still stand. Welcome to game one, the first in this best of three. Two teams racing to get three points after tonight's bout. It's TNC and Echo. Early rotations, both are purple. No. Assassin Emblem, I think, it should be the way here for the Roger. And we've seen like a Vengeance Roger, but oh, wow. okay. So that's the thing. That's why you go for the uh, Roger versus the carry because when it comes to range, you, there are so many ways for you to kind of win the lane with that, especially because you have the extra movement speed where you can cut the minion waves, as you saw with Nomad, able to poke outplayed. Yeah, I just want to say quickly, carries have been having bad days. Last night it was a Freya, now it's this one. Yeah. No one's safe. Meanwhile, Yoshi is getting poked down here by Zyda, unless Zyda wants to commit it, nope. Still just playing around that little wander, everything's chill. Yeah. What? I wonder. So Super Yoshi went for the tank Minotaur, but even, uh, you know, despite that fact, I mean, still is taking so much damage from this Nolan. Really, teams have started to give the Nolan, um, you know, they kind of they kind of give away the mm -hmm. Nolan. That's what I'm trying to say. And yeah. I think uh, Nolan's just such a strong hero. And I'm not sure uh, um, whether or not TNC is actually prepared for this Nolan. 
I think the only good hero here is uh, definitely this uh, Minotaur, but that will come into the late game where you can save your teammates and also kind of punish the Nolan, but it's uh, it's not an easy thing to do. Truth be told, Kaisama, I thought you were going to say Nolan has evolved in his play style because he used to play very differently when Fracture had that CC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now, again, maybe because teams are so willing to let him go, let him through, we yeah. might be going the route of Lancelot season 8, season 9, where he had to change his play style to change the way he affected the meta game. First yeah. hurdle, spawned up already. Echo with a small lead, 300 gold. I like how there's a little duel here in the EXP lane while well, the Nolan's getting spotted by Super Yoshi's Minotaur. There's going to be no contest what? by Echo, but Sanford not going to be going after Ryzen. So TNC Pro team, again, they're continuing their trend of just wanting to control the early to mid game. 76% yep. turtle control rate for TNC, despite them losing their first four matches. We know for sure that they have something prepared against teams, and that's the early yep. game. Man, I've never seen a Martise hit a turtle so fast alone and actually score it like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even I yeah. wouldn't dare do that in my own ranked games. Yeah, it's right. been a while. I mean, Dean. But that was, uh, yeah, yeah, Mr. Dean. That's right. <laughs> yep. That means that it was Super Yoshi that actually allowed for it. And Renmar, uh, I mean, Reptar pointed it out. <laughs> Super Yoshi spotted out where uh, Zaida would play. Yeah, Super Whoa. Yoshi going to be going in. And that's going to be a massive pull coming in by Hatred as the Ruby, as the Valentina. But that's going to be Decimation by Ryzen. Early blood. First one, but that's going to be a counter. Super oh! Yoshi with a massive knock up, but it's not going to be able to help Ryzen get away. Echo, trade it out. Oh, it's the rifts. It's the delayed damage from Nolan's passive that took down Martiz. That's going to be explosive. Definitely good for Echo because they punished Ryzen. And not only that, oh, yeah. that's a kill for the Nolan. And you always want early kills if you're an assassin jungler. Yeah. And you mentioned something about uh, changing the playstyle, similar to the old Lancelot, uh, Leo. I, I feel like there's a time where the more players seem to forget about like what heroes do, the more they get a little bit careless, a little bit too uh, overzealous going up against them. They're like, oh, he can poke me. Later, I'm going to get him back. He has no CC. I feel like sometimes, I feel like that's where we are now in this era of yeah. Nolan. Like, people just tend to forget uh, just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Which circles back to what Kaisam said, like, he can't believe TNT just let it through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's going on? Turtle spawning here in just 10. Uh, yeah. Relative oh, peace up top. Again, uh, yeah. earlier it was Nomad who was just super aggressive and outplayed. Why the change in uh, tempo up top? Well, definitely some of the occasional visits to the top lane kind of made it difficult for Second Nomad. turtle, there's going to be an entry in. Super Yoshi gets knocked up. Eternal Guard already out. EG committed. Echo trying to find an opening, TNT as well. Ryzen dancing around Sanford. Hatred and heads though on the back of Echo. They're gonna try to chase after Zyda who gets away, but Hatred gonna get punished. Super Yoshi jumps Yoshi. in. A massive heal as well from the Motivation Raw, but he gets picked off by the Nolan. Minotaur goes down. Ryzen and Hatred try to take down JP, just see if they can get a trade after it. Yes, they do! Decimation! Make it two! Dump off for Ryzen, will it be three? Bang! For the jungler of TNT! Mean Dean strikes again. He does get traded out earlier on but he comes back with a vengeance oh my god the mean dean that's a ryzen but actually i would like to credit the heads because of the way that he managed or you know uh he defended against zyda didn't let go of the grip of the zyda zyda eventually gets a kill of super yoshi but he cannot position himself on uh, to the turtle and that delay on the turtle for tnc gave them three kills a bonus turtle to go with that and a lot of gold back in their favor oh, oh. man top lane no man and outplayed. It's a duel. Get it out. Oh, will no man actually fall to outplayed here? No, he won't. Still a little bit of a fighter, so he'll be able to get away. I like the tracking of these two yeah. teams. Uh, they're targeting uh, when it comes to the big team fights. That's right. And that's Thunderbelt. Uh, Thunderbelt Roger. That's why he felt a little bit tanky. Oh, oh, they're going for the heads. Vengeance committed. Is it actually going to be enough to survive? What? Yes, it is. The damage of the CC stopping Zyda from chasing him down. He got max stacks. Yeah. Them yo-yos were yeah. helping with Ten the lifesteal and the spell vamp. Whoa. Yep. What would win? Literally time-traveling blades or yo-yos? <laughs> I like uh, this question. Yo-yos apparently. Is it full moon now? Oh, stolen. Grand Theft Orange by Ryzen. And JP not going to be able to get the pull. And TNC back off. Again, signature TNC playstyle. They are giving a lot of difficulty to Echo. Yeah. But then again, when it comes to the economy, Echo still is oh. ahead for a little bit. Great news for the Nolan, obviously. Especially because Zyda hasn't died yet. So 
That's a really a good tell whoa, whoa, of whoa, whoa, whoa. good early game. AG committed. A lot of damage onto the right hand side. Is it going to be able to get a fracture? Oh, very close to the damage coming out from the Vixana as well. TNC Pro Team, 26 seconds before the turtle spawns. They're now going to be going up top. No, does he know? He feels it. He senses it. Oh. Super Yoshi nearby, though. They go gonna commit to play. They pull Yoshi. Is Yoshi gonna be able to get away? We know when Fury committed. A little bit of a knock-up, but they're just trying to delay the inevitable. Maybe Outplay not gonna be able to get the third just yet, but Nomad goes in! Nomad goes what? in! And he gets punished! No, he does not! He survives, but the turret falls! Literally the same thoughts! Again, yeah. he was trying to save the turret, but why would he put himself in such harm? I think he wanted to go for the pounce coming out for the Nikon pounce onto a minion, the cart. He wants to kind of jump to the carry first and then jump to the minion, but it yeah, didn't happen. Wait. That makes sense. Super Yoshi taking a lot of damage, already forced to use the flicker. Heads now has to substitute as a roamer who's going to be able to get this turtle here. The last one, that's going to be going to Ryzen! Mean Dean, Dean Machine, oh, everything in between. Ryzen though falls, he gets punished there, shut down, killing spree by Echo. They've lost the objectives, but I think this means the mid lane might be open unless TNC is going to be able to stop it. Let's see. Can they get the mid lane turret? There's going to be a big prize for Echo if they do. They're going to be getting resources in the jungle. They don't get the turret. Who wins that out? I think that's definitely Echo. They got a kill onto Ryzen, and then they got the purple buff as well. And Zyda is level is 300 right now. Oh. About 1.2k ahead of his matchup. And th that will just compound into the tur the Lord fights. I mean, obviously TNC got the first three turtles, but that doesn't mean that they will have a great time in the mid game, especially yeah. because they're losing towers as well. All right, let me help count their blessings for the Phoenix, right? At least they have a small gold lead and they're still waiting for Hatred to actually come online. We haven't really seen Jailor do much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he's, he's just been chronic biding his time as well. Because I, I think we've seen, like, especially yesterday, Hatred sort of just like a secondary setter as well uh -oh. for TNSP, especially as a Valentina. They spot out Yoshi, Echo, are they going to be able to take him down? Minoan Fury committed to gets knocked up. TNC still not completely in position to commit. Curtain Call was tossed out there by Heads, but no, they're not going to engage. Whew. And that is actually uh, Vex, uh, that's the Mino Minon Fury committed. I think the Vexana ultimate has faster cooldown compared to that one. It's gonna be uh, gonna be TNC just you know scratching their heads over that play. But then again, they did not lose their mid lane turret, and that's always a good news for TNC. Yeah, and I think I'm understanding also why Sanji hurts. They have to prioritize the physical uh, defense first. Three dreadnought yeah, armors, right. but uh, magic defense not quite there yet for TNC. That's right. It's understandable because they're playing against an Olin. Yeah. And right now, uh, you can see that they're keeping up the pressure again. Wherever TNC is not, there be a member of Echo just shrinking the map. So it's going to be so much more difficult for Nomad to actually make the most of the kit that we once thought would make it easier for him to lane. Uh, this is a Roger that can't go hunting. He's forced to be babysat by the three chunky players from TNC. Ooh. Okay. Missed out. Okay. All right. Okay. He's able to use that with his innate crowd control. Vulnerability, immunity, mm -hmm. just a bit. Mm. That's a, it's kind of weird, but yeah. it's a flicker. That's no longer available for JP qu for quite a while. But look at the minion management coming up from Echo. Yeah. Uh oh, it's really good right now. Oh, Zyda just picked up the Blade of Despair. Oh. The sad Sword, extra tears. Sad Sword. For TNC. Lord Dance. Here with... Oh, oh there's a pull! Oh, entry! Hadrian finds his moment. He finds a bullet to the Vexana. There's a lot of magic damage going on the side of Echo right now. But a pull as well from JP. He doesn't need the flicker, but the counter punch by TNT. They take down the Ruby. They take down three. Double kill once again for Ryzen. Making the most out of the Decimate. 6-2-0 and oh on Mean Dean Sumagi. Just a thousand gold now ahead. TNT making a beeline for the Lord. Okay, heads. Goes forward, Nomad as well. Curtain call onto two members of Echo. Well, TNC Pro Team, they're gonna be able to get this without a problem. And look at Jailor just staking down the mid lane turret to go with it after outputting so much damage in the previous team fight. With the way that he positioned his Valentina, he transitioned into taking the turret while they were taking the Lord. And by the way, Nomad actually played that so well. Didn't even have to pop the Purify. His positioning was so good and he was able to make full advantage of the Lycan Pounce. Using the animation uh, cancel as well. All right, Kaisam, Renmark, and I just appreciate these two heroes from TNC, the Roger and the Martise. Wait, oh, we'll no talk about man. it if he survives. He does. All right, he does. He does. Cool. 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 They're both building <laughs> hybrid fighter. 
Yeah. Oh. And I appreciate that because usually when you see most Martises in the current metagame, they're all just full tank. Yeah. But Dean said, you know what, I'm ahead. Okay. Usually, if, if I don't lean hard into this, we're going to oh. lose and I'm not going to be a threat. He builds the Hunter Strike. Who does that? Yeah. Only uh. the mean Dean does that. <laughs> Only the mean Dean. He's a bit of a machine so far. 6-2-0 and oh for Ryzen Smartis. Received. Anyone's going to commit anything into this? Nope. TNT are oh. just doing management while Echo's doing their own management in the bottom lane, outplayed with a split push. Dear God, the former team captain of MDL's championship squad just taken off the map. You know what? Y'all don't know where I am. I'm just going <laughs> to slowly shrink it. And again, I think TNC can afford that now, but yeah. they have to be. They have to oh, make JB most with a massive three month. Three man pull as the Ruby. I'm at a loss for words. The CSC Pro team at a loss for life. Oh. They've only somehow lost one. Let's see if they'll be able to get away from this. The members of Echo are still going to be chasing TNC. The Echo Express unstoppable. Yoshi. But they can't reach Yossi. He jumps. He flickers. He doesn't get away. The chase gets completed. The three man pull. The, the three man pull. The three man pull just opened up the map and TNC wasn't expecting that. Absolutely. It was a little bit of a. A little bit of loss when it comes to the damage output of Echo when uh, JP is not able to land that ultimate, but now this time he lands it out to three. The big one. The big one. I mean, he he missed some of those shots, but man, when he hits JP, come on, dude. Oh. You can see it. But I guess the only sacrifice there for Echo was a little bit of damage. Well, not a little bit, but 75% damage to the turret up top. But uh, the, the, re the, the, the fact of the matter is it's still standing, so they're still pretty good. All yeah. right, it looks like old habits die hard. We <laughs> talked about it in the pregame, and TNC still struggles to make the most of their Lord. Yes. Yeah. They seem to have a, some trouble making the most of this major objective. Yes, they did get away with, uh, uh, I'd like to correct you, Wolf, maybe 80% of the turn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, you're and, right. But they lost in the end. They lost, what, uh, two pickoffs That's and right, then yeah. negative 400 gold. That's right. Uh, and it's kind of sad because if you look back at the past of TNC Pro Team, let's bring it back to just even last season. I feel like we've been seeing the same things since season 12. They know how to control the early game, mid game, and the games where they're leading it. And then somehow around maybe the first, second Lord, something slips, their formation gets red, or maybe they just look like they're scrambling a bit in terms of the map control. I mean, what's yep. going on? Oh, the oh. burst. Oh, that's a rush. Yep. Yep. Right under the noses of TNC, yep. Echo gets it. And this is not the first time that TNC, that this happened to TNC, actually. <laughs> if you remember when they went up against Blackness International, that's always their problem. Their map control needs a lot of fixing. So it, I would say it's not a Blacklist thing when they face yeah. off. I mean, Blacklist is given very strong when it comes to the Lord take. But TNC definitely has to work on that right now. For they're sure. down 4,000 gold. Uh, they have a respectable kit on a majority of their heroes. Their cores are functional, dare I say. Something to note, Wolf, check this out. The dire hit on the Nomad's Roger. Yeah. Well, I'd like to remind everyone that you usually will not get into that zone where you have the blessing anyway so oh. it's just a free 20 percent uh upgrade on your gold with, with assists yeah. <laughs> that's just it oh basically. jp going in big ultimate as well eternal guard and it's gonna be a punisher to yoshi yoshi goes down rising broad low he's forced to go back echo now with a man advantage let's see if they're gonna continue this it looks good for them they don't have the lord will they risk it they were able to spend some utilities on the side of TNC Pro Team. Echo still looming. Are they overstaying or are they waiting? What are they looking for? Are they going to find the entry? They got to pull their other heads. Heads gets bursted down by the Dyroth, by the Nolan. Ryzen could be up next, or maybe it's the base, or maybe it is. Echo's time to win the game. TNC Pro Team falls to the Express in game number one. The Orcas find the turning point. Make the drift, switch it up into high gear, and take the first game. Yeah, it was the shift in the gears. I think that's definitely like that? the best, uh, <laughs> the best metaphor that we can use because they were kind of chill in the first stages of the game. And obviously, TNC are getting everything in the in the first eight minutes. But come the eight minute mark, when you saw that outplay can now be activated as well as Zyda just making. You know, making a, a, a lot of rounds around the formation of TNC. That's when they found the, sh the the opening to shift their gears. You like that? Because 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 they're they got the racing gear. Right? Yeah. yeah. It's like I prepared for it. It's like I wrote it down. Yeah. Wow. F1. All right. So with that said, it's it's not just because Echo switched gears or Echo found uh, that 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 slipstream, uh, so to say, on the race to scoring the first game. I. 
like to think that there was a lot that TNC could work on yes. too. Because yeah. they definitely had that window in time, I'd say, again, I, I would stand corrected when we see the highlights, but at minute 9, minute 10, wherein yeah. it was clearly theirs, uh, and then they got that turn into that purple side for Echo, and then the Lord take. But then something slipped, uh, yeah. and it all started by that one moment down bottom when Outplay was exactly. left alone, and then... Exactly. What, what, what was that, gentlemen? What was, Echo, what was TNC thinking that allowed for Echo to get there? Oh. I just want to say, Wolf, it feels like TNC Pro Team needs to uh, really take care of their minion wave management. Yes, Especially sir. once they snowball, it's like they forget they have minions sometimes. That's very true. And I think that this is not only the, not the only game that we can look at and say that, yeah, surely TNC's map control and minion wave control needs improvement. But then again, we have to look at the victors of this game. Obviously, it will not be... It will not be easy for Echo had it not been for Outplayed's positioning. 2-0-3, oh, 63% kill participation, wonderful recovery up top when he lost so much health against uh, Nomad on this Roger, but then eventually he found his opening and then stabilized that lane. But let's look at the highlights. Mean Dean making a lot of progress in the early stages. However, Zyda just looks for a proper angle. But then look at this. Hetz is able to do his job to make it difficult for Zyda to position himself around the turtle area, which I think it should be the way, should be the way to go for TNC. But in the latter portions, Heads on the CC was not activated anymore, right? So this is just a seven minute mark where they will get away with murder. I believe that there will be a kill on Horizon after this one, but uh, TNC, they're still in control after this. And then the first Lord fight, you would think that Echo will win this, but because of heads and as well as uh, as well as the Roger just outputting damage. Look at how he utilized the Lycan Pass to get from right to left, and then keep himself up, with, you know, uh, dodging some of those. But then this is the turning point. JP just found an opening onto three. He snagged that. What was the term you were in? Three man pool. What's that? Three man pool. Three man pool. Three man pool. But then in the end, Echo had so many resources. Three waves of big minions. And not, not a lot of defense from the side of TNC. Still can't get over the three man pool. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I, was, I just got so excited. Yeah. Well, let's look at some of the uh, important emblems here. I think the only difference, or the only non standard um, emblem set should be from Nomad, who went for the assassin emblem. But look at how tanky the Roger can be, even when he's rocking the assassin emblem. Also true for Super Yoshi, who went for the tank emblem. Remember, yesterday we saw Ogwen actually utilize the support emblem on the Minotaur. But yeah. this time he went for the tank emblem. Still is not enough against the damage output of Echo. I would dare say that sometimes in MLBB games, if you pick the strongest heroes in the meta game, it looks very easy. Carry as well as Nolan, we know that they're the strongest heroes. Like stat, pound for pound, you know, when it comes yeah. to their stats. And it looks very easy and very fluid to look for damage output from these players or heroes just because of how strong they are. And that is why Rich Guy the carry is Zyda and now played. Yeah. And uh, obviously we can see that from uh, TNC's perspective, it kind of looked so difficult for them to output the damage. But then if you look at their composition, now you'll know, despite them rocking this Minotaur, they don't necessarily have the AOE to back yeah. it up. Usually uh. when you go for a Minotaur, you want to combo it up with big ultimates or big you know, AOE damage dealers like Vexana, for example, or, or maybe you know, Aurora, perhaps. I'm yeah. just making stuff up. But yeah, single target Martis, Roger, mm -hmm. and then CC as well. There's not much AOE that can come from TNC. All right, more on the Game 1 analysis and, of course, what this means going into Game 2 as we try to go 4-3, uh, speaking on behalf of TNC. But first off, I'd like to remind everyone that the Leslie and Changi Aspirant skins are available now. The first one draw every day is, uh, and the first 10 draws are actually 50% off, so get to the event now. Yeah, an unknown epic skin is guaranteed on the first 10 draws, so go ahead and grab them now. All right, so with that said, uh, I'd like to go ahead and uh, acknowledge Infinix GT Series Outplay the Rest, brought to you by Infinix, the official sponsor of MPL Philippines Season 13. Be unstoppable and outplay the rest with the Infinix GT Series. All right, now with that out uh, here, you can you see the phone, and it's the phone that our players are actually using. Where is the headspace for Coach Bentings and Tic Tac? Are, do you think 
Ben thinks knows that that's what went wrong, like right here, right now. I'm pretty sure he does. And actually, that's uh, one thing I wanted to bring up. Yeah. Whereas what we saw, I feel like, is sort of like the styles of the two coaches. Echo in Tic Tac, he had to learn the technicals, but then he also had always has had the discipline. And for Echo to come back in that scenario, you needed discipline. They showed the, tec the technical side of it, JP with all the plays and everyone else doing what they needed to do, but you need a lot of discipline. Yeah. And they did that with good map control. While for TNC Pro Team, as a player, sometimes when you're in the lead trying to move and captain everyone, trying to control everything, it happens, you let go of the map. You let go of yeah. the minion wave, something that I feel like was quite indicative. Also, back in MPL Philippine Season 9, when TNT Pro Team in their, were in their heyday, they were always the bad snowball, snowball type yeah. of team that sometimes the minion wave sort of fell through. So it's interesting that we highlighted the two coaches, and in terms of the styles of the two teams and the outcome, that's what we saw. Yeah, and I think um, Ben Thinks also mentioned this, like the main problem that they have right now for TNC is that they don't have an actual like shot caller or the captain where that is an, uh, a quarterback or a floor general for the team, right? Yeah. It's unlike other teams. Like For example, for if you're looking at Echo, they already have JP that can look across all the map and say, oh, hey, some of our lanes are not pushing properly. Let's yeah. fix that. And for TNC, they have their captain right now is Super Yoshi, who only played, what, second time this, uh, yeah. this season? You know what? I'd like to think this young man could be the floor general for TNC. It's Ryzen. Uh, yung, yung, ano, yung connect to din sila po, umalis lang po ako sa Onik eh. Tapos, nagganap po ako ng team sa ano. Naging Denzi na po. Yun lang po. Parang kulang yung, kulang yung natutunan ko sa Onik. Ma, 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 medyo mabilis lang po yung pag-adjust ko. Parang na-adapt ko rin po agad yung, yung parang culture nila gan. Sa akin yun na ano, na, na magiging mas malakas yung TNC. Tsaka hindi na magiging ano, top, top 8. In a solid 20-something seconds, Ryzen just confirmed a lot of the things that we only assumed by watching him on the Land of Dawn. Yeah. Number one, he's out to learn. Again, that's the mean Dean for you. And number two is he just fit in. And again, I think that's one of the main strengths of yeah. one Ryzen. Like, imagine and remember him from every single team he's joined in the past maybe two or three years. Yeah. It just seems to fit. Like, you just drop him in there and he just... Blends in. Yeah, if there's a term that we call jack of all trades, he's a jack of all teams. Put him in anywhere, he will work. Huh. Put him in AP, friend. He'll be able to do his job. Yeah. Anywhere. And he's gonna and he's gonna play it the Ryzen way, you yeah, know? The, Ryzen the way. mean Dean way. He started out with, you know, being very aggressive with the fanny when he started in the Mega and then eventually invented invented this tank slot thing. And then all of a sudden back in Onyx, he's also making the waves now for TNC. He, can he be the floor general from a jungler's perspective? For sure, his knowledge is there, but it's so difficult if you do it from a jungler uh, role, you know? Yeah. All right, flashed on the screens earlier, ladies and gentlemen, were the uh, draft for game one. And you'll see there, quick recap, Ryzen played the Martise, which I think ended the game at about maybe 7-2, 7-3, yeah. something like that. We don't usually see that anymore. Because again, Martise has adjusted himself into a role where he's more of a space maker or a peeler for a lot of lineups. Mm -hmm. Here, we've seen the odd time that the Martise actually built the Hunter Strike early. Mm -hmm. yeah. So maybe that might... I don't know. Uh, now in hindsight, again, was that one of the best decisions so far? Or was it something that maybe they regretted within seconds of him building it and they're saying, you know what, maybe we could have had you get chunkier. Because again, uh, apparently the damage from the carry and the tire off and yeah. the, you know, everything that Echo was throwing at them, yeah. it, he might have needed a little bit more, you know, oomph. Well, well yeah. personally, I feel like they needed to do that. They didn't have a traditional marksman. So the Hunter Strike to me, well, it, it made a lot of yeah. sense. But yeah, to me, I don't think that it mattered so much to the result. I think it still is the map control. And to think of, if you think about it, Hunter Strike can actually kind of help you control the lanes faster, yeah. right? But yeah, I think um, it's really not about that item. I'm sure that they devised the play around it because it looked really good when they are trying to burst people down. But the main problem was their map control. And I think that, you know, if you replay that game over and over, uh, always, the, always, uh, the, the indication will always be it's the map control. Yeah. Think we won. All right. They're going to try to draft a lineup that similarly works for them, allows for them to be aggressive, do the TNC way. And here's something odd. Here's, I, I'm baffled. I am flummoxed. I am perplexed. Coach Ben Things decides to stay red. 
This is this is not usually how the meta goes. Are yep. we sh seeing a shift in sands right before our eyes, gentlemen? Yeah, I wish I could. Uh, I could. Uh, we could ask uh, Coach Ben why he thought to go go red once again. Mm -hmm. But I think that he w just wants to make sure that he can flex some of his picks. And the thing is, they're not. They're, they're showing that they're not willing to give the no that they are willing to give the Nolan. Then again, they didn't necessarily answer that. So I'm not sure if they should be giving that up again. All right, well, here's one last chance to not do that. One more ban for TNC as Coach Tic Tac gets rid of the Arlo, the Angela, and the Carry, while TNC take out the Matilda and the Joy, which were their two prior bans in Game 1. If they pick up uh, a Novaria ban here, then again, it's just deja vu. Yeah, and if TNC lets the Nolan slip through, I've, I'm pretty sure it's going to be because they already thought of something to do. Yeah. Like, ju it's just going to be like a slight adjustment to how they approached the previous game. Or they have better map control. Or they have yeah. better map control as well. Uh, oh. Deja Vu, as you mentioned. Should, should this be a Ruby? Because the carry was banned by Echo. I, I want to... I want to be recalled. Right. What was their third ban earlier? Uh, Echo third ban was Angela. Yeah. They were oh. Arlot, Harith, Angela. So okay. that leaves a little white-haired boy out. Oh no. Okay. But I think the Ruby is probably the I don't know most bang for buck. Oh, of course, the Nolan is there. Yeah. So gonna be the how Nolan. How can I? How can I actually forget about the Nolan? What? No, it's okay. Uh, I'm I just mean, used to seeing it banned, maybe. Yeah, yeah. based yeah. on what you said earlier, it's like you were wondering, I can't believe they let it through. Yeah. So you see, that tells me you're the type of guy to always not expect that yeah, he's going to yeah. be there available for, sure. for the first pick. That means, uh, what, you go Ruby Minotaur again? Oh, whoa, no, whoa, whoa, no, whoa, no whoa, you can't. Whoa, whoa. You, can't. you should not. That's a little too much, man. Yeah. Earlier, it was yeah. the Valentina. Valentina Minotaur, Minotaur. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it didn't have to be Valentina Minotaur to start, you know? Yeah. Maybe Mino Baksha. <laughs> or... Bad. That's Valentina, <laughs> okay. okay. Some a few little adjustments here and there. Okay. Like Sagan, Lilia still available for Echo, yeah? Oh, but yeah. the Lilia would be too early. Yeah. Um, maybe they just secure their gold lane now. Carry being absent. Claude. Uh, they go, maybe they go Mino Claude, actually. Mino Claude. Oh, oh. I like that. I like that. Claude. <laughs> hey. hey! There it is. All right. Perfect. All right. Go Mino Claude, then... Uh, well, the only problem here is that the Mino and Fear can be copied by the Valentina, but I don't think yeah. that should be a, a much of a problem for TNC. Yeah. Um, but they have to pick up their gold lane now. So they're going to be running out of options. Brunar? <laughs> Brunar. Okay. Harith? Harith. I'm thinking the Harith, but then usually with Minotaur and Harith matchups, you, you see Harith play quite differently because they're really mm. just trying to maximize what dashes they can use to get yeah. out of the Mino and Fury. And then... Dash back into the fight uh, while the yeah. Zaman Force is still up. Do you go XB now if you're TNC? No, maybe not. Nah. Oh! Heads. XB lane better? Yeah. That's, that's on heads. heads. Yeah, that's on heads. Can I confirm? Uh, I see now why. Because, it, again, just in practice, uh, if you pick the X mark, it'll be hard to find an actual backline. Yeah. yeah. Right? The, the Nolan is scrambled. Uh, you can only really try to predict where the Claude left it to BMI. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. I feel like the idea of this is like they're sort of going to be using the. For sure, this is going to be a petrify on the Benedetta. The like petrify, I like to find a blow as like a, another setup tool potentially. Yeah. But then when I look at the lineup of Echo, it's like it's not like Hez is always going to be able to see where the Claude is. Claude's yeah. always playing in a very off angle. If ever he's just going to be really using his abilities to maybe stop Zyda, well. JP, Sanji, most likely. Yeah. And then you ban perhaps the Paquito afterwards because teams are starting to pick up the Paquito versus the Benedetta because that, that wins the matchup actually. Oh, but in lane. In lane, yeah. Uh, but then again, I think um, Echo might just go for something along the lines of uh, X Borg or maybe even a Terizla. Yeah, them with the X Borg mm, makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Very scary for TNC. That's right. So I think uh, X Borg merits a ban here for TNC. Oh no, TNC's overloaded. Do they ban the Xbox? Do they ban the Paquito? Oh, that's right. Oh no. Exactly. And they can't like ban one and then pick up the other unless they, exactly. for, I don't know, some odd reason, put the Xborg on Ryzen. Yeah. Carl Teasy played the yeah. only <laughs> jungle Xborg in season 13 so far. That's true. Let's yeah, see. we heard that right. That actually happened. That's a uh, lore, what's that? Lore accurate. That's lore <laughs> accurate. Yeah, and I love me and my lore. It's a canon event. <laughs> it's a canon event. <laughs> That's right. No, Flap yeah. Easy plays tonight, though. Don't worry about it. Oh, yeah. that's the canon event later. Yeah, you're right. 
TNC, uh, they need more frontline here. I don't like that it's only the Barracks that are frontline. That's lining. not enough peel. It's not enough no. peel. Uh, whatever the roamer has to be. Yeah, take. I, I don't even feel like a Kaja. Oh, take. Yeah. yeah. Something like a take. Beefy boy. Beefy boy. Maybe if they go Bruno eventually. So they ban. Okay. That's understandable. Right after Sanford just played that well and was a problem. By the way, the combo always will always be Dyroth plus an assassin. Mm -hmm. Physical assassin. Oh, oh they went a Teague. They read it. Oh, they read it. Oh, no. What's Yoshi stuck with? A Kufra? Oh, like, man. A I'll not be what if, if they finish it up with a Diggy? That's big. Uh, for TNC or Echo? For TNC. But they oh, need yeah. Peel. <laughs> yeah. Their Peel will be a big ultimate called the Time's Journey. Maybe they can go Kaja Harif eventually. Is that enough burst? Is that enough burst? Maybe it is. Because yeah, they have the Valentina to go with it. But then, you don't want to go Harith plus Barretts. You want to go for a Marksman. Late game Marksman. Yeah, here. that's right. What else is left? Maybe Nathan? Nathan, maybe uh, Clint, actually. Is, did Brunar get banned now? Clint will be good, but yeah, that's only if they have another frontliner. So okay, they, they go got G -Rock. the There's the, the tank like in the Clint skinny. a little bit more. Yeah. I think uh, I think you still go for Vex here if you're Echo. Yep, she's left open, and I think that's what TNT was setting up for. Yep. TNT allowed for that. <laughs> oh, she didn't expect that. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't expect the lady there. To Lilia get or Vex actually for Echo. I think if they're ready for the Lilia, do that. Yep. So and oh, blue. Oops. Okay. They don't, they don't care. Blue Vex. Oh, that's why TNT banned it out earlier. They had a hunch. Yep. Okay, so you're left with... Oh, man, what's a marksman that can actually last against the glue? Yeah. Ooh. Nathan, maybe. Yeah, Nathan's quite all right because he, uh, as far as I remember, he absolutely shreds through the little mini glues. Man, they go Freya now. <laughs> in this case. <laughs> like, I hope not. That doesn't sound fun. <laughs> I think DNC was trying to set up the prison pick. Like, they were trying to trap yeah. Echo, and then Echo was like, you know what? Never mind. Never mind. I'll just, I'll just pick the glue. Clint stuff, yeah. Nathan stuff. Everything is tough, actually, be just because of Mino plus glue. Yeah. So you're gonna be left with whatever works with yours. Oh. So. Okay. Oh. There's a Harith. It's a blue boy. That's gonna be blue tough. boy or silver? Is this blue or silver? White. Both. Yeah. White. He's colorful. Yeah. Depends on the skin. All right. It looks like they've agreed, oh, wow. and uh, so far I'm worried because a majority of the reliable damage that they're putting on mm -hmm. is magic. Yes. Right. Uh. You can have some damage from the Benedetta, some damage from the Barats, but your cores, again, in, in practice, are magic. I think if TNT, you want to end this quick. No, for sure. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the main win condition and probably the only win condition. End this game as soon as possible. And to be fair, even with the Valentina picked up here for Hatred, there's not much that you can actually copy, right? I mean, you what do you what do you copy? The Vexana ult, Minoan Fury. Minoan Fury, perhaps. That's uh, that's decent. Pretty much it, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much, pretty much it. All right, let's get back into the land of dawn for game two. It's match point for the House of Highlights. Echo looking to zip through, zoom out of this matchup with a sweep. Let's see if TNT can stop them doing just that. Oh. A counter start, or rather a mirror start here for uh, Ryzen inside that. There's, no, there's this potential of the the Grok trying to invade. But then, oh, he yeah, we started to do it. Yeah, he checked in and then just moved over. Yeah. Uh, I think he went there thinking that Echo will start there. So maybe that's oh, why. No. And now he was forced to use the flicker out. Oh, he's okay. It looked like that was a good read by Echo, yeah? But they were like, oh, we're up against the Grok. If we start here, we might get invaded. Start here instead. Yeah, I wonder what... Oh, okay, so there's... Actually, no chance for him to invade because he went for the Guardian's Barrier anyway. So I think, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's yeah. like a. So he wasn't planning to do that. Yeah, it was huh. a panic to do it. All right, he's, he's just literally checked. just scouting. Yep. He just wanted vision, just information. Yeah. That's okay. And it's a value you get out of uh, the Minotaur, by the way. You have so much damage with your no. with your leap. You, you, he actually stole the the Lethal Wanderer. The Desperation Stomp. Yeah. Yep, the Stomp. Hmm. How the map's looking right now, uh, especially with how the draft looked, rather. I feel like there's going to be a lot of pressure onto Heads here, but he's been pushed back by this glue. And I think Echo will understand that, and they want to pressure this Benedetta. Because usually in lineups like this, right, Wolf, like uh, it relies on the EXP laner to sort of help you build a pace 
in the yeah. early game. Oh. <laughs> the pokes from Super Yoshi hurt. Yeah, Yoshi was uh, put Zayda. down. He was. Yeah, Yoshi, Yoshi was put was down to a down. third of his health. Yeah. From Zayda, who barely just hit level four. Especially because uh, usually. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, usually Grox pick up what maybe tough boots, mm -hmm. so you don't necessarily have the uh, the anti physical oh. damage that you need. Is this going to be Grand Theft Turtle? Is the question. Oh. I don't think the AT Pro team know where Zyda is. That's going to be a fight engagement. No one fear. Big one! And that's going to be more than enough help for Zyda to be able to secure that first blood plus the turtle for Echo. Nolan gets it. Can they get another? Super Yoshi trying to get away. No, he does not. Double kill for Echo and a purple steal at that. That looks like a big early game swing in favor of the Express. That was premeditated theft from the House of Highlights. Take that clip. Now that, that was amazingly set up. And again, there was very little in Shenan's. He just literally just walked up and yeah. clicked Retribution. <laughs> and that's a 2,000 gold lead because not only do they get the purple buff, they take it away from TNT, they get two kills. They got a lot of outer turret and shields in the middle. Everything that Echo needed in the early stages, they got. Yeah, and it looks like Ryzen couldn't uh, retry at that moment. It looks like it was Zyda ahead by uh, yeah. a second and a half or maybe even two seconds looking at the ticking yeah. timers. Now Invade, TNC want their own version of Grand Theft Purple this time around. Can they balance it out? Oh, Ryzen actually going to be able to secure it and JP might get punished. Death and his welcome onto him there. Eternal Guard also out here. Oh, he, he missed! And no! He missed! He missed! It was Ryzen who gets punished instead and Super Yoshi now have to run for the hills! Double kill! That's four early kills! For Zyda Snowland again to Mirror Wolf earlier when he said, Why would you let this Nolan through as JP with the Minoan Fury? Or Hatred rather. There's two Minotaurs. Can't blame me for it. Able to get away. Echo rolling away with it. Four, almost four minutes into the game. Oh, that was miserable. Ryzen missed it by maybe, what, 20, 30 degrees? Yeah. <laughs> and that spelled the doom for TNC now. 3,000 oh. gold. Echo's favor. No chance for Ryzen to keep up. There's always that. There's always a dilemma where if you lose the first two minutes of the game, you kind of so you you kind of rush getting back to recovery. But yeah. because of you rushing, being too anxious to get back into the farming battle, you lose even more. And that's literally what happened to TNC. They didn't cut their losses. Oh, and this is tough. Given that in game one, it was again their discipline, their map control, their their cross game uh, procedure that, that actually yeah. suffered. Now they're in the same position again, if anything worse, because they're clearly on the defense. Yeah. It's also clear that the Vexana is a much stronger mid laner compared to a Valentina. And mm -hmm. it's only because of one thing, the scouting prowess that you can have from the Vexana. Yeah. The range, the poke, it's so helpful. I'd like to find a blow, entry petrify as well. Heads chasing after Sanji, TC Pro team Calm and control. They want to secure the turtle to even out the momentum of Echo. Oh. Unless Zyda says yes, he will get the turtle. And that's going to be the ultimate committed onto the JP by the Barrett. Zyda going to be chasing after Nomen, who's chasing after Sanji. Can he get the Vixana down? Yes, he does. JP and Sanji fall, but the Harith gets exploded on by the Nolan. Zyda, 5 0 and 0 in this game. Two for one trade, but all this time it was a 4v5. Check it out. Outplayed off camera, off map, just pushing. Same thing he did yep. in game one. Whew. Be a big problem now for TNC because not only is the position one having a lot of farm that's outplayed as the Claude, left in the open. You also have your position to also very far with second with this is second item. That's Hunter Strike and Heptasis. Oh yeah. At five minutes and forty-two seconds. Folks, Wolf is referring to an older MOBA uh, principle where you call <laughs> the heroes by the roles based on their need for golden XP. Exactly. So that's why one is uh, gold laner. outplayed their gold laner, and then in this case, two would be the jungler. In this case, Zaida. So uh, that's what that's all about. In case you're wondering what post five, post four means uh, eventually yeah. when people do mention. It. Oh, Yoshi! Oh, face check! But he's gonna be able to get away. Power of Nature helps him out. Sanford is feeling it now, though. TP's behind the first turret. He's holding Hatred hostage? Yeah. Ryzen and Yoshi there as well. Heads. I'd like to find oh. a blow, and the Petrify is gonna be avail available for him if he wants to enter, but no. Oh, yeah. Echo is feeling it. They are in the zone. Nowhere in the map is safe. Yeah. Nowhere at all. And TNC's in the reverse zone. They're really tilted right now. Even Super Yoshi. Very unlikely to miss a wild charge, yeah. but whiffed it. 
Man, oh. It's not looking good for TNC's camp now. They have to re reset not only when it comes to their objectives, but also mentally, where they, wherever they're at. And this is tough because, again, we are talking about the big leagues, the uh, tippity top, cream of the crop. These players, mechanics are just secondary to them. They have to focus on macro now, but when you see these little slip-ups, a missed wild charge, a detonus welcome thrown into mid, into the, what? Air. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's difficult, so that means, yeah, I agree. Uh, Twice over, TNC need to focus back, get back to their center. Oh wait, here we go. Ryzen, Detonus welcome there. On to Sanford, can they get the glue down? And that could be a free turtle. All the space provided for Zyda to be able to retribution either way without a problem. Ryzen now uh, taking the run of the damage on the side of TNC Pro. Team Echo is going to be able to get the kill onto the barrel. It's a blazing duet, outplayed. How many kills can he get? That's two. Will it be three? Will it be a wipeout? There goes Yoshi. That's a triple for Outplayed, and that's a wipeout in favor of Echo. That's all she wrote. Five for one. More than worth it. Ooh. 40 for five members of TNC. Off the back of a turtle, too. That's yes, TNC. Utilizing the, the, their Detonus welcome on to Sanford, which is, by the way, a very questionable idea. You don't yeah. want to go for the glue at this point, because even when you put him low, he can utilize the ultimate, and then he's yeah. back, and then he's okay already. Just regen. All right. And to be fair, TNC landed a good wild charge from Super Yoshi, landing onto oh. five members of Echo, but it wasn't enough. Look at the book side. Oh, Yo! she! Fracture from out of nowhere. The jungler of Echo, another one. 6 0 2 now for Zyda. In TNC's defense, a lot, or actually 100% of the Deadness Welcomes pulled over by Ryzen were either on JP or Sanford. That's it. Yeah. So that means they're just okay. getting what they can. Where can what they got? Yeah, Big Mano and Fury is actually not going to be able to land anyone, but he gets a control and now play goes again with the blazing duet. Well, in the back line, godlike is Zyda. As even another member of Echo, I believe it was Sanji. It was stopping Ryzen from joining in the fight, but Sanford gets punished. Too greedy, maybe a little bit as Echo, as a tower in the mid still stands. But at this point, the lead for Echo is that massive that they can afford to oh! get it. Another fracture onto the face of TNC. Nomad falls to Zyda. A straight up graveyard underneath tier two in mid for TNC. Bodies. Whew. That's what a 10k gold deal looks like. Exactly. Yeah. And look at the how Echo devised it with the, the way that they jumped. They know that Outplayed can be there with a Purify off of cooldown. They can go for the jump with JP. It gets out and then that will, that will be Outplayed to finish it, finish it off. And then Zyda with the Retribution also freshly off cooldown gets another kill onto Nomad, a very important hero. So yeah, Echo is playing this absolutely well. Yeah, yeah. I remember we talked about how Ever since Fracture lost its uh, CC removal, uh -huh. we always said Nolans have to be more calculated. This was this is one of the most calculated Nolan I performances agree. I've seen. I you agree. see him waiting in the in the sides, looking for his perfect moment, that entry. And Zyda keeps getting it and getting it. He's really making the most out of the Fracture, and every time he joins in. If anything, uh, I've noticed that now that he's clearly ahead, now that he's miles ahead of the whole TNC squad, the margin of error actually is just shrank. Yeah. Like, there's very little he can do wrong now. Yeah. So he doesn't have to really wait as much. Just the mere sense of him, just the fact that he might be in this bush, yeah. is enough for TNT to scramble. Now Echo are going to be pushing forward. Sanford with a split split under the pace of Echo oh. in their faces. And he is feeling it. It's 40. Echo are just going to be able to get towers here. TNT can't even get out of their own base because this Lord is out to stop any of the push of Echo. Now, Echo back off just a little bit, but ooh, TNC Pro Team, they know it's dire straits, and Echo knows there's nothing TNC can do about this it. This is irreparable damage. The Emotional TN damage. The, the TNC's uh, map, the, the structure that they have, there, there's not enough that's coming in for Nomad to actually be within range of threatening anything. Yes. And there's really not much that they can do in the late game as well. Like in, at this point, what, 11 minutes in, it's still the mid game. They should be the ones in control. They have Harith as well as the Barretts. They don't have that late game insurance. Yeah. It's on the side of Echo. You have the, still the Claude and Nolan. Still pretty strong in the late game. And yeah. Echo can, honestly, Echo can play with their food oh, right oh. now. Yeah, and look at the Barretts. The hero designed to make food out of heroes has turned into food himself. Poke damage alone. Oh man, look at the map. This is oh. cruel. Echo with the freeze. All the more worse.
for Nomad and Hatred. Like, there's nothing that's coming in terms of farm, man. Look at this. What's the, what's the count? 3,000 between them and their lane mate? Yeah. Oh. That is a uh, dire straight. And I feel like now would be the appropriate time to use that meme from The Simpsons. Stop it. He's already <laughs> dead. Yeah. That's what it feels like. Oh, well, Echo seems like a team that will actually just go for the juggler this time. They're just waiting for the next Lord yep. to spawn. And by then, they will not have to face two inhibitor turrets. It's going to be a lot easier for them to siege. Yep. Bare minimum, they take down all the turrets and then maybe get a kill or two. Yeah. Worst case for DNC, it's just, it's just over now. Uh, yeah. Gentlemen, correct me if I'm wrong. Is this the largest gold lead we've had standing within the Ooh. game before it ends? Uh, this season, oh, season, yes. yes, yes. Right? 13, 13 K. Yes, yeah. huge. I guess one there, and now we're just gonna be waiting after this. And I feel like I could actually use this time to just like go back because it has been stuck in my head as well as to why Super Yoshi uh, picked up the Guardians barrier. But then I remember that's uh, a tactic that some Indonesian roamers do. Yeah. They so don't use the power of nature to steal. They'll just use the Guardian's Barrier from range to steal away early buffs. Yeah, yeah because the projectile speed is so much faster. Yeah, it's yeah. really fast. And also, you do it to kind of control the lanes uh -huh. at the start of the... Oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. yeah, blocking them, right? Blocking. A, la, a la lusty. Oh, yep, a that's la right. Lusty. But obviously, it did not work. I think for TNC, it was, uh, it was the third big Benedict that, that kind of made it so difficult for them to recover. Yeah. Kind of felt like they had to really just resolve to this kind of pick where, okay, you got the Benedetta, but you don't have a valid marksman to go with it. So if they picked up the Brody instead, right, things will be totally different here for TNC. Yeah. It's, not, it's like they picked the, oh, wait, 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 Zyda. Oh, whoa. whoa, Head's doing really well up against the Zyda. Oh, no! Oh, can okay. he, oh! It was just that massive. The lead that Zyda has over that Benedetta. What an exchange, though. Heads, despite being behind. That was, okay, I'll be honest, that was cool to see. Anime that was cool. sword fight. Anime sword fight, yeah. Anime sword fight. Something to note. Uh, was it just me or was that mid, or unless he had it already, mid duel? Zyda bought an immortality. A look oh, like it. It looked like was, it. Was, was it? Because he suddenly, I mean, I felt less worried for him. <laughs> and I'm sure he could afford it. That's what's scary. Yep. Mm. That's how far they are right now. They can sell items, mid animation, pick up the immortality. What is that now? 14,000? Mm -hmm. Last time we checked? <laughs> uh, it actually uh, ticked up to 15,000 in yeah. the game. That's, that's definitely a record. Yeah. Yep. Th right now it's 15. 15.2. You can but then you can literally afford to put 3,000 between you and yeah, exactly. your lane mate. That's a full item. That's rough, buddy. All right. Uh, Another again, way to put it. That's rough. We got a minute and change here uh, to, to talk about uh, something that Wolf brought up earlier. That Benedetta, pick three, red side for TNC. It's very similar to deciding to wear a pair of pants and then not thinking of what other pieces of clothing yeah, do I have. Like, absolutely. I've yeah. decided these are my pants. Absolutely. <laughs> Is it, they kind of put now themselves... What? Have no choice. I guess kind of put themselves in a hostage situation where they are the uh, hostages. They suddenly yeah. have to repair a lineup. Exactly. So, and it's not like... Obviously, it can be banned out, but it's clear that Echo is prepared for that. And this is a team that plays... With Sanford, Sanford, the first Benedetta god or young prodigy that we have. Yeah. For sure, for sure, Sanford knows how to deal with that Benedetta. And yeah. the answer is Glue. And by the way, Glue was actually banned out by uh, the side of TNC earlier in the game number one, which now makes a lot of sense. But this time, they picked up the Benedetta and did not ban the Glue. Are, are, are you saying what I think you're saying? Is this coach Tic Tac getting into the Jedi mind tricks on Ben things and saying, this is not the hero you want to ban. Yeah. <laughs> and then suddenly he just goes in. Because, again, even <laughs> I was invested in the whole Paquito Benedetta situation. Exactly. Yeah. And then it was the glue all along. Yeah, the glue, the glue is great. And at the same time, you pick up, again, Nolan and Vexana together in a team with Minotaur. Yeah. It's like you're playing the strongest heroes in the metagame where your opponent's just trying to be very creative. And usually the creative composition does not work. Because yeah. that's, there's a reason why Vex and Claude are in top of the meta right now. Yep. Nolan, I mean, Nolan. Okay. Now let's see. As we're about to just enter the game again. How close are we to ending this? Very close. Oh, yeah. Last we checked, Echo didn't have that Lord with them. 
But now, they're under the base of TNC. Look at Zyda biding his time yet again. Sanji, can he even be reached by the members of TNC at this point? The entry coming to oh. by JP, Big and and Fury forcing out the flicker from Hatred. Zyda takes a fair bit of damage. Nomad dashing in and out under the base just to make sure that he can clear the minion waves, but he gets cleared himself. Ryzen gets taken down. Hatred, last man standing, blazing duet. That is signature. Echo Express, the system. TNC can only stand and watch as Echo sweep them in the series. Echo on the fast lane, zooming straight for the sweep. Three points to the Orcas. And not only that, game number one looked close and looked like it was TNC just getting it. But then again, we know that because of Echo's playstyle of the, the Express playstyle, but also with a touch of like good macro, yeah. they were able to last against a team, a team like TNC. Experience um, is what we are seeing here for Echo and how deep their strategy pool is. All the more now I think it's uh, being becoming more evident that TNC are undergoing some renovation yeah. uh, in the House of the Phoenix. Like there, there's something's changed. Uh, when it comes to their lineup, for sure, their play style, their pickings, uh, definitely, at least this is a sign for Coach Ben things to go back to the drawing board and uh, come back stronger in their next outings. Yeah, he did mention that he puts a lot of uh, value into learning experience. Because there's a big learning experience with what they did in game number one and game number two, having it turned around. A lot to learn here. I still see potential in this squad, though. There's something about them that just makes me think that they can reach their goal of finally making it back into the playoffs. But right now, it will take time. For sure. GG well played the TNC. But for now, let's go ahead and throw over to the stage and hear from Hans Galeria and Marakino as they talk to Echo. Congratulations to Echo. Let's give him a big round of applause. Guys, nasa top pa rin kayo ng ating standings fighting for number one. Na napansin namin, nag-switch-switch kayo ng mga players. When do you guys decide kung kailang gagamitin si Outplate, si Zyda, si Carl TZ, si Benny QT? Ikaw, ikaw, ikaw. Yeah, I feel like JP can answer this. Uh, depende po kay Coach Tick kung sino po yung pinapalaro niya. Siya po yung nag-decide sa akin. Basis non, para like may idea kami. Is it nag alternate talaga? Okay, Monday, ay, Monday tule, wala palang Monday. Friday ikaw, Saturday ikaw, Sunday ikaw. They usually po sa screen parang uh, hati po sila, parang two games, two games, two games po sila. Then kung sin, uh, kung saan niya po naisip na parang saan bagay na composition si Outplay Chaka Saida or si Carl or si Ben, yun, dun po sila lalaro. Even in rotation. Even even during the practices. So at least they got into the you know division on that part. I would also ask, Mara, yung may nakita tayo last time, right? Yeah, actually, nakita pansin namin may earrings ka na yung kalang kalang ka ng earrings. Tagal na po, no nagparay na po. Ano siya? Very very stylish na sa ngayon. Very stylish. Gayon guys, we're going to have. Almost a two-week break. Okay. Ano ang gagawin ng Echo in the two weeks? Ah, uh, konting pa nga po pero magpa-practice po ba nagpapay? Vacation. Magbabakasyon ba kayo? Oh, kasi uh, do you plan on going elsewhere? Uwian lang po pero maglalaro pa rin po ng ML. So you're just gonna go home, and then we'll see you back more refreshed. Once again, everybody, give it up to Echo. Congratulations. You may now take your bow and take your walk of victory. Echo, kahit sino ang maglaro, talagang they're still going all out, still at the top of the standings, fighting for number one. And they're still gonna have a long break, the same as any other team, but even so, they're gonna be bringing the win sa mga susunod pa na linggo. Let's break out that for you, and we're gonna go back to our casters. Faso. Congratulations once more to Echo for scoring the sweep and indeed Tic Tac's tactics prove superior, leaving a lot of Ben things to think about. 
TNC has to really consider what went wrong there, and I think the long break is going to help. Let's talk about game number two, bigger picture. Who's our MVP? Hmm. Should be uh, should be Sanford, but now it's Zaida. 10-0 and 4. Okay, never mind what I said earlier. Never mind my first sentence. That's why. 10 yep. 0 and 4, 970 GPM. At 5 minutes and 20 seconds, he's got Heptasis and Hunter Strike. What else can we say about Zaida? I think that he felt a lot of steam from game number one playing this Nolan and then played the perfect Nolan game in game number two. And let's look at it once again, taking that first turtle of the fight. And TNC was in a very bad spot here. Actually, when it comes to their turtle dance, it was it really didn't look good. And the fact that Ryzen was taken out early, that really meant so badly for TNC. They, TNC tried to go for the purple buff still afterwards, but then it went into a disastrous situation. Nomad eventually gets a kill, but at what cost? He actually lost so much. And even Hatred picking up the, the Durants now for TNC because they need it. That's how much they really have to fix this composition. That's why we feel that this draft is not looking good for TNC because they really have to solve so much. The triple kill coming out from Outplay, and then eventually the snowball from Echo. At this point, there's not much that they can do. Look at that well, dev uh, well device play coming out from Echo. With Outplayed having the Purify, so there's not much that, that the TNC can do. And in the end, the Heads can only watch as there's nothing that he can do against Echo's composition. This pickup on the glue really is a problem for many, many things. Like, there's no marksman that you can pick up in the lat latter portions of the draft to kind of fix the composition of TNC. And it will be a side of a TNC to lose again, 0-2 against Echo. And now we're looking at the uh, important, uh, important emblems. It's really not much that the, that we uh, that it's different. Maybe the fact that glue right now is played not as an actual tank, but still is very tanky with just the common emblem that, that you saw from Sanford. Picked it up with a common emblem so that he has got a lot of mana to go with him. And then Echo um, also back to the fact that this outplayed Zyda position one and position two combo is untouched by TNC. There's really not a lot of heroes that can be a problem for these heroes. Think about it, maybe Heads as he tried to play his heart out with his Benedetta, but he had to deal with two heroes from Echo. There's not much reach for TNC to be able to get into the back lines and punish the Claude as well as Zyda. This TNC's front to back just didn't work. And unfortunately for TNC, the way that they decided this draft to go with the third pick, Benedetta, that kind of put them in that prison where they really have to look for a, a marksman that can solve the glue eventually, which they can find even even for us, like, you know, we're not in a put we're not put in a spot where we're pressured by the clock or pressured by True. the uh, by the by the stage or by the audience. We can't even think of a solution to the last pick of TNC. Tough, man. That's, that's how tough it was. Just really feels like, uh, as you mentioned, they put themselves in that corner unintentionally, of yeah. course. It seems like they overshot it. Yeah. And I, I wouldn't blame them. It's because there's a lot that you're thinking of. Again, this new lineup, this very strong opponent with a shifting roster. But we'll leave that for then. But for now, coming up next, it's going to be Minana Evos going up against AP Bren, a brewing dark horse over our defending champions who will reign supreme. And let me get that one more time. It seems like Tic Tac's tactics are definitely superior, and there's been things that TNC need to work on. There you go. That's what I was trying to go yeah. for. All right, cool. I like okay. it. I'm glad to like that. <laughs> <laughs> on behalf of Wolf and Renmar Santa Cruz, we're going to have to call it a break here now. I hope to see you again when we come back for matchup number two on this lovely Sunday for MLBB. You're watching MPL Philippines Season 13. 13th season of MPL Philippines is brought to you by the following sponsors. Smart, the official telco partner of MPL Philippines Season 13. Infinix GT Series, outplay the rest. Experience the MPL PH Season 13 action live at Shooting Gallery Studios. Tickets are now available on our official ticketing partner at slashevent.com. Don't miss any MPL PH action by following our official Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Follow MPLPH and TikTok as well for more content. And don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the official accounts of MDL Philippines. To ensure the equality and fairness of our games, MPL Philippines is also monitored and supervised by the Games and Amusements Board.
Okay, class. Uh, finish or not finished, pass your papers. And uh, have a great weekend. Mahiwaga ang mga araw na ito Pagkalipas ng dilim ay may bukang liwayway May urong sulong at adinangan Huwag mangamba, huwag akong ito'y pagsubok lang Di ka mag-isa How to register the Smart Giga Arena. First, go to gigaarena.smart on your browser. Click sign in at the upper right corner and enter your smart mobile number. Enter the one-time authentication code sent to your number and agree to the terms and conditions in privacy policy. Personalize your account by choosing your username and profile picture. Congratulations, you've just taken the first step on your path to greatness. Check out upcoming tournaments and play arcade games. Just subscribe to Giga Arena 20 to join. To join tournaments, click the Tournaments tab. Find the perfect tournament with the search option. Find all the details about your chosen tournament and register. Provide your in-game name, ID, and other details. Make sure you have tickets to join. If not, then subscribe to Giga Arena 20 to get two tickets. And you're set. See you at the training grounds.
Here, enter. Okay, class, uh, finish or not finished, pass your papers, and uh, have a great weekend. Mahiwaga ang mga araw na ito Pagkalipas ng dilim ay may bukang liwayway May urong sulong at adilangan Huwag mangamba
galaw Abutin ang bituin kong bikislap Nagninigning Hawakan mo ang aking kamay Umindak sabay-sabay Lahat naghihintay Handa na ako sa hiling ka Back to MPL Philippines, kasama natin ngayon ang mga manlalaro ng Brad Ogwen and Super Marco. Kasi na-curious tayo. Na-curious din ako. Ano ang laman ng bag nila? What's in the bag? What's It's the time bag? for item check. Okay, sisimulan natin sa'yo. Sa'yo. Sa'yo muna. Pakita natin ang iyong bag. Okay, okay. Muna. Pakita natin ang outside, inside. Ikaw mag-model ng bag mo. Okay. Ayan. So, wag ko. Ito. Pero may uh, mga... May mga... May... San galing yan? San galing okay, yung keychain? San galing to? Keychain from Romania. Oh, from, oh. from oh. Romania! Okay. And ito, ito. Another, another keychain from Japan. Uy, ang galing. From, from Japan. Japan. From, Japan. from Japan. Okay, say something to me in Japanese. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa! Wow. Oh, say something to us in Romania. <laughs> Romania. Oh, ano? Ano yung nalagi mo naririnig doon? Ano pa lagi mo naririnig doon? Ay, isa na lang Japanese pa, isang Japanese, isang Japanese pa, isang Japanese. Marco, maganda ka na sa'yo, tatanungin mo. Arigato. Arigato. Arigato gozaimasu. Sigoy ni. Oh, ano ibig sabihin nun? I-zip natin, unzip. Okay, ano, bakakan ano, ko yung mic mo. Ano ang laman yan? Ano ang laman? Okay, Gab, Gab, tama, license. Tama, tama. Ano tama. natin para hindi makita yung buong pangalan? East-West na card. Okay. okay. Mag-open ng Mag ano to, ng, savings uh, account. Tama, tama. Real. Okay, Next. let's open, let's open. Oh, Oy. Infinix phone! Siya, siyempre! Siyempre, Yung Infinix. Pang-warm-up. Pang Pang-warm-up. Pang 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 okay, ano pa okay. yung nandyan? Ano pa? Gra Uy, wallet! Ah, uh, wallet. No. Tingnan wallet natin kung parang magkano ang laman. Parang ang kapal. Wow, wait! Oh, oh, oh. Hindi pesos ang nakalagay dito. Ano? <laughs> Five dollars! Okay. okay. Oh, One thousand. thousand! Japanese yen! Okay. One thousand Japanese yen. Ano to? Ano yan? Ano yan? Uh, ito, from uh, Russia. Rubbles. Russia. Oh. Rubbles. Rubbles. So, so required talaga? Okay. Ito pa. Okay. Ito, ito, itong one na ano to? Parang kahit saan sila Romania pumunta, ano? Meron, Romania ata. Hindi na tayo sure. Hindi na tayo sure. Ano pa yung laman ng wallet? Ano ba? Passport. May passport? <laughs> Para <laughs> ready to go to anytime. Ng, tatakas to ng bansa ah. Tsaka earpods and... Inhaler. Ah, 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 yun, yun, yun. Okay, yun. Okay. Gusto natin kay Super Marco. Marco, ikaw naman. Super Marco, Super Marco. Sige, ako ba alam mag-awak nito, men? Yan. Tapos, ipakita mo sa amin lahat ng laman ng cellphone mo ngayon din. Or should I say, laman pala ng bag mo. Laman ng cellphone. Laman ng bag mo, ngayon din. Una ay... Tingnan natin. Okay. Passport. Ba't lagi kayong may dalang lagi passport? Pa, ba't lagi kayong may dalang Gusto passport? Gusto nang tumakal kasi na. San sanay na daw. Sanay na, sanay, sanay na. Baka lang. daw mag-ibang bansa pagkatapos oh, nila ng game ngayon. Sila, okay, ganun, ganun na kayaman okay. ng AP brand. Sakto may long break after this. No? Oh. Sanay na daw eh, sanay na. Okay. Next ay Game Society. Ah, oh, Sea Game Society. Wow. Sige, bakit lagi mo ito nila dala? Ba't lagi mo Kasi ba, may, may discount to sa mga ibang ano. May discount. May discount daw, may discount. Kailangan mo pa ba ng okay. discount? Gets, gets. Ano pa? Sabi ni Direk, ilabas na daw lang! Ilabas na daw lang! Ay! Ilabas na daw lang! Okay. Ano, may charger tayo. May wallet. Tignan natin. Oo. Oh. Oo. Oh, Ilalaman ng Grabe. wallet. Grabe. Okay. Okay. Ang wow. color ko. Oh. Okay. Ano pa dito? Wow. Cards. Ano pa nandyan? Ano yan? Ah, it's ah, earpods, okay. earpods, earpods. Sorry, I'm... I'm Grabe, ang dami, ang dami ano laman ng bag ni Marco. Ano pa ba yung nandyan? Sabi ni Direk, kailangan na daw mag-wrap up. Power bank, may power, power bank. May power bank. Tapos may ID. May ID na gap. Ang daming ID. At maraming ID. Ngayon, okay. kailangan na natin umpisahan daw. Oh, Pinapa-wrap up na tayo. Oh, We need to rush to go to the casters. Thank you, guys. Casters, pasok. 
Sama tayo, may ano sila, passport. Oo. Sama tayo sa trip nila. Become a legend. Open yeah. fire, yeah. we unite with winners. Yeah. Built with pressure, the diamonds are made out. Switching a lane, the bottom there, each be racing, we reset up. Built like a tank, who had me here, that full load, this is part of Lila. Susundan ko ang iyong bakas, kasama pa da sa bumpay na ito, dahil tayo'y malakas. Control. Pakita on the jab like Pow. Beast of the southeast So what I would proud The loud is every enemy we devour Susundan ko ang iyong bakas Kasama pa taas na bumpay na dito Dahil tayo'y malakas Para sa Pinas Mr. Amin ang nalas Hindi hindi ko waatas Kinikilala sa taas The 13th season of MPL Philippines is brought to you by the following sponsors. Smart, the official telco partner of MPL Philippines Season 13. Infinix GT Series, outplay the rest. Experience the MPL PH Season 13 action live at Shooting Gallery Studios. Tickets are now available on our official ticketing partner at slashevent.com. Don't miss any MPL PH action by following our official Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Follow MPLPH and TikTok as well for more content. And don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the official accounts of MDL Philippines. To ensure the equality and fairness of our games, MPL Philippines is also monitored and supervised by the Games and Amusements Board. Welcome back.
out to MPL Philippines. It's time for the question of the day. Coach, ang ating question of the day, sino sa team mo ang nonchalant at sino ang OA between the two? Between the two, yes. Well, kita nyo naman, kita na natin kung sino yung OA. <laughs> at saka ito yung, ano yung, ano yung word? Nonchalant. So, ik ikaw ang OA. Ikaw ang nonchalant. Agree ba kayo? Ako yung nonchalant eh. Ikaw yung nonchalant. Ikaw yung, feeling mo ikaw yung OA? Kahit ano, sabihin ni Flap, okay lang. Anong ibig sabihin ng OA? Ay no, si Flap. <laughs> okay, okay, ikaw. Anong ibig sabihin ng nonchalant? Nonchalant, chalant. Nonchalant, chalant. Chalalant, chalalant. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> All right. Nonchalant and OA, okay, thank you so much, Coach. Ngayon sa kabi ng panic, sino nga pa sa kanila ang nonchalant at sino ang OA? Hans, pasok. Thanks, Mara. This time around, nandito ako sa Minana Evos. And Coach Bitoy, ikaw naman ang tatanungin ko. Okay? Kung itututok mo dun kay Spider Miles, ano ba si Spider Miles? Nonchalant ba siya o OA? Ay, si Spider Miles is nonchalant. Nonchalant. Kuya, pwede ba itutok mo kay Spider Miles? Kasi madalas sa ikita ko, na, ay, 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 paano yung nonchalant, bro? Ano yun? Oh, as in, wala talaga. Wala. Yara yun. Si, sinong pinaka-OA? Dito sa squad, coach. Ito, si Kyle. Si Kyle. Si, si, <laughs> bakit? Ayan, ayan. Ayan. Oh, as in, hindi niya alam kung ano yung nangyayari. Okay. Na, nonchalant si Spider Miles. Meron pa bang iba bukod kay Spider Miles na nonchalant? Wala Sige. na eh. Wala na. Ik wala ikaw, na. coach, nonchalant ka ba o OA? OA, OA. Ah, OA. Sige, OA daw si Coach. Pero ready na. Amin na na Ibos kontra sa alam mga kalaban mga maya. So, Casters, pasok. Before the world tour, they had to take the long road as dark horses. Can we na na Ibos prove they're on the same path as AP Bren? Welcome to YG Service. My name is Leo. Here with the voice of MPL Philippines, Renmar Santa Cruz, an aspiring barista and international analyst, Wolf. Gentlemen, how are we? That's very accurate, especially your description of Wolf. I saw, yeah. I, you should look at his tablet. It has a picture of himself holding up coffee. Yeah. Watch out for it. Uh, I think you're going to be posting about it. So yeah, watch out for it. Do follow uh, Reptar Santa Cruz and his pages and he's going to be posting there. It's on my Instagram. Back on the matchup <laughs> at hand, this is Minana Evos' ultimate test as true dark horses. Yes, they have stumbled in their previous matchup. Uh, much to the surprise of many because again, I personally would like to think that that could have been a longer match. I'm talking about them and uh, Onyx PH Ooh. just yesterday. But here Ooh. tonight, we are putting a focus on the two different kinds of roamers. We're talking about Spider Miles as a utility roamer yeah. and Ogwin as the old fashioned, just, just up front, just tank. I mean. I'm not saying that's how Ogwen sounds like, but yeah. Uh, Ogwen is the modern roamer. You're expected to be able to play a wide array of uh, heroes when needed, a lot of versatility, while Spider Miles harkens back to a past similar to that that the Queen brought to the table right. here in MLBB. Some, uh, a badge of honor that he wears with pride. Yeah, so, uh, so Spider Miles is that guy that practices a thousand kicks once. Yeah. And then uh, oh. Ogwen is the... Don't you mean one kick a thousand times? Yeah, that's right. That's what I meant. No, actually, kicks yeah. Once. <laughs> that's I, all right. I'm bad at metaphors. Here's a roundhouse. You're usually great. <laughs> it's all right, man. Maybe you need to drink some of that I coffee. Need, I need on that, that coffee. I need that coffee. You need that coffee right now. <laughs> Why don't you bring your machine? You should. Nah, I should. I should probably next time. Yeah. Um, but kidding aside, I think uh, Ogwin has already uh, improved himself so much in a way that he can actually. I think he mastered the role. It's not oh, the yeah. heroes that he mastered. It was the role. And it's definitely, you know, I've always said this in the Tagalog broadcast, we're running out of adjectives for AP Bren and for Ogwin. You know, that's how good they are. You know what? Truth be told, I spend a good portion of my free time on the daily trying to figure out how to beat Bren. How to beat AP Bren, how to beat this World Championship squad. Is because, yes, they will admit sometimes in post-match interviews that maybe they slipped up, maybe they could have done this better. But even in those times and even in the replays you see, what are you talking about? Where? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like uh, their worst is probably one of the teams that you know better days. Yeah. You know, their, their, their worst day is 
a good day already for any team in a business, not only in the Philippines, but also internationally. Yeah, and again, uh, we mentioned that they are the definition of trust the process. Yep. The process still continues and it's paved with gold along the way. And I'd like to see the Minana Evos, especially with the praise that the AB Brand have given them. AB Brand have mentioned they're excited for this fight. Yep. Uh, Ogwen is excited to go up against Spider Miles too. That hopefully this is what we're seeing, the start of Minana Evos. Not to say that they'll event yep. be eventually world champions, but they're trusting the process with this young squad that we saw yep. almost make it into the playoffs last season. Yep. Yep. AP Bren's process began about two years ago in Season 9, wherein some remnants of that old squad are still here. Again, for yep. sure, that's Coach Ducky. Flaptizi was part of that roster. True. Few was part of that roster. Pandora was still there. And look where they are now. They've been around the world, won all sorts of titles, all sorts of championships and maybe Minana can do the same. Let's get on with the match. First of all, we can't begin without our marshals. They make sure everything is smooth and dandy, fair and fun. Here we are with Wilbert, Patrick, Chico, and Jeff. So Jeff actually was supposed to be called Jefe, but his mom said, eh, I'd prefer Jeff anyway. Let's have the teams come on in. The Tigers were caught off guard by surprise picks against Tonic. But now that they're facing off against the world champions, can they dust themselves off and show them and show us why AP Brand was excited to face them in the first place? MPL Arena, roar for Minana Evo! It's a perfect run so far for the bees and the hive. No games lost, no series dropped, no points squandered. They continue to prove why they are the champions of the Philippines and the reigning champions of the world, A.P. Bren! And our coaches, Coach Betoy and Coach Trevor. MPL Arena, make some noise and get hyped for Minana Evos versus A.P. Bren! Here we go. The Dark Horses up to step to the plate and swing. Minana, Evos. Wolf, this is the lineup that's worked for them so far. That's right. And I want to highlight Kirk in this lineup. Captain Kirk, I mean, he's not the actual captain of this team, or I don't know if he actually is. But uh, we are putting a lot of spotlight on Spider Mouse as he deserves it. But we also have to put some highlight onto Kirk. And this time, he's going to be going up against a storied, uh, uh, you know, adored with a lot of, uh, of accolades that's flapped easy on the explain. Here yeah. he is now, flanked by Marco, Kyle, Few, and Ogwin. As the official, unofficial advocate for the reigning, defending champions of the world. Yeah, Flaptizi, definitely. You're going you're to have to watch out for him. He's been him. on point. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge AP Bren. Again, uh, we want to put hopes onto Minana Evos. We want to see Minana Evos succeed. Not just here at the table. The community has been vocal about it. The expectations are high. But when you're up against literally you can say the five best players in their position in the world today. Ooh. Well, you're going to have to show us something different. A whole nother level that maybe Minana Evos hasn't even known that they can tap yet. 
talked to me about a year ago, I would say they're the best pure athletes, but now they're just the best athletes in the game that we play. Absolute Ooh, best. Something to note here, uh, when you're looking at Minana Evos, a big question that I'm asking is, when will spider Mouse bring out the heroes that yeah. Coach Bitoy, Coach DJ, Coach Supercard has promised? Like, you all gotta watch out, these are the new ones. Where is it? Because he's yeah. only played so far Mino uh, Minotaur, Rafaela, and Faramis. Yes, uh, I think that they might not be changing their play style because I think it really just works. I think for Minana Evos, they're still on that process of mastering what they're doing. Yeah. AP Brand have already, you know, that they're like few, not really few, but a million steps ahead yeah. right now compared to the competition. But I think for Minana Evos, it does not make sense to change up something like this quickly just because they're facing up against AP Brand. They yeah. should show a masterful display of their own style of um, MOBB. Yeah, and I agree here with Wolf. Don't pressure Spider Mouse and the rest of Minana Evos to play around the play style that they're not fully comfortable yet when they haven't even mastered like their own play style yet. And I'm not to say that their play style now isn't uh, good. It's just, I feel like, again, I'm one of those people who believes in Mirana Evos and their potential that I want to see more. This young man here in mid has potential, and I'm talking about Lancey because Lancey? the other icon that he's stepping up to Ooh. has already proven himself since season one. Wolf, talk to us about this yeah. head to head. What's going on through Lancey's Ooh. head right now? He's going to be facing up against uh, a player who. This is, it is weird because this is a conversation between me, uh, Burrito, as well as Midnight last night. Oh, yeah. And we were talking about the fact that Few, the way that he played the Vexana and Nana yesterday was as if he's not trying to prove anything at all because he doesn't need to anymore. He's hitting onto buildings. And then Lancey is on the opposite side of the spectrum where Lancey needs to prove himself for now. Oh. You can see Few doesn't go for the, what, flash plays anymore because he doesn't need to. He doesn't need to. I'd love to talk to Neil and Aaron more about that, but <laughs> we'll talk to us now about these keys to victory brought to us by Infinix. All right, Minana Evos needs to respect AP Brand's snowballing tendencies. We're not foreign to the fact that um, uh, the, the play style of AP Brand is really based on snowballing and they're really good at the early stages of the game, so they have to respect yep. that. For AP Brand, draft against Spider Mouse's pool, uh -oh. which has been yeah. proven to be effective the last yep. time that Minana Evos uh, faced up against an opponent, and it might be another key to victory that can be uh, brought by AP Brand. And of course, for both teams, pick fights wisely. It means that you kind of have to choose the fights that you are willing to take or that you are in a more advantageous spot. I think that's something that Minana Evos really needs to take into heart against AP Brand. Safe to say, Minana Evos, they gotta watch out for AP Brand going ham, mm -hmm. going to hack a miles. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, Minana Evos is ready for it. I feel like yeah. now, Minana yeah. Evos has to respect the hack a miles themselves and say, yeah, we gotta prioritize uh, Spider Miles heroes as quickly as yeah. possible. And right now, because of the current metagame, uh, I know I'm not gonna knock against a Rafa Elipix. They've won with the Rafa Elipix. Yeah. They played really well with it. But I feel like in this scenario, if they can, they've got to rush that Minotaur, I feel like. I agree. Yeah, I agree. definitely agree with that. Because I felt like when they uh, when they suffered that hack of miles just recently, just yeah. was this yesterday? That was yesterday. Yesterday, yeah. yeah. They, w they were forced to pick up Faramis. Which, you know, it really just does not work in this meta game that we have right now. I think that I would choose Novaria position 5 many times over than oh, the Faramis now. Just because of how weak the Faramis is. In fact, he, w he had to go with Encourage. Because what is Ooh. a blessing that can be good for Faramis from the Rome roll? Nothing. Yeah, no favor, no heals. Uh, dire dire hit. hit, again, you're going to put yourself in trouble I for trying get to conceal. getting that proc. Uh, when I need to. I know it's just RG, it's just RG. Yeah, Alright, see, so just again, the <laughs> past few seconds of trying to figure out what to do with that Paramus yeah. means it's not going to go your exactly. way. Exactly. So now, with that said, uh, I want to ask the folks watching at home right now, what would you do? What kind of picks would you prioritize if you're Minana Evos? Because yeah. one can only assume what AP Bread's going to do tonight because, yeah. again, yesterday, Few was playing the likes of uh, Anana, Vex, uh, Vex, and just Vex. whacking away at turrets. Like, Whew. nobody's business. Yep. If you were Minana Evos' shoes, what would you do? What heroes would you pick, and how would you attack AP Bren? Yeah. Okay. Comment down below. Let us know. And I'm going to get to it because I also need... Analyze. The, I need Analyze the, I need the hive mind, like, not the hive hive, but hive mind, like all of us fans. Yeah. Maybe all our brains will be enough to figure out how to beat yeah. this monster. Oh, I wish. I wish. But, uh, you know... Hmm. um. Of course, we want to hear from you guys, but I also want to also bring up the fact that when you look at uh, Flap TZ and the way that he's played the game, he's just transitioning it to this point where do I go flashy or do I go like the objective way? Yeah. And I think that so far, Flap, uh, being an expert at both, kind of makes Flap TZ a very scary 
explainer to face. Uh, you know what, for me, the scariest thing about Flap TZ, along with that, it's how quickly he can bounce back, knowing yes. that AP Bren lost a game because of something he did. In yes. MPL Philippines Season 12, during M5, he's mentioned he's had interviews. It's been a running joke with Flap TZ. Um, I was the longest in that last it fight, is. in that last game. And right after pulling off a performance that people are going to be wondering, what the heck is Flap doing? Suddenly, the next game, he becomes one of the main reason, reasons or even the biggest reason why they would win. Yep. Well, Dude, there's Tolongis. Tolongis. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe Brent's now prioritizing the okay. Minotaur. Yeah. I love it. This is Coach Treb calling the shots now. Uh, and the answer from Inan Evos, the first pick, Lilia. Lilia. And the, hmm. these priorities are off. Like, these, yeah. are, these are new ways to attack the draft. Exactly. And I think, Minana, you have to snatch the Arlot. You don't want to give... Oh, you pick up Terizla. Oh, they're going to give it. They're going to give it. AP Brin is not going to think twice getting that. Yeah. And then get, get the Vex, maybe. Oh, no. They might have Vex themselves. Oh, Vex got banned out. Yep. Yeah. Novaria. So they go Novaria Nova Arlot. Nova Arlot. Nova Arlot. Novarlo. Novarlo. Okay, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Novarlo. Novarlo. Yeah, instead of going yeah. for Hacker Miles, they just banned the Diggy and took the best hero that could be best for Spider Miles, mm -hmm. which I think is great for AP Brin. That's a classic, uh, not really a classic, but that's a Trevor spice in there. Here's the thing, here's the thing. If uh, Miles' hero doesn't come up third pick here in phase one for Minana Evos, he's going to get in trouble again. We're going to see a replay of yesterday's draft. Yes, sir. Uh, Check it out. I'm on that boat. Hoquin does very well himself on the Minotaur. He's been doing so for several seasons now. Oh. And, huh, AP Brand have different uh, priorities as well. Again, just yeah. a weird opening will result in different follow-ups as well. Yeah. x -Borg and Claude. Yeah. All right, so this is Rafaela. So the thing with the x -Borg is. is that it deals with the Terizla. So this is uh, um, AP Brand just already troubleshooting, the collect correcting their uh, telemetry, yeah. as, we, uh, oh. as we, have sa we can say. Big words. And that's the thing with um, AP Brand, right? They, they find out that the Terizla was the priority, so that they pick up the yeah. x -Borg to eventually handle it easily. Yeah, and this is a trend uh, that I noticed. I, I mean, Onik and Onik is their own beast when it comes to come up, coming up with uh, some unique strategies. That's right. But every time I see teams going up against Onik and Manana Evos, the order of drafts really change. I think the teams are understanding that, oh, when you're up against this team, you can't be predictable. Yeah. yeah. Nova like, uh, like we mentioned earlier, the Novaria Arlot. Yeah, in the trends of the current meta game, that's what you're supposed to do. But AB Brent says, no, it's up against Minana Evos. They draft differently, so we have to change the tendencies yeah. as well. Um, uh, okay, so Valentina being a ban, I think that's, uh, that's a really good ban here. But then again, AP Brent are forcing, okay, Minana pick up the carry. Yeah. They, they banned Roti as well as Bruno. You have no choice, Minana. It's either carry or you go for the Harith. And both heroes are not the best when it comes to like having a combo with the Rafaela. Typically, yeah. it's Rafa Bruno, Rafa yeah. Brody. So uh, I do understand why this was the uh, idea from AP Brenne. Both oh. are fresh meat to the Xborg. Yep. I think you, you will be forced to go Clint here if you're Minana, right? Does Doming have a Clint, though, is the question. Mm. Yes. Again, in the current metagame. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he played that. Uh, we were there casting that. Uh, it was the Clint that TNC couldn't kill. Okay. Cool. When it was All a push right. in. Day right. one. Day one. Day, Day one. one. Day All one. right, so it's possible. <laughs> yeah. He can. Doesn't have to rush it. Okay. Here's the Martis. Okay. And with that Martis, do you just go back to Baksha? I think Baksha just makes a lot of sense here for AP Brand. Wow, how did Baksha just I don't. go under yeah. the radar like this? You go Baksha, you have anti-heal against both Rafa and the Terizda. You have access to the backlines, you're faster in a way against the Martis. So uh, it makes a lot of sense. And then go for a backline nuke mage for Mr. Few. Yep. Well, what else is there though? Uh, Gord? Gord. Oh, hey. hey, hey, hey. Nana is there. Oh, yeah. All no. the heroes we mentioned feel like they would do great. Yeah. I feel I, like the Gord would be. Yeah. I, I lean towards more of the Gord. It's a bit more punishing, right. I feel like. Yeah. I vote Nana Box. No, no, no. I no, think no, we're no. all in agreement with the box here, though. Yeah. Gotta be box. Yeah. Gotta be. See? Or a Kai. Dude. No. Oh, okay. What? Nana Fred. Oh, Fred. Okay. okay. Hmm. I wonder why the Fred. Okay. Against Lilia? Yeah, against Lilia with Rafa. With actually. Rafa. They get guided so easily. Interesting. Interesting choice from AP Bren. But this is them saying, okay, we're gonna beef up the back, the front lines. We don't want to go to the back lines, anyways. Uh, yeah. They also want more reliable CC. Yeah, they're, they're, I guess you don't get that with the box. With the box, so Clint still makes makes a lot of sense here for Minana. It's I think, okay. I or they go crazy and be one of the teams that drafts Layla for the first time in PH. But not no. enough, not enough for front line to yeah. do that. 
It's uh doesn't yeah. have it. That's just me wishful please, thinking. Please just don't go Roger. I think. Oh yeah, definitely not. <laughs> just uh. Doming, what you thinking? No, oh, they go carry. carry. Yeah. All right. Yeah, they were they were forced to. But like I said, it's not the best when it comes to like comboing up with the with the Rafaela. You kind of want to go for uh, more of a static kind of uh, gold laner when you go for the Rafaela, so that you just run down people. Mm -hmm. Still, it's pretty good in the meta game. And I guess this this carry picked was. Uh, uh, you know, under good merits, only because the Fredrin was picked up. Had yeah. it been a Baksha, this will be a different choice for oh. Minana. A whopping 83% to 17 in favor of AP Brand. Wherever you're watching from, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to remind you that it's the star match of the day. Huge shout outs to our online viewers. Wherever you're watching from, we're happy to have you here and witness this great battle. Please click subscribe, like, and follow for all FPLPH official accounts. Uh, as our way of saying, Terima kasih, salamat, well, thank you in general. Watch out for the code that you may redeem in your MLBB app for hero skins and tournament chess. Yes, I can feel the people in the chat spamming code, code skin, where they at? Well, that's where they are. Arigato, yogozaimasu, and gracias. Merci. Gracias. Merci. Merci, wherever you're watching from. Grazie. We're about to get into game number one, a best of three. Again, the ultimate Grazie. test for this season's Dark Horses TM. Minana Evos, can they step up to AP Bren? Well, the first step is to make uh, is take full advantage of this aggressive play style that they have. This is still Rafaela and Lilia, super duper fast. Then you pair it up with Amartis. Oh, yeah. I think that they do have a shot against this Minotaur. So yeah. the first step for Minana Evos really is to take over in the first five minutes of the game. All right, glad to see that uh, old uh, Ogirunigo is back on the tank Minotaur compared to yeah. last night. Yeah. yeah, the support, the the focusing mark Minotaur. The magic Minotaur. Yeah, magic <laughs> Minotaur. <laughs> Interesting approach, but hey, they got the dub here. Uh oh. Kautizi in his own juggle, not yet level four. Kazen is in the lead. So they're both just you know, trying to jockey for a position. My question is, I wonder if any of these two teams will go for a big EXP lane gank before this turtle spawns. Hmm. Against an ex Borg, against a Turris, uh, I think uh, it's kind of an ambitious way to go to the EXP lane at this point. Not so much for Minana Evos, though, because they have good poke against the Firaga. They have Rafaela as well as Lilia, two heroes that kind of make it difficult for Flap TZ to keep his Firaga armor up in the early stages of the game. So maybe it could be an option. But the fact that Minana Evos are putting a little bit of an advantage when it comes to the EXP of the junglers. On their side, it's actually very good. Oh. You see, the approach here of Minana Evos is to pressure Kyle TZ. Temper the tempo of AP Bren. Not necessarily trying to decimate them early on. It's just control it so that they're not completely playing their game, right? Yeah. Huge, huge XP gap. A whole level between Kazen and Kyle TZ. Flap yeah. TZ catches a face full of PZ. Okay, Flap TZ, Faraga Armor, still up there. Last Insanity is going to be able to land the kill. Oh, the Whoa. big Molina smooch and the Blitz by few. This Nana is still on a roll from last Ooh. night. And I don't think Minana Evos will be able to contest this turtle as their jungler drops. That's not comic accurate. I don't think Levi dies this early on, but that was amazing. Manga, sir, manga. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. no, Kirk's in trouble! Kirk trying to get away from it. Appraiser's Wrath already committed. Lancy and Spider Miles are there to help him out. And AP Brand will not pressure the purple buff. Okay. So I was able to be part of a million dollar tournament just a few weeks ago where AP Brand actually won that. And oh, yeah? something that I was able to prove something. Flapty is the best export player that we have oh, yeah. in the world right now. And he just showed us. How he how good he is at that hero. My oh my, the way that he handled Minana Evos in that first turtle fight. You could immaculate. You could swear that his last insanity had tracking. Yes. It was a catch twenty two. He was gonna kill one of them. Yes. And it's just perfect that he got the right target again with the help of few. few. Yeah, yeah. And that felt like that was just few and Flap being exactly on the same page. Like yeah. Kobe Bryant and Pau Gasol speaking in Spanish mid game. Hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Yes. I understand the synergy now. Few and Flap have been teammates for the better part of five years now. Yeah. That's right. Count it. Count it. That yeah. was synergy without even talking, I'm sure. Oh. Appraiser's okay. Wrath. Not a lot of wrath there. Yeah. But the damage right now of the Fredrin being appraised. Lancy poking <laughs> it out. Oh, and yep. Th this is why a part of us questioned the Fredrin pick. Not to say it was a bad pick, but it will struggle up against Lily. And imagine if that was the late game, that Fredrin yeah. would be crying. Yep. It's going to be a problem later on. 
but for now it isn't. Oh, uh oh, Baptiste has a little bit of a problem. His Faraga armor gets spent, but well, oh. I posed a question earlier, Wolf, and you said it would be ambitious if you try to go for it. Yeah. If Baptiste has second life, Few is going to be here for the assist. For sure. Get poked out by Lancy. Few might have overstepped a little bit, but now he'll be able to get away safely. Yeah. Also, now that, now that I think about it, maybe the reason why they didn't go Baksha is because they want to secure the jungle, the neutral objectives. So one thing that's underrated about the Fredrin is that his oh. first skill plus retry is actually pretty strong. Oh yeah. Yeah, so that might be the, uh, the factor here for AP Bread. Because you go Baksha, the Martis can just easily take that new, those neutral objectives. That's true. You see here, AP Bren is doing a Manana Evo, so no contest again because he absolutely see Kazen going into the orange buff of AP Bren. Go for the invade, Flap TZ, sending wow. back Kirk. The damage, the fire, Man, last him. insanity, no way, Flap! Not gonna be able to oh. kill! No, oh, Ogwin! He did! And Ogwin? <gasps> no, Ogwin! Ab absorbed the damage of the turret! Oh! Mid the when he was uh, still untargetable! They juggled they it. They juggled it. Wow, Ogwin. Oh, wow. Xborg, untargetable. Ogwin steps in, gets the hit. Exactly. Correct? Wow. 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 Synergy. It's Ogre. It's <laughs> Ogre. Amazing. Under, under, under Again, the world champs. These little decisions, the, the way that they're able to show us mechanics upon mechanics makes us wonder what else can this team do? What can they not do? Is a question is five minutes and a half in, yep. about a minute before the second turtle spawns. Your third turtle, wow. This game has uh, gone that fast. I, uh, this is, I, I, again, we're running out of, of, of adjectives for AP Brain, how good they are. Yes, that's a good question. What can they not do? Or AP Brain. Let I'm me, thinking let of. Let me put away this star scheme. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Flap TZ has been so on point with this X Borg. He now has the War Axe. So even without the War Axe, he's already making it so difficult for Mirana Evos to, uh, to run away from him. And right now, with that uh, item, he is even a, a bigger problem now for Mirana yeah. Evos. Ooh, Ogwin and Few, enough of a threat already to make sure that Kazen double times yeah. hastens the purple take so they can actually make a position for this last turtle. All right, some hope for those who are uh, members of the Hukbo watching. Uh, Minana Evos are still on their procedural take, even if they do lose their gold lane tier one. Yeah. Uh, they're still on the one, two. They're still trying to get farm on their cores. Yeah, uh, again. Temper the tempo of AP Bren, but the longer you temper the tempo, the more devastating an eventual mid game power spike of AP Bren will be. How many times have we seen APB? Around seven, eight, nine minutes in, win a big team fight, and then suddenly just snowball from there. Banana Evos will try to contest, but Flap TZ single handedly, well, with the help of Ogwin, pushing back the members wow. of Banana Evos with his flames, respecting the X Borg. Kirk was like, guys, it, it hurts, uh, Kazen, it hurts too. Yeah, uh -huh. let's get out of here. Wow. Call him Jonathan Stonewall. You see that? Just two dudes pushing away four or five members and doesn't even need to have Kyle TZ use retribution. Yeah. Jonathan Stonewall. Don't forget the ghost AKA of Stonewall Jay Wall. Jackson. Yeah. And now the problem is, will doming be enough for this? That's why I thought that Carrie is such a, a meta hero for sure. Yeah. But maybe not the best for Minana Evos. They're looking for something long range. And I think that, you know, you, you said the Layla could have been... Uh, could have been a, a something for Minana Evos. I think I would dig really that deep. Like Nathan, yeah. Layla perhaps, but not Carrie. And they're oh. suffering now. Minana Evos getting pressured in the jungle. Kyle TZ will not be able to steal the purple buff away. AP Bren now. I, I have to put on my anal analysis cap again because there's a lot of action that we're seeing here. It's just us gushing over AP Bren really and how they're yeah. controlling everything. Uh oh. It looks like Flap TZ is setting something up here. This is a long pincer play. Oh, yeah. Or at least a push for mid tier one. A minute and a quarter here. Uh, under a minute left until the uh, Lord spawns. 
Uh, oh, Amazing flap, lane flap. control here. Three versus one. Flap TZ. Uh oh. His Fraga armor is going to get bursted down. Oh, oh last insanity, but popped off early. Let's see. Flicker dash as well with the Fraga armor pop. And will he be able to get away? If he does, I won't believe it. But no. Manana Evas complete the chase. They're going to be able to kill Flap TZ. But here comes AP Brand. Ah. Oh, Gwen goes in. The Minoan Fury. Not going to be able to hit anyone, but the Purify actually surviving the. Uh, so helping out the members of Manana Evos. Spider Miles getting chased now. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Super Marco pushing out. Double kill here for Kyle Ooh. TZ. And just like that, that's what we talked about. Around the eight to nine minute mark, the turnaround. Mid game power spike for APB. And it was off of the back of Minana Evos thinking they got a free kill on Flap. Yeah. Yes. At what cost? What cost? Everything. Everything. For Minana Evos, they do have a lot of chase potential. I mean, you can understand why they went for that play, but it, they took so much time. That's the thing with carry, even with... That's why I felt like it's not the, the best with Rafaela, because you see them like chasing people, but you're not actually hitting, you're just actually running. Yeah. <laughs> if, if they want to stop here, Flap TZ, Fraga Armor, oh, Last Insanity already committed, oh. but Super Marco with a massive blazing duet! But it's what? actually Kaysen who gets the Retribution win, but he gets punished! May I have spoken too soon? No, I did not! Killing spree for APB, they lose the Lord, Minana finds a miracle, but they're gonna lose their turret in mid! Alright, let's see, can they convert? That was a very, very expensive trade! Minana Evos lose a hero and a turret, and even maybe they're purple for the Lord! GDP, yes it is! Purple of gone! And again, the question still stands, at what cost? Whew. Well, if they did live to see another day, another minute bot for Minana Evos. Cannot do Oh, another blazing the way just like that from out of nowhere, but Kirk with a massive penalty zone, actually, defensive one. DPZ, as I believe Leo calls it. Lancy trying to skip away to... Oh, oh, oh. I have to get away from here. Minana Evos will have their orange buff stolen oh. in the mid. Lance. Flap TZ trying to hold on. All right, Lancy able to regroup with his team here in mid. Again, there is a trend, folks. Minana Evos, whenever they walk away with something, it's always a three-for-one trade. Yeah. A lord for... A mid, a hero, and a buff. Yeah. Earlier, three for one, flap TZ for three other members. I wonder if Minan Evos will slowly notice that, hey, this, the man doesn't add up. In the mid lane, still sending back the members of Minana Evos. Appraiser's Wrath not going to deal a lot of damage. And the Lily is starting to hurt. AP Bren, yes, it has been their game for majority of it. But that Lord, yeah. somehow, we asked at what cost. We saw it. Minana Evos able to push out and balance things out somewhat. Yep. A bit of swing for Minana Evos. Definitely needs a lot more than that. And it felt, it felt now, right, when Minana Evos still has the Purify onto Doming, what they can do is to invite AP Brent to get into their circle and then punch them afterwards. Yeah. Maybe that is the play for Minana Evos. Oh, like a little bit of a tug of war. Yeah. That type of thing. Do slowly bait them in into making a big mistake. Purple buff invade though, who's gonna be able to get a Lancy oh. at the back there, stop there, Ogwen. Purple buff actually not secured by Minana Evos, but the members of uh, Minana Evos are low, Kirk. Oh no! Forced to get away, but no! Flap Daisy with the last insanity chase under tower! And AP Brand continues to fight. Another blazing to wake up again from Super Marco. KZ trying to survive, but Super Marco and Kathy now put in a difficult position. Ogwen oh, with a massive Minoan Fury, but it's actually gonna be AP Brand running for the hills with Minana Evos. They're healed, they're oh. sustained, they have trusted their process, and they're putting the world champions to the back. Their back's against the wall as Lancy. Can he complete it? Yes, he what? does. Six down few. Flap TZ, no last way. insanity. No, no way. way. Flap no doesn't way. kill Kazen. Kazen survives. Spider Miles, the heel, the utility, prodigy oh. of Minana. But Kyle TZ with an appraiser's wrath to Lancy. Minana Evos are still fighting, showing AP Bren why the world champs wanted to face Minana in the first place. Quick recap, the math checks out to two for four. Minana Evos able to close the gap. Now with just a 600, 700 gold lead between them and the world champions. AP Bren now can only hope and think to contest. Minana Evos scores a luminous lord. Kirk, that penalty zone stopping yes, Cartesi from exactly. getting close. Great play coming out from Minana Evos for sure, especially because of what Kirk did. And we got to see through the replay Whatever happened in that big uh, clash. Unfortunately, we are great. I am actually in awe of this damage. Oh. 3.8k! Oh. oh, I felt that. That is indeed wrath from nothing, the appraiser. Nothing, not yeah. even black shoes will save you. Man, the damage was so high, I feel like it activated my gout. <laughs> I'm having a gout attack right now on the desk. <laughs>
Get that checked. Lord, Woo. I have. He told me. Just take oh, my meds. Man. Banana Eve was the, their turn that they did in that purple buff. Dare yep. I say, Blacklist-esque. How many times have we seen that before from the Royal Duo era of Blacklist International? Yeah, yeah and AP Bread knows that and turn Bread very well. It. Yeah. Let's see how they're going to tend to this now as Minana Evos might actually take one under AP Prince's nose. Perhaps. This is the time where you can say that Minana Evos have a no. lot oh. of. Okay. Okay, Black Shoes, Lancey. Forge commit, don't worry, Wolf, we'll get back to you. Yeah. Minana Evos still going to be going forward. Lord marching in. Let's see how many towers are they going to get or if they're going to be able to get any. Yeah. So this is the power spike. We were talking about the fact that. The, the way for Minana Evos to win team fights is to yeah. invite AP Bread to their own circle yeah. and then punish them at one after the other. Uh -oh. And see no black shoes, or actually he's going to be able to commit it. And now Kazen going to be going in. Kati's brought down to 50%, and, but actually Lassie fights few. And a match of last insanity will it be enough. No, it's not going to be enough. Doming. Kirk, Kazen, Spider Mouth, so tanky. Meanwhile, in the mid. The tower falls. Domek's still going to be pushing into the base, actually stopping Super Marco from joining in this oh. fight. Shades of H2, Yaoi and Rene J. We've seen this before. Double the ton of raises. Wrath not actually going to land. Ogun with the Massive Minoa's Fury, but Whoa! the damage is sustained and the damage! Sustained and damage still from Minana Evos. They're holding on. Are they actually going to put a stain on the record of the world champions? The new White Tigers, the Young Bloods. But Kyle Tizi, Super Marco want to fight back. Winter Dredge Super Blazer Marco. Out to the back. Super Marco versus Domeng. He uses the BMI to get back. Kaysen, Kaysen, Domeng go back. But oh. no, Flap TZ fights Kaysen. Minata Evos are running for the hills. Close, but not quite. Oh. Oh. One more for Doming. Light wheels from the carry. Two for three. Big time take from Minana Evos, leaving but one inhibitor for AP Bren. And this is Dome just reaching, showing us his peak performance. Probably one of the best games that I've ever seen that Dome play. Actually, 3 1 and 3, but that does not tell the story of how much impact he did in this particular game. Pushing two turrets while well, Minana Evos are making so much diversion up top, then eventually punishing Flap TZ, who has been a problem for them. We're talking about how bad the carry is. But he's making it so that it looks really good in this game. It's been a while since we've actually seen AP Bren on the back foot like this. Staring at a base, just barely standing. One inhibitor left and a Lord that they could only dream of contesting. This is a significant 2.5k gold lead. And their old tricks aren't working quite as quickly. Quite as simple. Doming is a threat. Doming is a menace right now. And that base, like that siege, as long as it took was exactly what Minana Evos needed. If anything, if AP Bren were a lesser team, they would have actually lost right then and there on the spot. Yeah. Sustaining damage online for Minana Evos. They've hit their power spike. Watch but out Doming with his position. Yeah, watch out for Doming. <laughs> Try to watch for that old super marker. Actually finds Doming blazing the wet. Both wind and nature's already spent, but Spider Miles! Clutch from the young roamer! Flicker and the holy baptism to get Super Marco down, and this looks good for Minana Evos. Quick and hasty. That was a decision made by Spider Miles. We need my ult for this moment now, wow. not for the Lord take. It is clear as day. Minani was in control. 4K ahead, and we have the Lord spawning at about five. Oh, that's beautiful. And Doming went in for the Malefic Lord to go with that. I think uh, he still has the, the boots. And th th that flicker coming out from Spider Miles was really clutch. Yeah. With all the fairness from AP Bread, they have so much wave clear. This is Nana and X Borg. So Minana Evos, they are the lead right now, but they have to respect that. And let's see them become uh, creative on how they will approach this, the siege. Like I said, Nana and Exbor, great high ground defense. One more time, here we go. Minana Evos coming into the base, waves in mid, yeah. waves up top, waves in the bottom. You have to watch out for initiations from either of the two roamers, or maybe even the EXP laners. Both of them just clearing out the minion waves right now. AP Brand trying to take down the Lord as fast as they can. A bit of damage onto the members of Minana Evos. Minana Evos are just going to be throwing bodies. They're going to be focusing on the base. Look at Kaysen, look at Lassie. No more minion waves though. There's a minion wave coming in down mid. It will oh. not be popped. Lassie falls. A bit of an error by Minana Evos, but that's going be a kill on the flap TZ, a kill on the case, and th at that too. Two for one trade. AP Bren, Minata Evo's trying to brute force it. Oh man. Wow. A misjudged Mis moment. Absolutely misjudged. A slip up. If only there was but one minion, Kazen could have really broken down the base. But no, we're staring at a two for one trade. And now AP Bren able to step out of their base. G gentlemen, I, I feel like uh, we could call that a BFS, a brute force siege. Brute force siege, that did not work, unfortunately.
for me, Nana Evos. And like I said, this is X work. And Nana, you cannot do that. But I understand why they did it. They needed the carry to pop the ultimate, have the purify, and just go to the base. But at this point, Few hurts a lot. Ooh. He doesn't just hurt Few, he hurts a lot. He hurts Few. AP Brand cleaning house, stepping out of their base and just taking away what's left for Minana Evos. That orange buff, mid lane tier two. Flapdeezy working on bottom, Marco up top, and. Yep, there we go. Minana Evos lost about 300 gold on the clapback. The only thing that they were able to push was top lane inhibitor, and then what? Put AP Friends base at half. Yes. At half. But that regenerates, as we do know. There we go. It's close to full now. Yep. Yeah. And for Minana Evos, this is already a battle of like maintaining your own circle, or your own influence, your own formation. The box. The box that we're talking about. Invite AP Friends to that box. Which means, generally means that Minana Evos needs to uh, force AP Brand into a fight outside of AP Brand's base. Yes. Oh, Lancey a little bit too eager! No way! Exploded is the Lily of the Black Shoes! No Couldn't way. even be pressed! That's a mixture of uh, true damage from Flap and just Fuel. Oh, no way. Yep. No way that happened. That's the young hot bloodedness. No okay. Nothing, no Purify, no Black Shoes will save you from the Hellfire and Brimstone that Flap TZ and oh, Few just threw at Lancey. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's a Lilia that we said that is very important against this, yep. against this um, Fredrin. And not only that, whoa, against whoa, whoa. the X-Borg, Super Marco! And then with a brute force play, they find Super Marco, but the wind of nature actually clutch. Blazing to to try and get away whoa. from Kaze and Ogwen trying to provide space. Oh, to make sure was flapped easy with a massive last insanity into the back. Ogwen falls, Kaze already used the decimate. Super Marco fighting back, Kaze will fall, Kaze gets punished, whoa. Super Marco gets punished. Big Mino and Fury with the destruction of the spider miles Exploded by the blitz of Molina. Kathy and Super Marco with a response. They're chasing after Kirk. This Terizla will run and try to swing his hammer, but he falls again. Minara Evos. What oh. was that? Three for none. The body of Smith's gonna do only so doming. much. It's up to doming now. Against three, and yeah, there is but one thing that Minana Evos can hold on to. 3D. Doming don't die, and he hasn't quite yet. But they're gonna stare down the barrel of a big lord. This is an evolved lord, gentlemen. Ooh. Oh man, if that was a, uh, a slew of mistakes for Minana Evos. If you all thought Minana Evos were in trouble inside AP Brand's base, how about underneath a Lord that amplifies AP Brand's damage? Whew. That's the uh, Evolve Lord we're talking about. AP Brand are not out of the woods yet, but my oh my, Minana Evos cannot afford those kinds of lays. Yes. And you, you understand, I mean, after Lancey's death, that was already like a lot of bad news for Minana Evos. And then they commit another one series of unfortunate events that yeah. they themselves put themselves into. Yeah. I saw what they were, we get what they were trying to do, but it feels like the moment that you saw Super Marco was able to get away, he, they should have just backed off. They really exactly. shouldn't have forced that. But now here comes AP Bren, Evolved Lord, and now their turn to get some turrets down after Minana Evos have shaved the towers off of theirs, waiting for a jump, waiting for an entry. Who will be the angle? Will it be Flap? Will it be Ogwen? Oh. Will it be a surprise Holy Baptism coming in from Spider Miles who doesn't have his flicker just yet, but Kalti is taking a lot of damage from Domang right now. He has his immortality, so he's not going to get taken down. Super Marco takes down the tower up top. AP Bren, systematic and smart about it. Showing the young bloods, this is how you do it. Be careful. Look at the patience in AP Bren. They could have forced it. They could have maybe even rushed the wave down bottom, but they know that the yep. management is not on point. So they took, hey, mid, top, that's all we're going to do. Winter Dungeon. <laughs> It, 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 it's just a matter of the little decisions that will really Phew. cost you. Oh no, Kazen. Few. Does he have his passive if ever he gets taken down? He is still alive though, but Kazen and the members of Manana Evos were able to pressure him. Super Marco now, willing down that tower. AP Bren. Yep, they're not going to dive it. They're going to wait for the next Lord. Of but course. now it's even. All 18 towers in this game have fallen. Gold doesn't matter now. 20, 33 minutes, everybody's just maxed out. But you also have to wonder what will be the defensive items now for the Marksman. And for the side uh, of uh, Super Marco only going for the wind, wind of Nature, I'm still interested in what Doming's mindset is with his Winter Truncheon. Probably just gonna sell it later on. Yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't have the immortality. It will juggle it. It's one layer of the juggle. So if he gets caught by Flap TZ, he freezes exactly. right before mm. exactly. the, the tail end of the burst. Uh, exactly. If he gets caught into a Minoan Fury, same. And oh. then 
Well, since Winter Trudgeon does give like a little bit of magic power, does that increase the magic power, uh, <laughs> yeah, magic guess. damage output of the Wind Talker? It should be. It does. So maybe that's be. why he chose that? It helps with the minion wave clear. Hey. Minion wave clear, yeah. Because it's going to matter now because they have no turrets. Ooh. It's just as bad. There's also that... Uh, that fable that when you have the wind talker going up against uh, a marksman with a wind of nature, oh, and yeah. you deal the magic damage. Yeah, that's that. That's too. Yeah, no, that yeah. works. But that's that's not a lot. But it's, it's something. It's not nothing. It's not nothing. Uh, it's yes. something. Yes. It's not nothing. Here we go. Okay. This switch to the. Oh, wait. Fifth lord. Fifth lord. Athena shield on Doming, selling his one of his damage items. Yeah. And you okay. also see their Twilight Armor into Kaze, and so it should help out with any of the bursts, magic or physical. Don't forget that. Yeah. AP Brand now, zoning out Manana Evos. At around 20k, 15k, maybe someone's gonna turn. Maybe someone's gonna try to come into play. Kazen and Kirk nearby. All it's gonna take is to throw bodies, a pullback onto Kazen using the taunt of the Fredrin. Slow, calm, calculated. Middle minion wave getting pushed back by AP Brand. Few is managing it. Yeah. Lord gets reset. Lane. Lord gets reset here. Yeah. Claude to the, to the bottom lane. Yeah, watch out for that Claude. I go for a push. Molina is such a problem. Yeah, getting a bit of far. Molina is a problem, but the damage of the Gloom says again, the Shadow Energy a problem. Check out Super Marco here, off map, just managing that wave. Yeah, oh, plus he's insanity. with the last insanity, getting popped off. Is he going to be able to get some more damage? Yes, he does. If you bread now, still calculated. Minana Evos are playing a well around that Rafaela. The heal's coming out. KZ and Doming have an angle. If everything going to be going for it, the damage out of you, is it, it going to be enough? No, it's gonna, not going to be enough. Katiji with a massive ton. Immortality on him is going to get popped. Blazing to it by Super Marco. Minana Evos getting pushed back. Bla uh, Immortality is getting popped as well. Ooh. Meanwhile, Lassie there in the back gets taken down. Off position is that Lily a little bit too eager to get a kill. And that is advantage for AP Brand. Five versus four. Huge take here. All the ults, all the time, all the space that AP Bren invested in. Minana Evos now have to face the facts. Four to five, not a good chance. No good odds there as yeah. the Lord Dance continues here. But maybe, again, Minana Evos might find a miracle. Yeah, Spider Mask has Flicker. And that's a massive battle spell to have, while AP Bren will have Flicker and Flap as well as Few. Lord here, a fifth. Doming on the back lines. Holding on. Doming on the back line. Okay, they're going to be going in for the entry already. Penalties don't come in. The damage coming in from Minana Evos is crazy, but here comes AP Brand. Few is not going to be here because he has to handle Doming with a minion wave push. Super Marco handing back. The members of AP Brand need to go back because Doming is going in for Marco. the push. Doming is going for the ultimate play. Can he actually? The minions aren't in Outside. range. The minions aren't in range. Outside. Doming immortality gets popped. Can he? Will he? They're low. Doming. One man, one dream. He cannot. Few and flap. Five years together, that's what you get! Mega kill on the Miles by Marco! Costly gambit by Minana Evos. Again, shades of the old next play way. Multiple times in the history of the MPL, they have attempted to do just what Doming tried to do there. But AP Brent says, not on my watch, as they go for a Lord and manage the rest of the waves. Yeah. I think this is the part where Midnight says, that's it, that's, that's it. it, that's it. That's it! That's it! In midnight wave. 30 seconds. It's always the third. We know for sure that from one end of the river to another, or half of the river to another end, that's 30 seconds. That's a 30 second rule, and that's more than enough for AP Bren. Four versus three, AP Bren looking at the base of Minana Evos. Can they actually get members down? Double taunt there into Kaze and Eker. Blazing Duet already committed there by the Claude. Lancy trying to clear the minion waves. AP Bren, AP Bren, they do not have the minion wave just yet. Kirk with a massive penalty zone to buy time to find hope. That's a shutdown of the fuse. Nana by the Lilia. AP Bren Doming's still alive. waiting for that Lord. Oh Doming no. in three, Spider Mouse in ten. The clock is ticking on AP Bren's chance. Minana Evas will have the members in. The Lord outside of range. The minions outside of range. Oh. And for their fighting back, suppress the Takatizi using the Winter Drudge. Jenny falls, and survives, Super Marco in a nature, Immortality gets popped, Ogwen try to save him, Motivation Roar, healing the claw just in time, here comes Flap to help Domeng, last insanity, bang, not enough, they have to go back, this is still not done, 28 minutes in, Ogwen getting chased by Kirk, wow! Woo! The game continues! The game indeed continues, Lancy just Respawn at the right time to kind of clear the waves. And they manage it as well. And you can see that Dominic just survived long enough for him to get back into the fray. And now there's a there, there's just a lot of time for the Minana Evos to work with. We can see through the replay once again that defense as Dominic respawns. It's 
tanky enough with this build up coming out from the carry. It then goes for Super Marco, Wind of Nature versus Wind of Nature, but uh, Ogwen is just at the right moment to kind of save his mate. Oh, wow. 29 minutes, just about. 7k head AP Bren is, again, it doesn't matter what the gold lead looks like anymore. You're just investing in item juggles, you're investing in lane management, and now as Kyle TZ spawns, all five members are back. They're all waiting for their battle spells to go off cooldown and their active items to actually go off cooldown. Something to note here, folks. AP Bren needs few. Without few, these yes. huge sieges don't work I unless do. it's a one is the three man lead. That's yeah. true. So, again, I think also AP Bren here misread that final fight. For sure. Yeah. 100%. Right. Wanted to go for the play. I also really want to come so, Kirk committing that uh, penalty zone exactly. right away the moment he's off exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah. That was a big one. Okay. And Midnight was wrong. It's not it. Yet. Yep. <laughs> not, not like that. Not, not, if, not if the team responds that way <laughs> and if the team who's about to end it yeah. Yeah. miscounts uh, what uh, the opponent might be bringing to the table. So again, clear, clear miscalculation and yep. just Minana Evo saying it's not over till it's over. Uh. 30 minutes, here we are. The reigning world champions, if you're just tuning in folks, here at MPL Philippines Season 13 on the English stream. This is where we are at this point. No more towers. Just who presses buttons better? 30 minutes in, we're going into the fifth round of this bantamweight MMA championship <laughs> match. And it's just but game one in this best of three in week two. Wow. That's, in that's how intense it is. That's how high the stakes are. And you know what's great about this Lord Dance is that nobody nobody has immortality. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Like literally nobody at this so point. So we have to wait at least like two minutes. But do we have two but minutes? But do we have two yeah. minutes? That's the question. Do, do, do these teams have two minutes? Because again, Dolman can go for the same play again. That's yes. what he's doing here. He's setting it up with the help of. Spider Miles, yes, and the Holy Healing will help him quickly rotate. Yeah. And Super Marco's on guard. Super Marco's saying, nah, -uh, don't. Yeah, I feel like that's an unsung hero here so far. We don't often hear his name, but we see the effects of it. Minana Evos are playing around the Holy Healing in the range of one Rafaela on their side. That's how they reposition. Sometimes that's how they engage. That's how they avoid yeah. what AB Bren throws at them. I mean, uh, there's no. I don't think that Spider Miles wears conceal. Right, so. Definitely goes for favor. favor so yeah. yep. It couldn't be a play for the the one five play wherein they go for the conceal play and then they look for a target. But that will not be possible. Oh. At this point, it's just about controlling the minion waves. Yep. And I think the slow push will benefit the team much better than an actual push. Yeah. And I like what AP Brenner doing this. Either a one three one converted into a one one two one. Yep. And yes, we're talking about the numbers of heroes there. Because that opens up a lot of possibilities. Either a split push yeah. down mid, a surprise, a wrap around through the mid. While yeah. flap teasing, you leave your EXP laner there. Classic play by APB. Uh, Ogwen went for the rapid boots and then for the conceal at this point. Goes fast. Wants to go fast, but that conceal, it means that you let go of the favor, right, for AP yeah. Bren. So, again, it's, it's about the here and now. It's exactly. not even about re-engaging anymore. Exactly. They, they've had it because so far, uh, the re-engage hasn't served them well. The re-engage put them in this position now, yeah. wherein Minan Evos can, in the snap of a finger, end yes. things. And again, I guess apparently we do have two minutes because Spider Miles just had his yeah. immortality come off cooldown. Oh, well, I wonder if Minana Evos got the vision there onto Super Marco. They know where the claw is. They know the positioning of AP Brand somewhat. But I don't think so. Maybe Domang just wasn't in range to see that go into that shrub. AP Bren are also opening up their possibilities for a split push, yeah? Whoa, 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 because Doming's doing the same thing. For the first time in a while, actually, Doming is uh, in no man's land. He is yeah. so far away from Miles and the rest of Minana Evos. Yeah, and if ever Super Marco goes there, Doming might actually catch him Get off guard. Get out of there! Get out of there! Oh, oh no! He sensed it! Domeng, wind of nature, can he get away from this? He gets bursted down, immortality, he got to buy it in time! He didn't have that at that moment! Minata Evos now have lost their gold laner. Kirk tried to respond, flap at the rest. Super Marco with a blazing to West, Spider-Mouse with a holy baptism. Here comes Lancey in the back. Kirk, immortality popped as well. Can he survive? Penalty zone onto the Super Marco Claude and KZ going after Marco. Oh! But Marco, what was that? The shield of the immortality. He bought it in time. He bought the immortality in time and got the shield and he survived the decimation. And now Kazan is left out. 
He has to consider, do I defend? Do I push in? Because Lancey is so close to the base. 1v1 with Kyle Teasy. Super Marco, he's still playing this game with KZ and Ogwen and Flap and Marco. Can they get the jungler of Minata Evos down? Oh. With the truncheon to try and survive. Buys immortality. That's four versus one. And four is not going to oh. be the one. KZ finally falls. Threes, the one. As AP Bren have an advantage. Five versus two. That's it. AP Brand's gonna send the wave oh up top. Oh my god, should we play the Midnight A sound, wave in sound mid. cube? Kirk, Kirk cutting the waves, but he's forced to go back. He can't, he can't afford to do this. View! Oh, minion wave in the bottle. They have to watch out for that, AP Brand. It might be a race between the minions and the members of APB. Oakwood oh, now. Minions will spawn in three seconds. Is everyone still breathing? I'm trying to. Kirk with a penalty zone. Supermarket trying to survive. The minions have to spawn. View! Look at View! What? What? Focusing on the base. The winning moment isn't just completely there yet. I can't see what I'm trying to play by play. Kyle TZ under it. the base. Few gets bursted down but alive. No Super way! Marco, is it minion not no way! Base? No way! Oakwood! Oakwood! Can you? Oh! <laughs> Master Oakwan! Unbelievable! I don't think it's an understatement. Remember this number from here on out. 916 max damage of what a Nana can do on a base building. That's a basic attack. Basic attack from few. I don't think I'm wrong in saying even this game right here pushed our world champions to a limit Absolutely. they have not seen Absolutely. in a long while. Is this a new record? 34 minutes in season 13? Yes. 33-31 was the longest game. Whew. Was that AP and, Bra uh, AP AP and, Bren Bren and Blacklist International? Now it's AP Bren and Minana Evo. Something yes. oh. woke up. Something woke up in the White Tigers Whew. after losing to Onik last night and decided, you know what? We can't do this anymore. Not like this. Not this was testament to what they're capable of. I yeah. Whew. Unbelievable. And it all went down to just doming being in that spot where it was actually a smart way to take it. It's yeah. a rock or a bush. Went in there. But but I think Kyle was maybe I don't know, smarter maybe. Yeah. I kind of read it. I think he read it from the fact that the Litho Wanderer was taken there. And the fact that they knew the positioning of where Supermarket yeah, was placing. Like, I don't know whose call like it was he, an AP it, Red. They are they're interpolating yes, it. Yeah. It was better map deduction skills. Exactly. Yeah in a split second because if if there was a holy healing or a holy baptism in one rogue bush maybe that would have made yeah. the difference and he, he went for the dash right so uh, i mean like uh um uh, kyle tz dashed first so yeah. that he has that knock up yeah. afterwards correct uh, but again a split second would have made uh, made the difference because Doming was already way out. Doming was already recalling. Exactly. So huh? he knows he was in danger. Let's talk about this game now. Unbelievable. Wolf tell us who the mvp is. I don't know, man. At this point, everybody is. But Ogwen, of course, many times in this game. And this is not the, the last itemization coming out from Ogwen. In fact, went for the Rapid Boots eventually to go for the favor back. But then, Fleeting Time as well as Flashing the Oasis and Queen's Wings, a very important item to have in this particular game. And that actually transitioned into an into a actual classic. We're going to see how long the, the, this round of highlights will be for both teams. As we know that everybody is just trying to outplay each other, and that's a very true for Minana Evos. However, in the uh, let's just talk about the breaks of the game. Like in the end, Minana Evos didn't just didn't have uh, the better decision making, and that's because they are making so many mistakes. And by the way, Flap and Marco defended this so well, waiting for Doming, and then uh, look at this: no more minions available for AP for Minana Evos. So many times did they come very very close, and there's another wave of minions, but unfortunately, no more damage out. Of for Minana Evos, this case and was taken out. Another fight ensues, and Super Marco popped the wind of nature. Uh, and the immortality also bought the immortality, I mean. The right moment. And then Flap TZ just output the damage. And then on this defense, look at this. Few knew that that the cannons will not go up close in person because they're long range. So that they will not be in range of the base, and that's why the base was tanky. But in comes another defense from Minana Evos. Very smart take coming out from AP Bren for sure. However, Minana Evos just, you know, positioned themselves so well and that penalty zone into the winter truncheon really forced AP Bren to commit. And now this was that play. The, the play that kind of destroyed Minana Evos' hopes. And even when the Minoan Fury wasn't on point, they still got it. You can see Ogwin healing for a little bit. 
Actually waited for the minions and then just rushed. Going for the attack. Went in to jump to the right side. And then eventually took out the base. So many good details in this game that will never be summarized with just a few minutes. We, we are going to be looking at AP Brent and Minana Evos's choices when it comes to the emblems. Tank for Flappy as well as Ogwen. And then for um, Spider Max going for support. As, um, also important to take note that Kazen went in for the damage build-up, which he had a lot of impact with. There's nothing really special about this, but the fact that both teams are just focusing on the objectives, or at least for when it comes to the Lord Dances, that's how Minana Evos were able to prolong this game, then eventually took out AP Bread. Again, it's all about circle versus circle. Minana Evos, the reason why they were winning some of the team fights in this game was because of the fact that they're inviting AP Brent into their own bubble. Get inside and then punch them afterwards. It happened to Flaptizi, eventually happened against Super Marco, died three times in this game. But you can really pinpoint any kind of uh, any kind of bad plays coming up from Minana Evos because there are so many good plays that they did as well. However, in the end, deciding to go with Lancey just being overly aggressive, as well as, you know, Domingue's positioning and that choice of bush that he held on to. In hindsight, of course, it looks like a mistake, but then again, Minana Evos are just trying to make plays happen, and I think that's a, that's a hallmark of a good team. Uh, um, yeah. Dan, as well as Renmar. Because mm. I think that for Minana Evos, they were trailing behind for so long, mm -hmm. but there wasn't any time where they were just, you know, passively waiting for AP Brent to commit the mistake. They're trying yeah. to be proactive, actually. Yeah, and that proactivity, I feel like... Though there were times where we questioned it, deep down, I liked it. Yes. Because they were trying to find something. Yeah. And I eventually, a lot of their plays weren't just one-time payoffs or, or short-term payoff plays. Because one of the two moments when it was almost over was actually Doming setting up that split plane push yeah. uh, that took maybe, what, 90 seconds for him mm -hmm. to spend off map and setting up. And then that was almost it, actually. But the minions weren't up to snuff. Flaptizi and Fuse just inhumane synchronization and yes, synergy inhumane, just actually. came into play. It just just went kicked in, right? Yeah. Uh, much like from uh, that uh, 2020, 2012 film Pacific Rim, where they're drift compatible. They just know what the other's thinking. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just all right. Let, let's defend. Yeah. And I don't know how else you can beat that. Uh, we'll leave oh, that to man. Banana oh. Evos during the time that we're off uh, the draft for now, as we wait for game number two. Real quick, let me tell you all about Smart Giga Arena. It's open to all Smart GT subscribers where you can enjoy an array of esports and arcade games, much like this one you're watching right now, MLBB. Yeah, just create an account on GigaArena.smart using your Smart or TNT mobile number. With the new Smart Giga Arena 20, you can unlock the world of Giga Arena tournaments for your shot at prizes. Yeah, Giga Arena comes with two Giga Arena tickets and 100 MB for all sites for only 20 pesos. Buy it for one day, load Giga Arena 20 now in the Smart Online Store. I'll see you guys in the training grounds to greatness. Now, with that said, there were a lot of things that we questioned about Minana Evos's draft. But uh -huh. here, it looked like it's the exact draft that they needed yeah. to get to the 34, 35 minute mark to push AP Brent to their limit. Yeah, and again, going back to the point that uh, Wolf made earlier when we asked them, uh, are, when you when you asked, are we gonna see the new picks of spider Miles? You'd rather see the mastery of their comforts right now. And I think that's just what we yes. saw. Close to the peak mastery from yeah. Minana Evos to push AP Brand to their limit. And I think that this is also the time where we have to talk about Doming because even when they lost that and even when he was the, the last guy to die with yeah. that kind of play, I will always just say that Doming played that game so well. I think that uh, whatever I said, because I did say that it was the best game that Doming ever played, I still think that that's true. The way that he handled AP Brand with his positioning, and the way that he calculated every single thing, like the mastery of the carry with this guy shows in that game. I think that this is the time where we have to also talk about Doming and put that in the, you know, in the, the list of the good gold laners that we have here in the Philippines. Yeah. Hey, I take great gold laners. Better than great. I actually stick to the uh, belief that as long as next play Evos have 3D, Doming don't die, Doming they're on don't a die. good path. Yeah. Let's go ahead and throw over to Ogwin right now. He's going to share a little bit about Season 13. Uh, Tingin ko, pa para may wasan yung ganong uh, pangyayari is huwag mo na lang isipin na nag-champion kayo eh. Kasi every time naisipin na nag-champion kayo, doon kayo maglilay low or doon kayo parang uh, easy nyo yung pag... Uh, bababaan yung intensity ng ano, training nyo. 
Tsaka yung mindset nyo parang hindi ganun ka ganda kung pupunta sa tournament. Ayun, may advice naman sa amin si Coach Daki, si Few, tsaka si Flap. Eh kasi galing lang silang champion, tapos after nung champion nila medyo rocky yung ano nila, yung daan nila. So, in-advice, in-advice namin na, in-advice kami ni Coach Daki mostly, uh, wag na wag isipin talaga na nag-champion, tsaka wag lang, wag, wag rin magpakapante sa kung anong meron ngayon. Complacency could have kicked in in December of 2023. It didn't. Complacency could have kicked in about a few weeks back. As you said, Wolf, it didn't. And now here in Season 13, they are still lossless. Game-wise, series-wise. And that's what Ogwin attributes over to Coach Ducky, Flap, and Few because they've been there. Yeah. Literally been there. And um, we saw that what there was the high time of the pandemic actually. Oh yeah. Uh, there's a lot of like uh, a lot of problems that they had to face, and then when they went back here in the Philippines, um, it was clear. I mean, even even they themselves admit that they really uh, prioritized different stuff already. That's why they struggled in the season afterwards. Yeah. yeah. I guess that collective experience of a uh, of few flap and coach Ducky just really carries on over to this new generation of AP brand with Ogwe and Kyle and Super Marco. So you could really see they're trying so hard to tell them, please don't fall off because we've been there. <laughs> Forgot Pando. And Let's Pando. go back to the draft here. This is the game one draft uh, for AP Bren versus Minana Evos. And yeah, the turns for Minana Evos were clearly the carry. Yes. It, we, we swore it could have been something else. And then that third pick, Rafaela, that says, you know what, we're, we're still the old, well, the Minana Evos you know, and this is how we're gonna take it all the way against AP Brand. Do we see any changes from either team mm. going into game two? Are there any small adjustments? Because hmm. even AP Brand have to start scratching their heads like, yo, yo that shouldn't have lasted that long. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe the Frederick from AP Brand, but I think that there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, Moments in the game where it made a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the only thing because I think that the draft here for AP Brand, the opening draft was perfect. Now, if you're looking at Minana Evos, um, with this series that very earlier, uh, early on picked up by Minana Evos, that's actually maybe the question here. But then again, it worked also. Kirk was amazing yeah. with that hero, and it kind of felt like they had a set play for that one. Maybe I'll change the carry, even when it's the carry is still a great pickup. I think that there were many moments in that game where you could have used the range yeah. for uh, maybe a plate or maybe a uh, I don't know, maybe a Brody or I don't know, maybe a Beatrix, in fact. Because oh, yeah. Tommy could play that hero. Could have been you know? too. Which is why, in totality, it feels like it's so unnatural to pick a hero with range. It's because the metagame is all about close to mid. Yeah. All of the big heroes in all of the trinities, in all the roles, prefer to stay close or mid. Yeah. So maybe by trying to break the wheel and yeah. change your approach, might be detrimental might be something that both teams aren't ready for yeah uh, yeah even when i answered that question with that carry pick i also believe that it's not the draft that uh, that made it difficult mm -hmm. for uh, minana evos to win that game it's just the decision making like Latsy yeah. just getting bursted by ap yeah. because of his misstep like them chasing mm -hmm. um super marco those yeah. are just you know the breaks of the game that they have to fix uh, one thing i want to say here though i think ap bren uh, they might be considering taking out uh, the Rafael. Go full hack a miles. Oh, I mean, it looks damn. like they instantly got a feeling of this is why teams in the past matches have been taking it away from Spider Miles. It's just been that damn good for Minana Evos. Let's see if I that's going to be the case. Is that a Rafa ban? Oh, go. it's the first one. Oh no, that's two. Well done, my friend. Two steps towards hack a miles here. AP Bren going to stay on the play. And they take out the Angela and the Rafaela, while Minana Evos take out the Nolan and the Joy. Um, it's AP Brand who's actually switching it up this time. Oh Ooh. no! Hack a Miles. That's it. That's it. They're yeah. on ham. That's it. Hack a Miles. So what is left? Yeah, Matilda. And that might be the first pick for AP Brand, actually. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. If Minana Evos are going to be opening up the Matilda, that means they want to. Actually, no, they shouldn't. They shouldn't. Yeah, okay, of course, they'll take it out. Yeah, they take it out. I had no choice. Mm -hmm. So what are you left with? I think Arlot is still open. Yeah. So that could be um, uh, the opening here for AP Bren. Uh, Join Nolan gets taken out. No assassin. Or maybe pick up Baxia. I don't know. Maybe Baxia. Maybe even first pick Nova would be good. The yeah. is good. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, the is great. See, see if they will. Arlot or the should be the yeah. first picks here for AP Bren. 
wonder if they should price and go. Uh, nah, they're not going to jump into a CC. Maybe not because the fact that these are all open makes just a simple Nova first pick make sense. Yeah. yeah. Because you're going to overload the other side. Yes. Yeah. That's Novaria. So you pick up Arlet here if you're Minana Evos because you know that Kirk can play that so well. For sure. And then you're going to be left with uh, maybe a choice for oh. maybe get the Barats to go with this. You go Arlo Baksha, Arlo Barats. Yeah. Yeah, they don't or need Lilia. to. Lilia. They really like the Lilia, Lilia yeah. I guess. They play around it well. They also don't need to rush any of their marksmen, I feel like. Yeah. So Arlet Lilia, I guess, for Minana Evos. Gosh, yeah. Ruby's still open, CC's still open. There's that option of the Terizla once again for Minana Evos. Yeah. But then, um, well, it kind of... Vex? Doesn't matter to that. No, okay. Yeah. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! They rush the Diggy. Oh. They're, they're getting hack a mile, so they're just... They want it. Man. Is this Minana Evos just really feeling the pressure? Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. And AP Bread could just go for Grok, actually. Go full damage uh, for full anti magical damage build for the Grok. It'd be A OK. I wonder if this means AP Bren will be taking away something like the Bruno or the Brody. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, just so that it doesn't pair up with the Diggy. Yeah. I think it, it, there, there's a lot of merit pick, picking up the Brody right now. Yeah. So either Brody Arlot or Brody Grok for AP Bren, I feel. Oh, yeah, that would be good. But then again, you don't want to pick up the Arlot because there's a. Uh, there's a time journey. There's a time journey. journey. So maybe. Maybe just go for uh, Grok actually here for AP Bren. And yeah. then Brody. Yeah, they don't need to get their junk there yet, like Barris or something like that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Just to pick up. They go Markman already. So it's the long range combo, right? Oh, yeah, Nova, Nova, the tr Nova Tricks. Yeah. The Nova Tricks. The Nova Tricks works a lot versus squishy heroes like Lilia and Diggy. Diggy and you can be one oh. shot. But Diggy yes. wouldn't know what hit him. Yeah, exactly. But then that means AP Brand's lineup is going to be dependent on those two landing their skill for shots. Sure. Oh, I like the Akai. Yeah, it's great. Makes a lot of sense here for Minan. There's a lot of rundown potential from them, mm -hmm. which makes it so the bro that AP Brand should really ban the Brody here. Yeah. Hmm. That's just set up. I mean, you have the Times Journey, whoever Kazen finds with the heavy spin, free stacks on the Brody. Yeah. And it also makes sense to take away the pickoff type of roamers for Ogwen this time around. They take away the Bruno. I'm pretty sure they're going to take out the Brody, right? The Brody and the Diggy together might... Uh, so they'll leave the carry on? Yeah, they'll just leave the carry on. But then again... Ah, this might end up becoming a lineup that will, might be good for a carry if ever they draft it. Because we still don't see the pick of Kirk. Yeah. And he can just go, like, sustain another frontliner yeah. type. You already know you have a tanky presence in the jungle. So you know Kirk's going to be playing something tanky. Like a Terizla again, maybe. Yeah. But then when you when you have uh, uh, when you're facing up against a Beatrix, you're kind of yeah. forced in a spot where you want to pick up something like Lapo or Yu Zhong. Oh, that's true. Get in their face. Get in their face. Oh, Yu Zhong into the Nova Orbea. Yeah. Sounds that's right. miserable. Oh. And that's the G Rock ban yeah. that we thought will be picked up by AP Bren. So great Good call. Great call there from Minana Evos. So AP Bren should ban up Brody, right? What's Ogwen to pick? There's uh, Ogwen. Ogwen doesn't mind the Arlot. Oh yeah, oh Arlot Rome. He can. It's still gonna be open for him. Just, please don't go Florin. Oh yeah. <laughs> Very unlikely that they pick up the Florin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? I mean, Coach Trevor also had a That's history of drafting that. <laughs> That's also very true. There's a Brody. Yeah. Brody Ben. Honestly, a Ruby could work here for AP Ben for staying power in the front lines. You know, that's they, just the idea. They just straight up overload the diggy. Yeah. yeah. So odd to see CC still out there. Yeah. Mm, are there any roamers available that have really good wave clearing? Oh, no, Arlot. Yeah, Arlot. Uh, yeah, I'm leaning towards this might be an Arlot roam. Yeah. Looking at my list as well. Oh, how about Edith for AP Bren? Ah, mm. yeah. That's a possibility. There's the Paquito. Great. Uh, actually, it, it, it's like a, it's not, it's not Yuzong, it's not Lapu, but it's also better. Mm -hmm. yeah, in, the, in the regard, can watch at the Beatrix. Can find even the Nova. Yep. I think the, I honestly feel that Edith is good. Edith. For AP Bren. Rome, right? Rome, correct. Yeah. I like it. Then yeah. in terms of their jungle, let me see, rotational speed, fast clear, pressure. Uh, they Box? might just go for Fred, in, honestly. Fred, yeah. <laughs> Typical Fred versus... Typical. Oh! What if we see Assassin? Oh. What if he just straight up goes Fanny or something? One of the few but times. But this is Akai yeah. that they're facing, so me. Ah, yeah, that's true. 
Oh, actually, Barrett's, but Barrett's, have hold. Barrett's is still good for AP Bren, right? Oh, yeah, we did float that earlier. I actually like the Barats or Fred, either way. Yeah. Just not a Baksha. Okay, not a what did they pick okay. up? Fred, there Labu. Is. There it is. Oh, uh, my God. I was a game early, folks. You were, you were, you were game There's too early. There's the Layla. <laughs> I was a game early. There's game the Layla. Okay. All right. First brought into competitive play Let's by go. RRQ. Hoshi in that same tournament that Wolf casted uh, a few <laughs> weeks back from Kazan right. with Love. That's right. <laughs> All right. Man, I can't believe that uh, I can't believe that it will be happening, but then again, you have a lot of protection between Akai, you have the Diggy, yeah. so there's a lot of uh, ways for you to kind of outplay that. And the thing with Beatrix is that it has amazing range with uh, Renner, but at the same time, the way that you deal with it is either through a Paquito, for example, from the x the one-shot, Explainers that we know, yeah. or have a have a hero that outranges the Beatrix. Yeah, uh, three out of four weapons you're outranged with. Exactly. So even come laning phase, it's gonna be difficult. And also you have to reload with the Renner, yeah. which is also a problem for the Beatrix versus the Layla. Three and a half exactly. <laughs> weapons in you lose. Yeah. Here we yeah. go, game number two. <laughs> it's match point for AP Bren, but Minana Evos introduces a little bit of spice in order for them to maybe get a chance to take it all the way. Yep. Yes, folks, we have seen this in other regions. We know that's why I mentioned it. That's why I wanted to see it. And there's something about, again, with how Minana Evos played with the Clint before and their general play style, with Spider Miles heroes, it just makes sense. Let's see if they'll make it work. What we have seen in the past, though, as we look at the Emblem's Wolf, is that yeah. even if it, this falters in the early game, once Layla has her item, she is quite unstoppable. That's right. Oh, no! Okay. The middle fuel! Lancy! Okay. First blood starting it off. And that's gonna be very bad for Few because he's gonna lose some of the minions yeah. in the mid. Not only that, he burned his flicker. That was uncharacteristic of the idol of my kids. How'd that's that happen? I, I honestly don't know, especially because you're playing the Navaria, which can actually play out of range. I think that he felt it felt like he can outplay Lancy with the Lilia, but yeah, mm -hmm. Lancy proves to be a you know, a much improved player. Uh, yeah, something, something tells me maybe some minions got some free hits on him too. That's could that could be a potential too. You know how uh, crazily poetic it would be if uh, AP Brand lose their first game in Epic Philippines season 13 thanks to a Layla paired with a Diggy. Whoa, 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 whoa! The lore <laughs> of AP Brand's hatred, or specifically Coach Ducky's hatred for Diggy, will just expand even yeah. more. <laughs> That's history right there. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. Both just smacking each other now. Tati's in KZN. Kirk about to hit level four. Baptiste not quite there yet. I think he's a little bit more behind the next. We will see where he's close. All right, set up for both teams. First turtle gonna be very interesting given the hot start from Inana Evos. Up top, the fight continues. Okay, Kirk taking a fair bit of damage. Not Hasn't hit level four yet, so he doesn't have that knockout strike. Baptiste is gonna hit four first. Gonna stop that minion wave there. Turtle up for AP Bren, and I don't think Minana Evos are gonna be going for a contest, yeah? They're just pressuring Supermarker down in the bot lane while they're letting AP Brand get the objective. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting decision from Minana. That's uh I I guess they they are now banking on the fact that they need to win Turtle 3 and Lord 1. This yeah. what they're doing now is making it so that Kazen will have good EXP advantage over his opposition. Yep, but here comes AP Brand with an invade in there. Heavy spin onto Kaltizi, Lancy whoa. being able to free hit. The damage there in the bottom lane off cam. Ogwen actually gets a kill onto the Diggy. Kaltizi brought really low. He's trying to get away. The dash is actually going to hit the wall. He didn't get to dash through. He sort of just missed that little window of being able to dash. Yep. So that's going to be a one for one trade. And AP Brand wanted to invade, but it's their jungler that falls. So, okay, a weird decision from Minana, even weirder decision from AP Brand. Because of that heavy spin, it kind of felt like Kaltizi was there forever, was pinned to the wall forever made enough time for Kirk oh. to be there as well. Oh, 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 oh. What's surprising is that there was a kill onto Spider Miles on this bottom lane, so yeah. uh, it's definitely a big advantage for AP Brent's gold laner. Yeah, it seems like uh, Ogwin and Super Mario actually spent quite a bit. Like They really put the pressure onto Miles. So yeah. again, a little bit of breathing room. So far, I, I'd like to think that Minana Evos won mid and gold yeah. Yeah. and then lost everywhere else. So that's why <laughs> They're slowly making the adjustments Sheesh. now. They're making the decisions to say, you know what, guys? We can't keep up the space. So let's play to, again, protect what we can. Really liking this Akai rotation coming up from Inana Evos. Like, they didn't, they let go of the first turtle just so that Kazen will have enough 
uh, gap between like their levels. Mm -hmm. And Kazen is about to hit level seven and has retribution. So this will be a retri battle of purple. Oh, yeah, it's in the shrub. Kyle can't see it. Okay, Kazen gets it. Yeah, that's good. Yep. On point. And that means that he will uh, he will maintain that gap, yeah. the EXP gap. Okay, oh, destruction rush. Okay. Still not full damage just <laughs> yet. <laughs> Almost nothing at that point. Yeah. <laughs> it's more of just like a, a gust of wind. Yes. Blowing through. <laughs> Y'all laugh now. Y'all laugh Y'all, Yeah, well, I'm laughing now because I know later I'm not <laughs> going to be laughing. Uh, give it five minutes and start stealing lords. Yeah. Here we go. Turtle number two. Minana Evo's first of the scene. Kyle with a pull. As oh. Echo spots just one. Flap TZ. Ooh, good black trees there by Lancy to actually counteract the stun coming out by Flap, but he's going to get put the pin down by the heavy spin. AP Bren get the turtle. So again, Minana Evos aren't fighting into the turtle fights. Yeah. AP Bren are getting the turtles, but Minana Evos are trading their hmm. objectives. So Flap got flattened there. Yeah. Flappened. Like oh, 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 Miles. Oh, oh, Miles. Miles. Boom. Boom. Ooh, flicker in. Ogun and Supermarket are going to spot out that diggy. Lancy, though, trying to stop the exit of Ogwen, but Ogwen, he's that stunned vengeance. He's gonna continue the chase. He will. Final slash is gonna be enough. What? It is. Ogwen, my goodness. Okay, he indeed is the best of both worlds. Yeah. And Master Ogwen is definitely a master of this roam role. He knows exactly how much damage he can output with this roam Arlot. Yeah. Again, I think this is just a byproduct of Minana Evos' lineup not having any solid peel. Yeah. Oh. Well, Right? Sad Sword? Oh, Sad Sword. For Sad who? Sword by Super Marco at this early on. Right? This right. early. To go with the Fury Hammer, he is gonna hurt. Ah. Miles is just about what? Maybe three or four basic attacks? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, and Grand Theft Purple. Whoa, wait! Oh, combination of Star Shatter plus exactly. a Retribution. What did you see? That's that what I was about to say. Like, oh, okay, okay, so they planned it out like that, yeah. where Fuel will launch the projectile, and then there's the Retribution. Kazin did not expect that at yeah. all. Yeah, they, they closed the gap, so Kazin oh did not even see god. the retribution line coming. My god, AP Brenner are on a different level. They are. Their synergy is just too much. Indeed, but Minana Evos, again, they tested AP Brenner in game number one. This Dark Horse test for them, slowly proving it. I'm sure a lot of people in the community give a lot of respect for Minana Evos after their performance in game one, but now in the mid, just a game of chicken, or is, that, is someone actually gonna... No, no, no. Okay, Lancey answered it for me. They're, they're pushing up. They're, they're trying to threaten yeah. Banana Evos to even consider getting turtles. Because again, Wolf mentioned, I don't think the plan has changed. Yeah. Turtle 3, Lord 1. That's what yeah. still Banana Evos is thinking about. Exactly. But it's gonna be so much harder given that they're gonna shrink the map. Here we go, turtles up. Okay, good positioning here by Banana Evos. Actually, good sandwich. I don't think anyone knows Kazen's actually going to be there. But AP Brenner have the sandwich play. Potential possibility. Cool. Astral Echo gets the information. Massive coming in from Few. Kazen not committing the heavy spin to get away. Final slot! Whoa! What a good angle. And there's the heavy spin force out. And just like that, Minana Evo says, yep, we've lost this. Straight up, he changed Kazen's zip code, man. That was such a huge <laughs> angle. <laughs> and by the way, Few landing the godly. Astral Echo hitting onto four members of Minana Evos. Never mind angle. the plan for Minana Evos because uh, Few just spoiled all of it. Huh? Forget about it. 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 All right, here we go. <laughs> Mid lane, Lancy set to protect the only tier one turret left for Minana Evos because again, plans have changed, folks. Plans have changed. Doming's ascension ooh, ooh, ooh. into. Okay. It's doming time, is it into what you're saying? Gold doming lane, time. The golden domination actually is de denied. Okay, um, okay. It, it's not as easy for him to actually get the farm he needs. Okay. Yeah. But uh, there's an Whew. itching feeling uh, in me. And no, that's not a medical condition. But like, if like around 12, 13 minutes, AP Brent still hasn't ended the game and doming still farming up, I feel like we yeah. might end up seeing similar results as to what happened earlier in game number one, where this yeah. is going to stretch out. Uh, so right now, Minana Evo. Ouch! Marco! Oh my god! Oh, Astral ridiculous. Echo and even the Star Shatter lands! And AB Bren are just committing abilities here to make sure that they get the middle turret, but the wave, middle minion wave clear for Minana <laughs> Evo's view again! One more time! Ouch! Ouch! So oh, here we go, here we go! Oh, again! Again, again? No, 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 oh. no more, no more, no more. Lay it on the Layla. That's uh, gonna be Minana Evo's. MO right now. 
and that's understandable because what's what's happening right now is AP Brent amassed a lead where they can actually force the time's journey as well as the heavy spin and preemptively. The uh oh, Ooh, okay. That was gonna land. Oh, they're getting oh open God. from the back. Final slash synergy synchronized. It's like AP oh Brent are a bunch of Olympic God. swimmers. Dude, Spider Mouse can't be everywhere at the same time. The time's journey whenever you get hit. Exactly. Yeah. That's 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 one of the problems. I think Spider Mouse just watch there. And, Dude, I'm sorry, you're way out of range. <laughs> Unbelievable pinch coming out from AP Brand. They forced the black shoes, and then there was Ogwin and Kyle Tizi, two gatekeepers on the back lines. It's like Lancey was trapped, corralled in that spot, and there's no chance for him to survive. Yeah, he couldn't get away. Wow, AP Brand, because of that, what looks like a very little event actually has big ramifications. Yeah. That's a free lord over to the world champion so far. Barreling forward, about 4,000 gold. I feel like this is a significant 4,000. This is 4,000 with about two on Marco alone, over yeah. doming. Caught in 4K. Okay. What is this, Layla factoid? Yin now remains as the only unpicked hero in oh. MPLPH history? Wow! How true is that? Is that true? I We've never picked Yin? All the heroes at some point have. Is That's that true? That can be true, actually. It should be very true. And wow, no, no one has picked Layla until now? Was I never... In MPLPH. Were we not in yeah, any MPH. production meetings where Yin was being set up and say, you know what, we now have the Yin camera yes. ready. I don't know. Yes, because we planned that, right? Yeah, we never planned it. Oh, 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 Star Shatter and Renner's Apathy. But Minana Eva's had enough to be able to survive and now Flaptees is going to get pinned down by Kazan and he gets taken down. But Fuse still tossing out the Star Shatters. Doming brought low. Does Fuse have one oh, more no. in him? Watch out for a few. He's going to look for Doming. He has the vision. He's trying to read, but no, it will not land. But AP Brenner still continue to push with this Lord. Kazen. Kazen goes back. Kirk from behind. Kirk is, might get trapped here. Final slash in a perfect combination coming in from AP Bren. Kazen trying to stop them. Destruction rush doesn't clear the menu wave, and AP Bren still pushing. All right. Minana Evos able to breathe for just a wee bit more, given that their wave clear is pretty good and their displacement. Oh no. Oh, Let's see. Taking a lot of damage. Force use the black shoes. Oh. And in just a snap, a snap oh. of two skill oh shots. Oh my god. Oh, a few in Super Marco. Again, the condition of this being able to work was if they can land it. They've yes. been landing They've it. They've been landing it. And at this point, we play the we play the Naisu audio file. Big, Big dam. dam. Oh. oh no, Kazen. Big dam on him. Actually, um, low dam, low dam, I guess. Yeah, he's okay. <laughs> but he's the fact... Okay. That these heavy spins come out whenever Minana Evos isn't exactly. ready for it makes it worse. Exactly. It's like a Minana Evos are put in a spot where they're good as dead. They're not actually dead, but they're good as dead because their impact and influence in the game is just destroyed by just these pokes coming out from AP Bread. Yeah. For example, if you land the, the, the damage on the doming with your with the Varya and with the Nova Tricks, uh -oh. even when you don't die, you oh, can't oh, participate oh. in team fights. You don't have the black shoes anymore! And it's out. Kirk tries to clear the minion wave, but he gets a bit of fair bit of damage as well. And this is what we're going to be seeing for a while. As AP Bren will play around the Lord, play around the map, Minana Evos will play around their base. 20 seconds left until the next Lord spawns. This Lord, it be luminous. And with that, Minana Evos, I think what I was trying to say earlier was the fact that a lot of their moves are reactive. They're only really using their ults. Oh, in, oh uh, response to what AP Brent's doing. Exactly. Oh, 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 like that. Again. Man, everybody has to pick up Twilight Armor if you're Minana. Yeah. That's that's the only way to everyone. go. Everyone. Yeah, everyone. Literally you, oh, everyone. You only literally have like five slots. Yeah. Again, it helps in first off oh, for both oh, of oh, Easy oh, caught down in the bottom lane. Is he going to be able to get away? I don't think so. But though, he gets a little bit of shield from his passive. That enhanced basic attack. Flap no. Easy sidestepping. Playing the angle, Ogwen, here he comes. Will he try to find a slash? As he does, he finds Kazen. AP Bren are able to answer just in time, and Flap got away with a little bit of a sidestep. The Filipino cannon bought so much time. That was a free lord for AP Bren and the rest of the map turning blue. Minan Evos was absent, wherein they could have cleaned up house. Yes. That would have been an opening at least. Yeah. But here comes the defense coming out from Minana. Do they have enough? With the Lily as well as the Layla? Maybe it is, since this is just the first Lord. And look at that ultimate from Doming. Unfelt. Oh, another reactive black shoes. Yeah. I mean, better spend it now, right? Here we go. Astral Echo thrown out by Fuse. Activation. Spots four. KZ at half health. Very, very dangerous. Finally, a push down bottom.
Minana Evos reeling, they understand. Kirk, 1v2. Okay, Minana Evos now. Let's see. They have really great wave clear, as you mentioned there. So it's really stopping AP Brand from being able to full commit. They're still under base. Minion waves up top. Still slow and steady for oh, both. Oh, Marco chipping away at this inhibitor in mid. Just maybe five or six rounds more. Let's go. Minana yeah. Evos breathing. Oh, wow. This, this turned out to be AP Brand shoot around. Well, particularly Few and Super Marco. It's now just a shoot around. They're just trying to land the shots and they are landing it, by the way. It's hunting season. Hunting season for sure. Conceal. Oh. Black shoes all the way to the back. Oh, went. oh final slash just out of range. No one home. Okay. Oh, oh still oh, again. Oh. Lana. No, no. Lancy go home. Lancy clear the wave, then heal. Yeah. Few. Oh. My God. Oh, oh. My goodness. Another one. And there's oh. the destruction rush. All right, so it has an impact now, all sure, right? Yes. It put people at what? Half health. But half health. still, it begs to be said, AP Bren are taking it slow. And when they do, they know that they're in control. Oh, Kazen picking up the Twilight Armor. Right, there it is. This, this one, number one. one. <laughs> Everybody needs it. Uh -oh. Uh oh Another one. Oh. Woo. Big ass will like, oh. Info that, provided. That's, the, that's time's journey yep. used. Yep. He cleared the vision. I, I don't know how important that is now. Yeah. Oh. But at least it goes off cooldown and then they can, you know, survive. Bro, you still hitting them, man. <laughs> almost every one of them is... It's as if First Blood never happened earlier. Yeah. Yep. But the wave clear uh, is the biggest problem for Minana Evos. They're playing around this Layla. Uh -oh. As we look at the Infinix hand cam right now, the action is Oh, final splash finds Lassie, but heavy spin, stopping the advance of AP Bren. Minion wave in the bottom. Actually, stopping the other minion waves from Minana Evos from stretching out. AP Bren still unable to get that tower, but they have a Beatrix. They can just render apathy, basic attack it until oh. it falls. The tiger space. Won't go bald just yet, but it will eventually. This feels miserable. Even underneath their own inhibitor, Minana Evos feels oh. the pain of a lead wall thrown out by oh, Super Marco. And they can't even leave. They can't even get their own buff. Get, get the buff. There's the Lord fight. Okay, Zen has to be stopped in a way. Yeah. You have to respect this. Still have... Yeah, indeed. Nope. Nope. AP Brand going to be able to take it. There's going to be a land shaker stun onto Kazen. But Doming able to free hit and they're starting to feel it a little bit. The damage of that Layla, not completely just there yet in the late game Layla we're looking for. But almost, it's getting there. AP Brand, I feel like they need to end it here. What's Doming sitting at? Maybe four items? Well, your, an your question will be yep. answered now. That's yeah. literally four, four big items. All right. BOD uh, is crucial. Just yeah. four. No. So Malefic will be his last? Should be, because they need some sort of penetration. That's true. Okay. Lancy is starting to also get farmed, but he can be one shot. That's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Who will it be? Lord outside the way, 17 minutes in. All right. All waves crashing in. Kirk with the jump in. Astral Echo spots a lot. It's really low flap. Kirk trying to get away from it. Basically, oh they're trying God. to get to the Layla. The Layla surviving, but Doming, the shield from the time journey, actually able to help him survive. AB Bren still trying to poke, still trying to clear the minion waves, trying to get someone low. But Minana Evos are handling their own minion waves really well, clearing really well, wow. and they will be able to defend. Again, playing around the Layla, protect the queen. The Layla is the queen right oh no. now. Oh, oh no! Oh! Monster! Oh! Oh! Star Shatter! Shattering the hopes and dreams of Minana Evos to beat the reigning champions of the world! 2-0 for A.P. Bren! Little slivers of hope. Little moments of a champion's heart beating. And you saw that maybe, maybe, just maybe, Minana Evos could defend one more time. But the Nova Trick Tomba had to come <laughs> through, man. After a beautiful Astral Echo, again, masterfully synchronized by AP Bren. How poetic is it that the play that we were designing in our heads with this Nova Tricks was the play that also ended it. Astral Echo landing onto four. Yeah. Perfect connection of the of the Meteor, of the Shatter, you to go with the, with the Render Apathy ult. To one shot Doming of all people. And to be fair, Doming got away with it once already. Mm -hmm. He came back to heal, came out, and then started to go with the pew pew. But yeah. once AP Bren has perfect vision of you and perfect knowledge yeah. of where you are, yeah. 
bopped your uncle. There's very yeah. little you can do. I think it was the lightning truncheon and the, uh, the uh, extended hitbox as well that kind of yeah. destroyed Doming in the end. But, ah, man, I got to say, though, this is... This went too close yeah. for AP Bread. This series yep. went too close for AP Bread. Yep, that doesn't take away from the effort and the skill shown by Minana Evos. That's Yesterday right, they right. suffered an L. Today they did as well, but they learned a lot and they showed us a lot. Let's go ahead and throw it over to the stage. AP Bread's gonna be talking to Hans Galeria and Marakino for their post-match interview. Wow, 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 congratulations. AP Bread, let's give him a round of applause. Okay, wait. Hans, kailangan natin balikan yung game number Andaming one. Ang daming nangyari nung game number one. Ang daming nangyari game number one. Talaga, we were at the edge of our seats. First, meron dong time na si Super Marco hinahabol four versus one. Bumaba ka. Tapos tatlo sa kanila namatay. Di ba tatlo? Exactly. And then at the end of it, yung nasa base na tayo, ano nga ba nangyari? Si Ogwen na lang. It was a five-on-two situation. At tumabot sa point na si Ogwen pa yung nag-tower lock. I mean, can you talk to us about it, Marco and Ogwen? Yung game one, balikan natin yung game one para ba kayong muntik na mag-heart attack nun? Ah, uh, nung ano po, nakita po namin na ano, ay nakita ko na ano, wala pumasok na clips, so ginawa ko muna, nag-focus muna ako sa clips. Eh, sobrang konti na lang ng Tori nun eh. Tapos, kinler ko muna, tapos nun, ako na nag-tower lock. First, ano lang yung tao dun eh. First time ko kayo nakita na super stress. Pati dun sa Players Lounge, pati players yung lounge. team manager nyo got up. Usually, chill lang sila eh. Nakaupo lang sila eh, right? But this time, it was different. Even the crowd was like, wow. Pagkatapos nung game number one, bumalik kayo doon sa Players' Lounge. Ano yung pinag-usapan nyo? Ano yung reaction nyo na nakuha nyo yung game? Muntik na kayo matalo? Muntik na. Uh, yung reaction po namin nun, ano, tower lock na po talaga dapat. Eh kasi mayroon pong ano eh, isang grips na pumasok. So si, ano, si uh, Captain Few, ano na, nagsumasyat ko na tower lock, tower lock, tower lock, ah, ganun. Eh, hindi po siguro narinig ni ano, Super Marco. So, parang ano, yun, medyo nagpanik na. <laughs> Kasi ano eh, <laughs> nagkaroon na rin ng, ano, ng reinforcement na ano eh, dun sa hindi matatawar lang eh. For me, that was like the best game, pang playoff it siya. Was. And you made it a was. comment also, the longest game for Bren. So far, right? 34, uh, 34 minutes, minutes. Right? Yun yung pinakamatagal. And in addition, a uh, few, this time bibigay ko yung floor sa'yo kasi I heard from a couple of people from our media that Minana was in the zone today. Like, they really specified na gusto nila kayong talunin. There were even some moments na, you know, a couple of players were talking about it that sobrang seryoso talaga nila into trying to, you know, break the streak na meron kayo. It didn't happen so far. But what do you think about the respect na ibinibigay sa'yo, the reputation that you guys have currently still being undefeated at this point? Um, yun sa match namin nung Minana, sobrang... Nung game one kasi, trinay namin na, ano, na labanan yung support hero ni, ano, ni Miles na tapatan ng Minotaur ni Ogwen. Kaso, ayun nga, nung nag-scale na sila, hindi talaga aya. Ang galing talaga nila mag, ano, mag-macro ng ano, lima kapag naka... Ano, Utility. Kaya commendable din talaga yung, ano, yung galaw ng Minana pag naka-support heroes. Showing some spirit and of course sportsmanship still after the side of victory. Yung ibang team nga, hindi, hindi sila nag-break during break eh. Pinaghandaan talaga kayo eh. Eto, may isang caster sinabi nga, di ba? Yes. Na, Bakit wala sa meta ang Leila at hindi siya ginagamit sa MPL? Familiar. Okay, familiar, familiar. familiar. Ngayon, for the first time ever, <laughs> Nagamit ang Leila. Actually, nagamit na siya sa Indonesia. Feeling niyo ba it could still be part of the meta? Oh, sabi ni, sabi ni Super Marco. From the gold laner himself. Yeah, gumano siya. Bakit pa ramdam mo papasok pa rin ang Leila sa mga susunod na laban? Uh, kasi matagal ko na pang gusto mag-Leila. Matagal, matagal mo na gusto, gusto mag-Leila? Mag anong, anong sabi ni Coach Ducky? What did you say, Coach Ducky? Anong sabi? Hindi, matagal ko na kasi siya kinuulit mag-Leila. Ah, okay. Ah. Oy! So... Maaasahan namin na pwede kang mag-Layla. Opo. At mas magagawa mo ng mas malupit. Siyempre. Siyempre! Oh. Okay. Siyempre! Okay. All right, everybody. Give it up once again to AP Bren. You may now take your bow and take your walk A victory. Ang ganda ng laban kanina, Hans. <laughs> Sobrang lupit. Hindi ko alam ko ano nangyayari at that point. 
Sobrang daming ganap nung game number one. But game number two, they went back to their winning ways and got the victory. Tatlong puntos na naman. MPL Philippine Season 13 has just gotten started. And we will take a look at what else will happen in the following weeks. But for now, himayin natin ang ating laban. Balikin na natin natin mga casters. Pasok. That's four straight matches. Not a single game loss for AP Bren so Ooh. far. And it's nice to see that despite their success, they're still the same old, same old group of friends that just love the game. Real quick, was it not in season 12 or 11 that they had the Chamba Serie? We'll talk about that later. Oh, First yeah. up, let's talk about our MVP. Oh, very far from a Chamba Serie or that. Very far from luck. This is our match MVP, Super Marco. Can I just remind everyone that he had Blade of Despair and Fury Hammer at 5 minutes and 20 seconds. Fast. That's how nasty it was. And by the way, he was facing up against Layla Diggy. Typically, when you're facing up against a Diggy lane, it's not going to bid well for you. So now, Minana Evos, they did have a great punish. In fact, I thought that they will have a great shot in the early stage, but this thing happened. The, the Ogwen. Disaster happened for Minana Evos. Just with two kills, and now they have owned that gold lane. And afterwards, the pinch, the massive pinch from APBR, corralling Lancey in that spot where he had no choice, and he was taken out. And then, at this point, it's just a shoot around from AP Bren. Both you as well as Super Marco just looking for the right angle, the right timing to end this. Beautifully done. And look at that. Oh, it's not a truncheon, it's actually a direct hit. Ooh. Oh my god, never doubt Fuse. Fuse aim again, ever again. I gotta say, like the, the render apathy shot was, uh, it landed because of the enhanced hitbox. But my oh my, that few shatter was on a point. Like literally, crosshair headshot coming out from that guy. And now I, I wonder why he's not the MVP. Well, maybe because he died first. But Minana Evos did not capitalize from that. Yeah. Um, interestingly, Kazen had a great game at the start. And I, I thought that they will leverage that fact. And the, th and the, the thing is, they wanted to go for the third turtle fight. However, AP Bren kind of corrected their way again, invading the third purple buff. So that happened around the six minute mark, which when you saw the combination of the shatter in the combination with skill one of CalTZ and Retribution My really God. caught Kazen off guard. And that allowed Minana Evos to just, you know, uh, this allowed, I mean, Minana Evos to snowball and leverage this Akai early game. But the carry, 90k damage in 17 minutes from Few, the idol of the kids, showing no signs of slowing down. When you were talking about how he hit that last combo onto Domi, I just gotta double check. We're still talking about a MOBA, right? We're still talking about yeah, MOBB we are, because we are. Straight up sounded like a shooter. Yes. Yeah. Boom, headshot. <laughs> One tap, as they One say. Tap. Don't you have an accent? <laughs> <laughs> Boom, headshot. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a classic like uh, shooter Sound game. Soundbite? Soundbite, yeah. Right. Boom, well, uh, headshot. Okay. Well, we don't play as much. Speaking of your shots, uh, they no bang, longer bang. say one shot. They say, Ang Bagong Barangay, Barangay Omega, they're facing off against Blacklist International in what many would tout as a rivalry long lived in our beloved league. They're facing off with their new generation players. How excited are you guys? Very that? excited because there's a lot of meetups here between uh, long time presences in our league. I saw somebody with dreads and I'm already very excited. That's Big J. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, stay with us. You're watching MPL Philippines Season 13. He's Wolf, he's Ren Mar Santa Cruz, and I'm Leo, always at your service, and we'll be right back. The 13th season of MPL Philippines is brought to you by the following sponsors. Smart, the official telco partner of MPL Philippines Season 13. Infinix GT Series, outplay the rest. Experience the MPL PH Season 13 action live at Shooting Gallery Studios. Tickets are now available on our official ticketing partner at SlashEvent.com. Don't miss any MPL PH action by following our official Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Follow MPLPH and TikTok as well for more content. And don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the official accounts of MDL Philippines. To ensure the equality and fairness of our games, MPL Philippines is also monitored and supervised by the Games and Amusements Board. Okay, class, uh, finish or not finished, pass your papers. 
and uh, have a great weekend. Mahiwaga ang mga araw na ito Pagkalipas ng dilim ay may bukang liwayway May urong sulong at adilangan Huwag mangamba, huwag akong ito'y pagsubok lang Di ka mag-iisa Abatin ang bitiwing kumikislap Nagninigning, hawakan mo ang aking kamay Umindak sabay-sabay Lahat naghihintay Handa na ako sa hiling ka Harala ko, sumayaw tayo Sama ang buong mundo Hatawa agad sa umpaya How to register the Smart Giga Arena. First, go to gigaarena.smart on your browser. Click sign in at the upper right corner and enter your smart mobile number. Enter the one-time authentication code sent to your number and agree to the terms and conditions in privacy policy. Personalize your account by choosing your username and profile picture. Congratulations, you've just taken the first step on your path to greatness. Check out upcoming tournaments and play arcade games. Just subscribe to Giga Arena 20 to join. To join tournaments, click the Tournaments tab. Find the perfect tournament with the search option. Find all the details about your chosen tournament and register. Provide your in-game name, ID, and other details. Make sure you have tickets to join. If not, then subscribe to Giga Arena 20 to get two tickets. And you're set. See you at the training grounds.
you're the best sniper ever! No! It's a decoy! Here, enter. Ah, 
Tanghalian mo, Lord Dance. Tanghalian mo, Lord Dance. Hapunan mo, Lord Dance. Hindi lang yung mga ano MPL players, ha? Kundi yung mga RG boys din. Di ba yung mga RG boys din? Oo nga eh. Alam mo, may nagsabi sa akin, ano? Oo! Uy, taga lang, taga lang, taga lang. Domeng, Domeng! Maanap si Domeng! Kaso na doon yung kanyang wind of nature, pero hindi na talaga siya matatakasin. Magiging flicker, minawag yun! Oh, Domeng! Hindi pa! Hindi pa tapos! Hindi pa tapos! Hindi pa tapos! Hindi pa tapos! Si Domeng ay narito! Pinipilis ni Pinsan! Nandito naman tayo sa harap ng binto ng Blacklist International. It's time to invade. Hi everyone! Hello! Hello! What are we doing here? So we're watching. We're watching the game. Are we having a meeting? Nag-meeting pa tayo? Yeah, kwetuan na. Okay. Anong ritual natin bago magsimula ang ating laban? Nagtitiktok siya sa tulog. Nagtitiktok? Ano? Anong tiktok? Anong tiktok? Gusto ko makita yung tiktok natin. Mas kalad na ba madalas niyang ginagawa? Anong trend? Ito, nagtitiktok ng dalaw eh. Warm up, warm up. Walang makita. Ano yung tiktok? Ano yung tiktok? Ano yung tiktok? Nakadrop na, nakadrop na. Para sa'yo, baby, alam mo yan. 
Oh my okay. god. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, you you take you take the lead. I'll be in the back. Okay. You guys at the front. I think I'm going at it. Get yan. Iko dito. Yeah, I'm in blocking. Iko dito. I'm blocking that. All right. Okay. Play the music and then we'll do it. All right. All right, everybody. Let's go. Bravo, bravo! Abang ang gagawin ng Blacklist International, mama ya. Invasion complete. Become a legend. Open fire. We unite with winners. Built with pressure. The diamonds are made out. Switching a lane to fire and air. HP racing way to set up. Built like a tank. Oh, hot me here. That full load. This is para lighter. Susundan ko ang iyong bakas. Kasama pa das sa gumpay na dito. Dahil tayo'y malakas. Pakita ko na jab like Beast of the Southeast Takas ang matawa Proud and loud Cause every enemy We devour Susundan ko Ang iyong bakas Kasama pa Taas na gumpay Na dito Dahil tayo'y malakas Para sa Pinas Mas sa amin ng nalas Hindi hindi ko waatas Kinikilala sa taas The 13th season of MPL Philippines is brought to you by the following sponsors. Smart, the official telco partner of MPL Philippines Season 13. Infinix GT Series, outplay the rest. 
Experience the MPL PH Season 13 action live at Shooting Gallery Studios. Tickets are now available on our official ticketing partner at SlashEvent.com. Don't miss any MPL PH action by following our official Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. Follow MPL PH and TikTok as well for more content. And don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the official accounts of MDL Philippines. To ensure the equality and fairness of our games, MPL Philippines is also monitored and supervised by the Games and Amusements Board. So we are back right now, kakatapos lang nung huddle nila. Okay, parabusin muna natin yung huddle nila kasi andito na sila mismo eh. Okay. Alright, now we come in. Coach Stronger. Halika dito, Coach. Kailangan ko lang malaman, mabilisan lang. Sino ba ang pinaka nonchalant at pinaka OA dito sa Smart Omega? Ay, gusto ko yung ngiti ni Coach. Uh, pinaka nonchalant siguro si Wes. Sino, sino? Si Wes. Okay, si Wes, si Wes. Tando sa dulo. Uh, Nanjala, hindi yeah. talaga nagpapakita eh. Uh, yeah. Ayan o, oh. wala, wala talaga reaction. reaction. Wala reaction. Uh, Pinaka-OA. Pinaka-OA. Ang dami, lahat kami. <laughs> Sige coach, ituro mo isa-isa. Uh, yeah. Tututukan natin uh, yan. Uh, Sinong turo... top one? Sinong top one? Tituro ng manager namin, si Exhort eh. Okay. <laughs> si Ex <laughs> Ex <laughs> Pero ano, kumbaga, lahat naman eh. Lahat naman kasi syempre yung pagiging OA dahil gusto talaga namin yung manalo sa yung ginagawa namin. Okay coach. So, Speaking of which, ikaw ba coach? Pag... Yung coaching, uh, yung, yung coaching style mo ba, medyo nonchalant ba o dapat mas OA? Kailangan all out ka pa ganun? Uh, medyo both eh. Pagka nanalo, nonchalant. Pagka natalo, OA. Okay, okay. <laughs> Sige, ila ilapit natin banda sa, sa iba ba? Si, si Coach Lim. Gusto ko si Coach Lim. Coach Lim, ikaw, ikaw din! Sige, Coach Lim. I, kung, kung siya, a little bit of both siya, ikaw, an, pakiramdam mo, ano ka, mas nonchalant ka ba or mas on the side of OA ka pag nag-coach? OA ako. Ah, okay ka? Uh, OA. Kailangan ko malaman kung paano yung OA. Kram, or Mark, Mark, i, paano ba maging OA si Coach? Paano maging OA si Coach Lembot? Ano bang, ano bang signs of being an OA para sa'yo? Kasi tinuro ka kanina ni Coach Stronger na OA ka daw eh. So, paano ba ang signs ng pagiging OA pag coach? Ano? Bigla bigla sumisigaw. Bigla bigla sumisigaw. Bigla bigla. Tama, tama, tama ba? Tama. Tama. Okay, that's top one. Number two. Pag ano na? Bata ko. Parang tilted na rin siya. Ano, ano, ano? Tilted na rin siya. <laughs> oh, tilted na rin siya. Okay, call a friend, call a friend. Zero pirate. Oh, Ryota, ikaw. Pa paano mo masasabi na OA ang dalawang coaches mo kapag screams o kaya pag training na mismo? Pag... Pag may ano eh, pag may error, sumisigaw agad eh. Oh, Tapos tuloy-tuloy yung galit nun. Tuloy-tuloy, hindi ah, na tumitigil. Hindi na umawat. Okay, so coach, isa ng certified OA. Coach, ikaw rin. Sabi mo kanina, medyo boat eh. Pero okay lang yan. Ang mahalaga, it is exactly what is needed. Kayo Mara, ano mo meron dyan? Pasok. Nandito naman tayo sa panag ng Blacklist International kasama si Zinsui and Edward Coach. Ang tanong natin, sino sa teammate mo between the two ang OA at nonchalant? Sino, sino sa kanila? Si Edward yung nonchalant. Si Zinsui yung OA, si Edward yung nonchalant. Agree ka ba? Okay. Nonchalant, nonchalant. Ikaw, agree ka na ikaw ang OA? Hindi, si ano OA, si ano? Si Kimpoy. Si Kimpoy! Ikaw dapat pala naman talaga yung OA eh. Agree ka ba? Agree kami dyan. Agree! Agree tayo dyan. At ngayon, uumpisahan natin ang laban nyo. So babalikan na natin ang ating mga casters. Pasok. Ako nga, no? They once waged a war that lasted nearly years. And now they command armies that span generations. Welcome to Mabuhay at your service. My name is Leo, here with Renmar Santa Cruz and Wolf covering tonight's closer, the final match for week two of MPL Philippines Season 13. Gentlemen, are you ready for this? I'm ready. 
Are I'm, you ready? Are you ready? I, I wasn't ready earlier, but then I saw the dreads. Like I said, during the post game match, it's the dreads. Yeah. That I'm very much excited about. Yeah, Just I'm talking about Big J. Yeah. I'm so ready and excited. I, I can't find my glasses. <laughs> we'll, we'll get well, you we'll get your you spectacles, my friend. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Thank you. Folks, uh, in case you, you uh, were just here now, uh, we have been given uh, a, a slight sneak peek as to which roster of uh, the Bagong Barangay might be playing. Yeah. We'll get to that real quick. But for now, we want to throw out a huge official... Oh. Shout out to our official restreamers from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, and all over the world. We have local restreamers and international restreamers from Cambodia, Middle East, North America, Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia. And all of them are tuned in to witness our players fight for victory. And you know what's best about this? What I really like about this is that we're featuring local languages as well, which was uh, yeah. always have been a pipe dream for um, for any esports, actually. I've been part of other esports titles before, that's an idea, but now we're actually bridging the gap. You that's know? right. This goes out to all of my uh, friends and uh, my blood brothers up north. Let's get into the action. We're talking about a battle of generations. Uh, real quick, just to clarify, okay, okay. what do we mean by generations? I think we have a uh, hmm. silent understanding yeah, that when okay. we say Gen 1, it's the first five seasons. Yeah. Okay. Right? okay. Season one to five. Gen two would be season six to ten. Okay. And then if you debuted season eleven onwards, then you're relatively new. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like K-pop groups. Y so you are right. Because of that, <laughs> right. we have coaches who were once players that yep. now find themselves waging this war on behalf of Blacks International yep. in Smart Omega. Lembot was. In active deployment, season two to five, Dexstar season two to ten as a player, yep. as a player, and Bonchan season two to four under uh, SXC Imba That's right, and yep. Evos PH mainly That's as a coach. He was always a coach. Yeah. All right. And I love this quote by Haji, by the way. Am I afraid that one day I might fail? No. And he always just thinks about his family. Uh, I mean. Let's just just admit when you've been playing as long as Haji has been, the questions of retirement will always be there. Mm -hmm. uh, esports is not a you. Yeah, it's not, it's not permanent. It, it's not permanent. Yeah, but Haji's still confident, and he's confident even after the day he decides maybe I can't push through anymore and maybe I'm, I'm dragging down my teammates. My yeah. family will always be there. So that's a good foundation that Haji has. Uh, young Salik Imam is one of the players actually pushing uh, the length of one. E athlete's career uh, in yeah. MPL Philippines. When was he, when did he debut? Season two. That was season two. two. That's right. So he's one of the prodigies as well to go with uh, Carl TZ. Alongside Carl TZ, they're the, like the young prodigies back then. Yeah. Um, and then they were. It's it's crazy to think that their idols, both of them, their idol was few, and few is still playing. And Few is still undefeated, season 13. And how crazy is that that they all, all three of them, these two young prodigies and their idol, went in several different ways. It's amazing to see that once the machine and the young goat were rivals, yep. and now they are paving their own path with their own teams. Yeah, that's right. And on the other camp, facing off against Haji is Smart Omega. We'll talk about them in just a bit. But for now, let's welcome our marshals who will officiate the match. They ensure the fairness and integrity of our games. Let's talk about them. It's Chico, Jeff, Patrick, and Wilbert. And Wilbert, despite having that Bert last name, is not related to Neil Robert de Guzman. Let's get to it. Let's welcome our teams, Omega and Black. A loss to the Phoenix Army means a little bit of calibration is needed for the code. Up against their longtime rivals in the barangay, can the code breakers crack Omega? Truly top tier, it's Blacklist International!
They say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but the veterans of the barangay today decide to take the helm. With the new generation already having paved the way, will this version take their shot and run away with a victory against Blacklist? Hailing from the barangay, hit smart. Who mega? And their coaches, Coach Bonchan and Coach Stronger, Agents Kabarangay Makingai! It seems like Blacks International have their captain back on board. This is a Haji-led lineup for Blacks International here tonight. Yeah, you've played against the members of Omega for uh, many seasons now, Haji. Retake the captainship and run away with it. Lead the team to victory here. Oheb, Sensui, Yue, and Hedward have shown their brilliance all throughout the season. We've already seen your brilliance, Haji, but now up against this version of Omega, you have to be merciless. This right here is the OG OMG. And yes, can confirm, that's Big J with the dreads. <laughs> and H2 as well, gonna be playing it with Exhort, Ryota, and Rebo. This lineup did not have great results when they went in a few days ago. But that's just one game. We cannot judge the entire lineup with just one game. At this time, they're going to sure. go up against a Blacklist International. And one thing that I do like about what they played is that it's a different story. Like, who would have thought that the first Lancelot game will come from Omega, right? And here we see their sample size is very small indeed. Uh, check out what Omega brought out in their last outing. Uh, do note that they're both in recovery mode. Blacklist last lost to TNC in a three-game series, while Omega, within the last game, uh, was lost to yeah. Onyx yeah. PH. And it was this lineup that faced off against the Sonics. Yeah, and well, I'd like to believe it's not about the size of your sample size, it's about mm. how you use it. So I hope Smart Omega went back to the drawing board <laughs> after their loss and just really said there's a lot of things we really have to reconsider again in terms of the importance of where you're going to be placing your roamer to help out the jungle. One yep. of the reasons that Lancelot struggled is because it was left alone to fend off a Baksha. Exactly. It's all about execution. Like I said, it's all about performance now. And let's yeah. see if Omega can actually perform to the top level going up against Blackness International who are, I would say, they're, they're really anxious to get back into business, you know, after oh, what? Yeah. Losing, they lost already two of their four series. Two of their four series. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Omega is winless. It's tough uh, to Very be a member right. of the Barangay. That's uh, right. Talking about H2 here, Core H2, John Paul Salonga. He mm -hmm. once played in Season 13 with yeah. just but one hero, the Lancelot, going up against Sensui, who has played so many different heroes. And he's stealing lords with heroes you couldn't even think you could, like with yeah. a Nolan. Nolan, yeah. for sure. Uh, Sensui with the instincts, right? And now mm -hmm. H2. I think that he's known absolutely for, the, for his assassin plays, but uh -huh. th that's the thing, right? It's almost, it's almost impossible to get assassins now apart from getting the Nolan. So let's talk about the Infinix keys to victory. What do they gotta do? Keep the machine running. This is interesting for Blacklist International because it kind of felt like there's a lot of like lack of PMS for uh, for the machine now. And for those who don't know, it just means like pre preventive maintenance. I think that they, they haven't like changed their oil that much for when it comes to uh, how they utilize uh, Haji. What is That's why uh, service. There I don't go. know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then for Smart Omega, you have to utilize Rebo's rotations. Get a hold of that. Get a hold of that uh, that experienced young man and the way that he understands Mobile Legends. He was a champion before. Needs You definitely need to leverage Rebo in this game. And last but not least, show us three generations of MPLTH Ooh. greatness. Ooh. Even as far back as Season 1, yep. all the way till today. That's from right. winning MSC 2018 That's right. in Jakarta. Rebo would know. Yeah. All the way to winning in Singapore in 2021. Rebo would know. Mm. There's so many things yeah. that three generations of MPL greatness will show you. Uh, so with that said, we really haven't given much of a spotlight for Smart Omega here. They have more of those mid-age... Uh, am I saying it right? Because Joan Gen debuted yeah. in Season 10. Gen 2, there you go. Oh, yeah. uh, Ryota debuted in Season 7. Yeah. Uh, 
H2 debuted in season six. Yeah. yeah. So they're more of the sample size from there. They're yeah, the, yeah. I don't know, you're, you're yeah, not right. old enough to be an OG, but you're not young enough to be new. Yeah, yeah. Which, which is interesting because they're put in the spot there like, uh, are, are, are you, uh, have you learned a lot or have you learned, uh, or have you learned from the, the past, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a matter of how much have you evolved actually. But when you're stuck in Gen 2 kind of meta where you're really just doing whatever is working back in Gen 2, yeah. definitely it's not going to work in now Gen 3. Yeah, and that's why I'm, I'm partly glad, well, I am glad that Barangay Omega decided to go with a veteran lineup yet again. Uh, I feel like it would have been a disservice if after what was a very difficult uh, game two performance yesterday, that now they're playing again. Let them show again um, their their experience, their veterancy, and see if they could get a win over Blacklist. Because if they can get a win over Blacklist again, it hasn't been a perfect season, but they have had stellar performances yep. uh, so far. That would be a good sign for Omega. Which is why I think there's rhyme and reason to this. Coach Ron, Coach Stronger would not just pull the trigger and say, you know what, let, let the OGs play. Yeah. There has to be a plan here, a strategy. Talking about strats, here's the draft. We got uh, CC, Angela, Arlott banned by mm -hmm. Omega on the blue. And that's Coach Bonchan yep. taking out the Matilda, Nolan, and Joy. Opening pick, the claw. We don't see that very often. Uh -huh. Ooh, Big J special. I would say, because just because of the fact that they picked it up first. Of course. But, of course. but that opens up Minotaur and Novaria, which Blacklist loves to play. That combo, yep. I'm sure that they have played that many times over. Yep. And it just makes a lot of sense to be the first two picks here for Blacklist. Yeah, it really messes up the entry of the Claude too, yeah. especially. And Risp, actually no, they have great uh, map presence with how fast they can clear the middle. So yeah. it would be great. Me, Novaria. Yeah. Me, Novaria for you. I'll allow it. Oh, but they go Fred. And Paquito, okay. Oh my god. Yo, what an opening. Yeah, yo, that's no. even worse for the Claude, actually. It hurts more. Y'all saying when it's Onik and Minana playing, you have to redefine what the yeah. meta is or what the first picks are. How about this? Yeah. Man. <laughs> totally <laughs> snubbed. This is this is like first generation sort of uh, drafting. Yeah. Uh, so, all right, so you go Baksha. I think you still can pick up some somewhere along the lines of a Lilia or a Novaria here. Okay. So it's a uh, it's X Sword that's playing and he can definitely play those kinds of heroes, but like if you compare um, Exhort to some someone like Aqua, Exhort mm -hmm. is like an outlier where he wants to go for killing type of mages, you know, like assassin mages. Uh, but then again, Lilia as well as Novara just makes a lot of sense here for Omega. Oh, we can play control. both very well. Yeah. yeah. Or they pick up the mi uh, K. Oh, saving up the mid. Well, yeah, there are right. a lot of mid laners <laughs> still available. <laughs> Might as well. We'll just gave yeah. up on trying to predict. Like, know. never mind. Yeah. Like, this but is. Never mind. This is. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I want to just explain instead of, like, trying to predict. Because, yeah. like, these two are just, like, uh, going at it with a very different mindset this time for around. Sure. For sure. I'm surprised that Minotaur is not picked up. But, yeah, the character makes a lot of sense because you need to, you need to secure your marksman now for Blacklist International. But um, that means that you should be looking to ban your Paquito counters. What is a Ryota special? Like maybe Exborg, perhaps? Yeah, Exborg. That's really well. CC is open. Yeah. How often does this happen that neither team actually prioritizes their mid? Yep. Yeah. Well, wow. they were just really saving that. Oh. They, um, well, uh, that's, I'm pretty sure that's a Ruby Rome, right? That's not going to go into the EXP lane. It's, well, you say that, but Ryota, Ryota grew up in Gen 2 where Ruby x was more of a thing. Yeah, was a thing. And he was actually playing that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, paired up with an Eve from the winter of 2021. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and he can't really, she can't really match the damage of a Paquito, but the thing with Ruby is that she just regents the damage exactly. of the Paquito. Exactly. She won't be able to win against the Paquito, just be like, really, you're going to try to knock me out? Yeah. I'll just light, uh, spell vamp everything. Exactly. And without the Faramis is the band from Blacklist International. Uh, interesting. Obviously, oh. Faramis is great versus the uh, the carry, and it might be something that is also known. The, uh, also know that Exort plays. And mm -hmm. finally, there's the Minotaur ban. Can't believe that Blacklist didn't pick it up. Yeah. Oh, the Whoa. Exort specials. Oh, yeah. of course. Assassin Mages, we're talking about. Fabled have held top global candidate for six months straight. Yeah. That's right. With how it looks like, Blacklist is approaching to this with the idea of, okay, uh, we know they're the veteran group of it. Instead of focusing on the meta, let's focus on their comfort. Yeah. If you haven't played in the MPL uh, consistently yes. for long stretches yes. of time, right? right. The idea is take away their comforts instead. Yeah. That's a great mindset.
Is a tie grill gonna be banned out? Grok is still open. Might be the choice here for Blacklist International. Uh, maybe last pick the, uh, their UA hero. The benefit for the Grok is that it has great info, and also you can knock up the Claude if ever that if ever if it ever comes to that. As if the Claude's job wasn't hard enough with Edward Balboa running around. Exactly. Oh, yeah. uh, but then again, yeah, the Grok just makes a lot of sense for Blacklist. And this is Haji. I mean, I'm sure you could play that. Um, I wonder if they'd really wanna feature this battle of generations and just pick up something like Cho. Oh yeah, throw, bring it back. Throw back to his debut with Blacklist in season eight. Exactly. Let's go nuts. Bring a, bring back Jawhead Rome. I don't care oh, anymore. Oh man, <laughs> bring it back. Hey, she hurts. Okay, so oh, Nova. Understandable. Okay, so that kind of eliminates the factor of the Ruby EXP. Yeah. Yeah. You wanna just look for uh, maybe something like somewhere along the lines of Benedetta actually for Ryota, but it is known that Benedetta is not great versus a Paquito. Oh nowadays. yeah. What about the huge? The huge. The huge. Yeah, or maybe a CC. CC? Oh, yeah, CC is still actually. Oh, wait, no, no, she's bad. She's bad. Oh, she's. First oh, yeah, yeah, of the so game. Huge, huge it is. Huge. Huge it is. I like the huge, the the Borg, or the laps. Ah, yeah. oh, the laps. Mm. And Lilia, obviously, is still pretty good here. So you can go Lilia, Lilia. laps. Lilia laps. Or Lilia Borg. A lot of slows. Elborg. Oh, what Elborg. about the What about a Gord for Omega instead? Jord? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I wouldn't mind Jord. The Jord? The G Ord? The G Ord? Lots of possibilities. Whoa, I did not expect this from Omega. How about neither? Huh. How about okay. the Riboella? Wait, let me just cover up the names and the teams. Yep, nope. Left side looks like a blacklist draft. I agree. I Whoa. definitely agree. They're throwing, they're throwing the Ruby back into the XP here. Yeah. I did not expect this. Wow, not at all. So, with, I think you're just left with the Grok here for blacklist for Haji. Matilda is also banned. So what what else is there? Like you know, like I said, a Cho, but the Cho works only because there's a, a isolation yeah. play that can happen. But then with the Valentina picked up, it means that uh, your Grok is not the best option. So maybe that's I like, come back to Bison. How about the Kaj? Oh, Ka uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick off. Can Kaja. they catch him with the Kaj? Kaj and Ovaria, or um, Estes? Wave clear. Means whoa, they can whoa, roll whoa, around. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. You say the E word? Whoa, 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 whoa. Kaji Estes, did you summon okay. it? Oh, Kaj. No, it's the Kaj. Uh, it's a Kaj. Kaj on Hodge. Yeah. Kajakari. Ka Ka Kaji. Haja? Haja. I'll go with Haja. I'll leave it there. Yeah. Or let's right. go Haji Kaja. Let's cool. So, <laughs> after a swerve pickup from Omega, placing the heroes where we, we didn't expect to even show up at this point in the draft, yeah. Blacklist just says, you know what, let's, let's just uh, stick it uh -huh. to all reliable. Yeah. Kaja carry. What it looks like is Omega drafted like sustain the lanes, just wait for the Claude. Yep. Exactly. For Protect 1. Yeah, for protect pretty, one. Pretty much it. How about you expedite the double laning with Rafaela too, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's actually a pretty smart take in uh, picking up the Rafael. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They're fine. They're uh, you're picking okay. up the Rafael means fun here. that you also secure the uh, the, the Jome special. That's the, the man with the dreads. Oh, but his hairs are tied back. We can't see them like flowing down. Oh, He's no, we'll fine. take time. We'll take time. We'll take time. He's fine. Here we go. Game number one. Smart Omega going up against Blacklist International. The OG OMG squad goes ahead and brings in an unconventional draft to try and change their fates and get a big dub for the Barangay, their first in season 13. It's a uh, counter start here. Orange first for H2. Yeah. yeah. Orange first. Uh, well, I think that because they're they they might get the lethal water afterwards. I think he's gonna roll his way upwards. Yeah. With Exhort and Rebo. There it is. Okay. See him rolling on the map. Oh whoa! Whoa 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 whoa! Big whoa. J. Big J. <laughs> okay, Big J. Oh oh! Letting it out my early. Boy. My boy. That's my boy. <laughs> Big J thinks. Big J. Man, if you see Big J rolling up on you, you're not sure sure if he's there to farm the gold lane or yeah. perform a reggae track. <laughs> yeah. We oh, have here we go. Okay. He's still doing it. Wow. The He's there playing there. like how he shined in Malaysia. <laughs> yes, he did. He have was facing two heroes and three minions. Whoa. Is this how you. Is this the plan for OG OMG? Just be super aggressive? Yeah. <laughs> Seems <laughs> like it. That might catch you away. It's like, uh, what, what's that called? Old man strength? <laughs> <laughs> is that the thing? <laughs> yeah, what? old man strength. 
Like you see like a 55 something year old dude and you think, yeah, he's not strong, but then he's lifting like his entire family. I've heard of other kinds okay. of strength. Or a car. But old man strength. <laughs> comment down below if you know what I'm talking about here. <laughs> Wherever you're watching, just comment. Do you know what old man strength is? Don't patronize him. <laughs> <laughs> but please do. Leave a comment. Yeah, I want to know. I'll check back know. in. I'll check back in on the official channels. Uh, <laughs> click like, follow, subscribe, wherever you're watching from. Here we go. Three seconds into the first turn. And because of these unorthodox, aggressive movements, it actually puts Omega maybe 200, 300 gold up. And I'd say maybe a wee bit of XP on too because this, this wave is still about to crash in and they're first to the yeah. scene. 3v3 here in the first turtle of the game. Big actual echo oh. finds the members of Omega. They're gonna have to readjust just a little bit. Level 4 not yet there on the Kaja, but they're gonna be jumping on extra. The Valentine have already forced the use of Flicker away. Ryota goes in as well. Oh. H2! H2! Actually wins the Retribution battle. Are they gonna be committing any more fights? No! H2! Okay, we see you. Yeah. I was quite curious how Exort was playing because he's playing really risky. Showing himself against Blacklist International, Valentina with the Kaja ultimate, almost punished. But that actually gave Omega a way to punish Blacklist International with H2 just securing the turtle by himself. So Omega, scrappy fight for sure, but they won it. That's core H2, man. And I actually like seeing uh, our, our junglers now still build an early Molten Essence yeah. just to expedite their farm. Yeah. Molten oh. Essence, obviously. And um, H2, we know for sure that if you utilize the Baksha uh, in a proper way, it means that you can farm easily. But then you can see Rebo just controlling two lanes now. He's, he's, he's always going to be in the middle of the gold in the mid lane to aid Jom. Uh oh, Jom's in trouble. I think he senses. Ooh. Okay, this is going to be an awkward spot now here for Omega because Blacklist are going to start rotating as four, getting a lot of vision on the back of a Novaria. And against this kind of lineup by Blacklist International, uh, uh, by Omega, that's what you need. Uh, that's what you need to do against them. Get the vision beforehand before they can position so that they're going to be forced to go back a little bit. And look at that. Pressure onto Jomo already. Four man oh, uh -oh. entry. Uh oh. Where's the comeback coming through? Uh, Omega's trying to get a response here. Yeah. Look, they're yeah. sending three dudes up. And by the way, Edward is farming the mid lane too. So I think that they're, they're giving two lanes of minions to Edward, interestingly. No wonder. They really want to leverage the damage of the one shot potential of the Ooh. Flicker Paquito play. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense, because uh, the Ruby needs to clap back to get her health back. Yeah. Yep, true. I like how, well, pretty much what we mentioned earlier, it's uh, it's still happening here. Omega, a little bit less aggressive as earlier because of the vision provided by Blacklist. Let's see how Jome later on is actually going to trade out the fact that a lot more of the gold on the energy shielding went to his opponent, Oheb. Second turtle up in the game, still watching the two junglers here. Blacklist International. Have a much better positioning, but in terms of the retribution, it's oh. going to be one out by Sensui. A half a second, a little bit too early by H2. Both teams back off. Reset. Top side, though. Jome and Oheb. Jome forced back. And they're starting to feel the damage of the carry. Omega needs to do something about the farm of Oheb. Uh huh. And it seems like Jome knows that after that turtle take, Blacklist just zooms in. Again, in his position. I think if there's no other moves on the map, Blacklist just says, you know what, let's just bother Jome. Yeah. yeah. And this means that Blacklist International will be able to take over the f next two minutes of the game. Extra shields from the turtle. The fact that they have a level advantage over their heroes. And also, they can work towards the top lane now. Okay. Uh oh. Oh, Omega really are pressuring the, feeling the pressure up top in their gold lane, in their oh. purple side of the jungle. Massive loss here for Omega. That means Blacklist is going to start rotating their carry out of lane. And now it's Oheb's turn. To spam those TPs and recalls. Just like that, Omega yep. goes to a crawl. Exactly. Where, where does where does Big J find farm now? Well, they uh, they still can they can, they can still use the Raphael. I yeah. think that they're underusing their heroes uh -oh, now. Okay, H2 j dives in, finds it. So we Astral okay. Echo spots out the members of Omega, but Sasui looks like he's not going to be able to survive. Yes, he does not. He falls, but Haji going with the Flicker Divine Judgment. Picking off the opposing jungler. So jungler for jungler trade by Omega in Blacklist. All right. Uh, oh. Good trade there, I'd say. Uh, but the fact that it was Omega who was the aggressor and yeah. Blacklist still getting something on the way out means they're not quite in the woods just yet. Yep. And Blacklist, you can see that it uh, that lead was translated into that into a gold lead. And the fact that they've lost uh, Ed, uh, Sensui without the turtle spawning yet, that's uh, actually great news from Blacklist, which means that their understanding of the in-game timers is just immaculate at this point. Yep. 
Oh, and you know what the icing on the cake is? Ryota okay. misses the combo there. Red Edward, he will still have his flicker, so he's going to be safe. Turtle spawns up top. Omega, are they going to decide to push down mid? Oh, that's going to be a bad trade if they oh, lose the tower in mid. Oh, already using the blazing to to try and clear the minion waves. Oh, Heb, is he going to be able to take it down? No. Omega needs to be careful with their rotations because they can't lose their middle tower just like that. Oh, it's going to no. make it harder for them. No contest. Blacklist, yeah, no contest. They get the turtle without a problem. Map yeah. control for Blacklist is just way too good. And Tsutsui oh. still has retribution. That's right. Yeah. H2 still has his as well. Will this be GTP? Will Blacklist back off? Uh. Map control slowly favoring Blacklist International as Omega sends Jome down to the bottom lane. But oh no. Well, it was stolen by the it Star was. Shatter. That's, what's, that's worse. That's worse. That's worse. Okay. Yep. It goes to the hands of the Novaria. That's not good. I was going to say the fact that the, the, the kill went on the Rebo was bad. How about your purple buff gets stolen oh, by no. Yue? Super duper bad, and you're gonna be scratching your head if you're Omega now, especially if you're H2. Yeah. Because not only do you lose a purple buff, you also lose a lot of EXP. And for the next Lord fight, you're so far from reaching the level that Sensui has. Level 10 for this Fredrin, and H2 losing that purple means there's a lot of like EXP that he wasn't able to get. Oh, Astral Echo. H2 sends back Edward and Yue. And yeah, Tower here. For Omega, so they're playing the map a little bit, but it's going to be a trade. That's already the second tower down up top. Yep. Since he's 11, by the way. I thought he was 19. Oh, you no. mean level. Okay. Okay. This is just uh, trades for Omega that are a step behind. Blacklist know where they're going. Blacklist know what they're allowing for. And so far now with 3,000 gold ahead, Lord spawning in about a quarter. This is tough. Omega suffered a uh, series of unfortunate events. Lemony Snicket's. Yeah. And yep. where do they find the comeback here? It's because even Jom now, look, it's clear that he can stay bottom. But the fact that they don't know where Blacklist heroes are means he's never really safe. Yeah. Oh, they got to stay away from the... I forgot whose actor was what it was. Oh, but yeah. Can't defend We're, this. Yeah. But yeah, Omega needs to needs to just leverage this, uh, this, this clod and maybe just take, at least take two lanes if you're confident with... And now you're seeing the problem with the Ruby. Even when it's great when it comes to like a 1v1 fight, team fight yeah. wise, it's amazing. But if you compare it to a Pakito oh. and his impact oh, in whoa, split whoa. pushing, it's not good. Okay, poke out there. Purple buff, I believe. It's in the hands of the Zuir. Did it go to H2? It's a two level gap between the junglers. Yeah, it's still, it's still on H2's hand, so he still got his purple buff. But a part of me thinks if Omega decide to contest this, it's gonna be devastating. Yeah, they maybe they shouldn't. Maybe they should take this moment to say, hey, you know what? This is yeah. a, what, 10 or 15 seconds of a free farm. Oh. Get to it, Jome. That's full vision. Oh, oh that's huge. Huge. Four but members spotted. Going okay. into the bush. Okay. Finds one. They're going to be going after it. That's going to be Sitsui falling really low. Jome with the blazing to win. Are they actually going to be able to take down the juggler? A Blacklist International down. Yes, they do. But they also lose H2. So juggler for juggler trade. You win. They're going to be able to land with the star shatter. Meanwhile, in the mid, Edward's going to be pushing out. Blacklist International counter back. I think Omega wanted to play the surprise, but then they were hoping that they wouldn't lose their jungler. Abort, abort, abort the call. There wasn't enough firepower. Yeah. yeah. The efficiency coming out from Edward. He was able to utilize the flicker to eventually take out the members of Omega, like H2, and also zone out the other remaining members. And not only that, after already landing his combo, he felt that he's no longer needed in a team fight. Ooh. Go straight to the mid lane and apply a lot of pressure in the map. That's this how is, you play the Paquito. This is still a very significant lead. And again, a majority of it is on the Paquito. It's on Edward. Yeah. And I think Omega would be all the best to try and spot where he is. But that's easier said than done because Rebo, yes, he can throw random uh, bush checks. But he's yeah. getting threatened oh to kill. Oh, what? Wow. Five, man! Astral Echo. And that's going to be a knockout by the Lord of the Damage coming from Blacklist International. He's going to take down Ryota. The Ruby falls. And the Lord is going to go to Zinsui. H2 is going to lose a Retro Duel. Two members of Omega down. Massive win by Blacklist. TP by the Captain. And Blacklist in control. Omega, oh. I don't blame him. It's because they were already in too deep. But the fact that H2 tried, again, that, that's at, at, at the least commendable. Yeah, yeah and, uh, that ultimate coming up from Yue catching five members of Omega. And surely Omega didn't realize that they will be hit by the knockup of the Lord because of their increased hitbox. They didn't calculate for that. Yeah. For yeah. sure. No, that's difficult to yeah. do. I no. mean, how many teams or how many players pull a point blank Astral Echoes? Echo. 
Who does that? Oh, oh, Edward, 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 gotta be oh, careful. Oh, dinky! Oh, okay. Okay. A little bit of outplay there with Edward. Yeah, agree there. Wow. Uh, we actually saw some members of Omega outside of the circle. Yeah. But because they had actual echo on them, that circle, well, of course, they're still going to get hit by the knock of the Lord. Oh, oh my God. Does it again a minute later and takes a picture, too. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Post it Smile on for the, the camera, Omega. They're getting hit by Yue. But then it's a rare misstep coming out from Edward. Yeah. I think it has been years. Since I've seen a misstep coming out from Edward. That's true. <laughs> That's probably one of the only, maybe one of the only five what mistakes yeah. that Edward ever did in his career. I, Perf perfect timing. I don't really remember ever saying, uh huh, Edward, so yeah. much. Yeah. Okay, middle I'm lane. sure. Oh, again. That's five men. Okay, you. Oh, uh, oh no, oh no. forward, Haji's going to be looking for it. Uh, he's going to get Joe oh. because Divide Judgment into the gold laner. Bad news for Omega's Blacklist International will now collapse on them without their gold laner. Omega doesn't have the damage. And the TPs are still out. H2 and Joe are down. Blacklist still in control, pushing forward. Big J eats a DJ, and now bottom lane penetrated. Wow. Blacklist knows they're in their control. I'm pretty sure Miz is going to follow up next. It's very hard to defend with just these three men. Yeah, you know what I call this right now? Respectful disrespect. I mean, they understand the history of this rivalry. As Blacklist goes forward, will they actually be able to end this? The minion wave's coming in down to the bottom lane. It looks like Ohab just needs to lock in X-Word. He's going to go for the suppress and the stun and everything in between. But Blacklist International will just focus on the members of Omega whittling them down. The minion wave's not completely there and they back off. Oh. 8k. Yeah. At, at 3k, at 4k, we felt it, right? Like, yeah. there wasn't enough Omega was putting on the board for that. But how about now? Whew, difficult. That's all I can say. Because you can see that you landed another good Astral Echo in the mid lane. And you can see it's Jump trying to outplay Haji. But he forgets there is that increased hitbox once again. So even when he was able to dodge the initial range Ooh. of the Divine Judgment, just a few nudges from Haji means that he will be caught. All right, talk about how maybe Agent Zero slipped up maybe a few minutes ago. How about now that he is eighth in all-time MPLPH kill leaderboards, scoring 790 in his all-time career high. He has now surpassed the king, Kiel VJ. And he's an XP lane, by the way. Yep. N not usually the guy that gets the kills, so... It's an amazing feat. <laughs> with, a, with a hero pool that consists of Uranus, Thams. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, what else has uh, the young boy Jing Jing played? Well, Ben Benedetta is a great killer. Yeah. yeah. I feel like a majority of that is from his Benedetta and Paquito plays. <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah. How many times have we seen that? The Riz, he plays a solid Riz. Yeah, yeah a solid Riz as well. Oh, here we go. How about we dance, says Blacks International. But for Omega, I'd like to think they can't afford to dance. Yeah. They can hear the music, but they can't come out to play as they send out five minutes. So far, all of you as uh, echoes have been 100%, even when the two members were dead. Yes. Because he hit all yes, three okay. men. Exactly. Ryota are going to be focusing on Sasui. Here comes a flank by three members of Blacklist International. They're going to get surrounded here. Haji goes in with the Divine Judgment, but actually stop. It was stopped oh! with Jome, who gets the Lord. H2 goes back. But with one Don't Run Wolf King second skill by the Ruby, the Divine Judgment was stopped by Omega. Big J skedaddles alongside the rest of Omega. They scored a big, big objective here. The Lord spawns at the bottom lane. Enough time for Omega to spawn their last hero, H2. Oh, Again, man. the game just extends. Yeah. But that was a definite hero play coming in from Big J. Yeah. Another 100% connection in the Echo oh. from Yue. Yeah. Oh! Oh, that hurts, that hurts. Okay, Exert gonna be going in with the Divine Judgment on the Edward as well, using the Flicker! And that's gonna be a kill onto Agent Zero. Omega showing a little bit of that old man strength. I know they're not that old, but let me go along with it. Blacklist will stop their siege. Well, it has been two generations where Exert plays. Have played, I mean. Or maybe even three, in fact. Think maybe about it. Yeah, it was two. three. Season, yeah. Maybe so, season two. Mm -hmm. yeah, old man strength. Old yeah, man for sure. Strength. Oh, oh my, my god, god. are you kidding man? me? That's so many Astral Echoes in one game. Earlier it was Star Shatters. Oh my oh, god. Oh, we go. going in with the ball onto Sasui, and Sasui gets bursted down, blazing the wet by Job. Ohab already using the wind of nature. There's going to be no trades. No trades happening. That's Omega actually just winning out that pickoff. I can hear the thousands and thousands of members of the Ryot army cheering on Ooh. us. He survives that. He's been getting beat down all 15 minutes of this game, but here finally he's a threat. Oh, <laughs> the Atoy army again. But what whatever. is this? What, what, the, you, what, what is, are you on, man? Wait, 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 wait! Finally, Omega able to put a dent on the map. This is wait. I'm just still in 
absolute confusion and echoes, absolute disbelief. Echoes everything. Echoes yeah. everything. You were. Is it because of Omega just sticking up with each other? That too. This yeah. is an Omega Ube, and I think you was just making the most of it. Yeah. But just the perfection of how he lays it down. Exactly. <laughs> it's just so wonderful to watch. The accuracy. And by the way, he's rocking what? Oh, oh, zero, zero, and 8. Ohem is also 100% kill participation. In fact, almost everyone is. Ex ex everybody except Edward has 100% kill participation on Blacklist. Yeah. Edward's at 99. Yeah. Close yeah. enough. Close enough. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Okay. Lord, speaking of, spawning about 30 seconds here. Smart Omega able to close the gap now just at about 2,000 gold. I'd say that's workable. I'd say yeah. in, in a firepower sense. Yeah. As the Blacklist now has to respect that. As the young ones will say, winnable. Winnable indeed. <laughs> oh, well, if they find the comeback, especially if this Lord goes Omega's way again, you can call it Shishable. 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 Yeah. <laughs> that's right. Definitely a thing, not like old man strength. <laughs> hey. Hey. I'm well, gonna, I'm gonna let, the viewers, let the viewers decide. Please comment decide. down below. Old man strength is a thing. Believe me. Not Shishable, not that much of a thing compared to old man strength. That's All right. You don't know. You're not okay. Gen Z, dog. <laughs> is is <laughs> old man strength a sticker in game? Shishable is. Fine, fine. <laughs> I will concede this. But will Omega concede this, Lord? Here we As go. We're gonna be getting close. H2 a little in too deep. Lord at less than half health. Haji taking the pixel brush. Yeah. It's Omega like scoring their own purple, trying to at least give it the exhort, like and Lord retreats. Yeah, it's like an angry slow dance between two divorced couples who are just forced to <laughs> dance together in the what? mixer. Two divorced couples, so it's four people. <laughs> two divorced partners. There we go. Okay. All right. Estranged lovers. Let's call it that. Estranged lovers. Oh, wow. Since we're oh, going to go for the with the Divine Judgment there onto Adrian. He's going to get bursted down. But the Immortality pops up for the Jungler of Omega. And it looks like he's going to be able to get away. And Reba going in with a massive Holy Baptism. But no, the Baksha falls. Blacklist almost loses their EXP laner. But Omega are pushing forward. They don't have a retry. Extort with his own Divine Judgment. He picks off Yue, Reba, and Job. Job with a massive Blazing Duet. He's going to focus on Oeb. He's going to focus on Haji. Sensui has that retry and he oh. gets it. Job now going to focus on Edward. Edward in the middle! Edward in the base! Edward in the mid! Agent Zero! With a split push end! Abu Jing Jing Zero's Omega's base, scoring one for Blacklist International. It's all about multiple win conditions. And despite that victory, the Blacklist camp seems unhappy. Maybe because of some of the mistakes, some of the bad calls, but yeah. my oh my. If I were an agent, I would be very happy. I mean, a win is a win, right? Exactly. But again, as you mentioned it and pointing out how they look inside the dugout, I understand how maybe those last few moments that led up to that split push victory by Edward may have been, in their books, total fumbles. Yeah. Okay. Because That's look, their book. Right, look, look back, look back at the, the, the highlights and even maybe the, in, the end game stats. Omega was closer here to Blacklist's lead yeah. more than they ever were all game. Especially because of the, of the, what it, uh, what the Blacklist have already established. And definitely there were some uh, mistakes like that was very uncanny for uh, the side of uh, Blacklist International. Yep. However, you still have to credit the, the, the clutch genes coming out from uh, Mr. Edward with that yeah. one. Identifying, again, Multiple win conditions. That's what Blacklist International has always been famous with. Like they always find a way to win yeah. games, even when we don't think that it's winnable. Yeah, and I'm actually really glad you mentioned just I don't know Edward. I didn't even see that the last time I saw Edward while I was like shouting. It, he went like this. Yes. But then with suddenly he went of like HP. this with a sliver of HP. He, went, he made it back. Went all the way. Whoop. And because of that. Because of that, now Smart Omega have to think, yeah. where did we go wrong and how could we have done that better? And we're going to get a better picture at the post game once Wolf gets to doing his thing. He's going to analyze game number one and bring us up the MVP. Love you, Wolf. Woo. Well, I love you too. Just like all the viewers out there, Edward, I I we are all amazed by Edward's performance in this game. 73% kill participation, but that ending push that he did going in for the juggler, as we always say. He knows how to win games, and even when they're, tr where they're almost losing the fights, almost losing the lords, he's still looking for ways. And this is also a very efficient management of resources coming out from Edward. You can see him utilize his flicker afterwards just to get out. Low HP, no more combo, goes to the mid to apply more map pressure. 
And this fight was won by Blacklist International, mainly because of U.S. Ultimate. And obviously, them isolating H2 once again. And they uh, get to another good run down the from Blacklist. Again, started by that echo from Yue that also allowed Haji to perform the Divine Judgment easier. Another team fight, Jome magically gets the Lord. And Omega also runs away with only losing one. Another jump coming out from uh, Mr. Haji. But look at this. You see that Omega is uh, looking really good when it comes to like the team fights. Even after losing H2, they will try to well, they will still try to fight. Edward tries to go for the recall, but instead decides, okay, there's a fat wave of minions down bottom and in the middle. I'm gonna take matters in my own hands, especially because Jom is already destroying their composition. Uh, man. And obviously. Um, we can see that it's not n never up just about the emblem style for Blacklist International. But what I do want to take note is Edward went in for the Lethal Ignition because mm -hmm. his job here is to eliminate the, the Valentina as well as the Claude. And the thing is, Omega kind of made it difficult for him to do that because of Rebo just always being in there. And by the way, Rebo went for Focusing Mark, typically picked up by, uh, by the Rafaela anyways, but it does help out. When it comes to like poking Blacklist International, we weren't able to really see that in the early stages, but eventually in the end, they were able to do it. And now, of course, Blacklist International with this build coming out from Edward, going for damage buildup, only going for Immortality as the defensive item, allowed him to um, have access and or maybe have threats to the backlines of Omega. Jome, 100% kill participation. Really played so well this game. game. Almost dealt the most damage, but it, in the end, it will be Yue with 102. And if there's a stat for like multiple or what, 80 or what, four, four or five man uh, Astral Echoes, I'm gonna go, have to give it to Yue. I think that nobody has ever done that with a Novaria. Yeah, everything yeah. was spotted. It yeah. even started. Game alone. Uh, just skewed all of the Astral Echo stats in the history of this hero. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Oh. There was a lot of it. What a game. What a game indeed. I thought it would be a very one-sided game, but then mm -hmm. Omega recovered. Maybe because of what you said, like the fumbles from Blacklist International. But what a game indeed. Which I'm hoping they're addressing now. Uh, looking yeah. at uh, their situation in the dugout, it looks like for Blacklist, it's a matter of a reset. Because I think uh, agents fans, even their coaching staff, expected them to play a little cleaner. Yeah. Because again, even we noticed those little singular moments of uh, vulnerability. Uh, as for Smart Omega, do they go back to the drawing board here? Do they just straight up say, let's try something else? But I do want to double down on the fact that maybe we play for Big J. I think I'll, they, yeah. they should do that more. Yes. I mean, it, it almost worked, right? But then again, maybe the the only hero that, I, what, that we can change here is probably the, the XP choice. Although it's understandable that that was the choice for them, but it looked like when going up against Paquito, it didn't work. Uh, I'd want to see a little bit more proactivity from Omega in terms of taking care of the map. Yes, it's like, that's true. Yeah, that was a bit lacking. All right. With that said, we'll get to discussing more about their potential draft in game number two. As for now, let's hear from Abu Jingjing. It's a challenging because we need tulungan ulit si Haji kasi ang tagal niyang hindi nag-tank or post 5. Siguro mula season 8 pa yan, kumbaga limang season na yung nakalipas. So, kaya naman siguro yun. Ano naman siya, tiwala naman kaming lahat kay Haji. Kaya alam alam namin na kakaya, kakayanan niya yun. Kaya, ano, uh, nag-agree din kaming lahat na, ano, sa papasokin niyang role. Uh, para sa akin, ano, Medyo challenging siya na ano. Ako yung nagsa-challenge para kay G kasi kumbaga galing siya iba't ibang role, jungle, mage, tapos ngayon tank. Although nagawa niya na, na yun naman nung ano, MPL Season 8 at M3. So, tiwala kami sa kanya na ano, magagawa niya ulit yun. Yung M3 Haji na ano, tank. Edward fully trusts his roamer, his captain, Haji, that he'll eventually find his way back in a comfortable roaming position. And for those wondering why we call, keep calling him Abun Jing Jing, is because at some point in Blacklist's history, he was the youngest. And in the Philippines, there's a uh, practice of calling the youngest member, the Bunso, is Abun Jing Jing. So yeah. that's why. Oh, was baby talk of that? I didn't know that. It, it, it's. Uh, oh, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Agents, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. It is. It is. Correct, I think. But I was never called that. Really? 
Yeah. Don't call you that now? Well, I'm, I'm yes, the youngest at this table. If I'm the youngest at this table. Are <laughs> you saying if? Don't lie to me. <laughs> Folks, we'd like to help you First guys one, if you believe. assemble your own community tournaments. Be part of the e-project, esports for everyone. And show the world your impeccable esports prowess. Enjoy tournament access mode, free in-game items, diamonds, and more. And you can register by scanning the QR code on your screens right now below. Over there, that one. That one over there. All right, get to it. It's because, again, the greatest of all greats here in the Philippines, I know at least once in their career, especially when they were starting out, played in an e-project event. Oh, that's true. Um, uh, well, now that you talk about it, even Doggy is, and some of the OGs also talk about this, that they, that almost all of the pros in the first gen started yeah. with that, I forgot what it's called actually, but it's, it is definitely an e-project where it's almost daily, and then yeah. there's a weekly championship for it, where you just get diamonds. That was just the reward from then. And then um, a lot of casters, um, also started that way, like uh, like Zeus. If you know Zeus, he also started with that. Doggy also started streaming with that was too. This a pre Chantel. Was this a precursor to MCL? It, it is totally different because oh, uh, MCL is else. MCL is something else. And this yeah. one, uh, I think it's called the Global Arena, where it's actually just you know you just have to reach a uh, uh, MMR requirement. Yeah. Mm. You can group up as five, and then you, you can participate in tournaments. And a lot of uh, pros actually started that way. Yeah, only OGs would know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, no, no, there's no one else here. Yeah. <laughs> Where were you looking at? I was about to point out someone, but <laughs> no, there's no one. Well, there is someone there. Hello. Yeah. Hello. So with that said, again, we uh, <laughs> implore you to go join in in the eSports for Everyone, the e-project, because the greats of all time, the number one players in all the world started yeah. this way. So if you want the same for your region, for your country, for your community, Join an e-project tournament now. Again, you can just scrub back e into the QR and join there. Back into the matchup, let's talk about game number two. After we go ahead and look for our smart nice. game face of the day. Renmar, oh. you know what comes next. MPL oh, no. Arena, be the next smart game face of the day winner. All right, so what people do is they just flash the hashtag, the power of a smart, on your devices in a green background. They just need to put their game face on to win a redeemable in-game code. Which means he will do his game face too. Yeah, it's a trend here. Every time, whoever wins, I have to copy the face. That's the price to pay for being that tall. Here we go. <laughs> Shooting gallery. Good. What you got? That's that's not the rule. You, you did not follow the rule. Take it easy on me. Here take we go. It easy green on background, me, madam. Or green font. Are we accepting this? Uh, uh, on a technicality, I think we might allow it. Commissioner, what do we say? Oh, it's not. Oh, oh, all right, cool. All right, we got the message. Anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, oh, oh, oh. Okay, okay. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. oh Phoenix fam. No, 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 no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, oh. Oh, Are they okay? Oh, oh. Wait, yeah. hey. maybe. More than okay. They're, they're yeah. actually the winner. Okay. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you for taking it. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, 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 okay. He changed it. He swerved it. Okay, so I have to copy the you have game to, face. You have to very slightly tremble. <laughs> Uh, I saw. I think I saw a little bit of this. There you go. <laughs> All right, there you go. Okay. Congratulations to our <laughs> smart game face of the day winner. I love winner. my job too much. Thank you, Renmar yeah. Santa Cruz, for always being a sport about it. Let's talk about game number two here. Smart Omega. We agreed on some points that they did in game number one. Disagreed with one stickling factor. Would you guys agree that maybe somewhere, somehow, in the draft? They pivoted on that ruby. For sure, for yeah. sure. Uh, they, they really um, uh, they understood that it is a good hero to pick up at first because of the flex pick, but sometimes they overcommit to it. But I do feel that um, it's not just about the ruby pick that kind of made it difficult. It's the fact that uh, Blacklist International answered it with the Paquito. That's why probably the Paquito was one of the early pickups. In, in fact, it was the first pickup, right? Because That's right. if you do pick up the ruby, you commit to a front-to-back composition where you don't mm -hmm. necessarily have the map control that you're looking for. Maybe they're trying to fix it by having the Rafaela, but I did yeah. not see that. I did not see them taking advantage of the extra movement speed yeah. uh, for that uh, Rafaela. Yeah, that did look like a switch up, and I think we can see it because usually when teams suddenly switch up uh, their draft, but they can play aggressive, they just play super aggressive at the start. And the fact that after their aggressive start with the first two jungle rotations and buff spawns, they look kind of lost. As if it's like, okay, what's our next movement here? How do we handle this? Oh, Jones not getting enough help. We're trying to go to the 
bot side or a different part of the map. Our, our wave clear is kind of off. But it really looked like as time went on, Omega got comfortable with the lineup that they ended up drafting. And again, that's a sign for me of a mid-draft pivot. Yeah, is they exactly. eventually land into the comfort that they were going for anyways. Yeah. Uh, here we go, game number two. It's Blacklist on the play. Something tells me, Wolf, I don't know if you agree with me, they're setting up a Nolan pick here. Yeah. They ban the Exborg, the well, Nolan. It's banned. It's uh, sorry, banned. a Nathan, Nathan. play. Yeah. There you go. Oh. Uh, both time travelers. Yeah. Uh, they first pick the Nova, though. Still very Nathanable. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I uh, I love that. What here he said. Okay. Oh, they oh, took it. No. What he a steal. It. What a Whoa. steal. Yo, cold blooded though. No reactions no. from the side of Blacklist. Coach stronger. What a steal. Man, I think you go Yuzhong for Blacklist or or Pack actually. Paquito still good. Paquito and um, probably Martis here for Blacklist International. But then it's not great. Or maybe a, just a Baksha. Just oh. just go with that. Yep. Shout out to the team correspondent of Omega, by the way, wearing a full on 1 1 cosplayer. Yeah. Pachi Macharom. What? Pachi Macharom. Pachi. That's her oh, full yeah. name. Really? Yeah. yeah. Pachi Macharom. Also known as Siora, but. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember her. That's Ciora. neither here nor there. Here we go. Yeah. One more I pick. Do they go pack? The carry. Okay. Yeah. If that, yeah, that's carry. Carry me a door. Pretty standard. Um. You're gonna be looking for uh, frontliner now for Omega, apart from the Ruby. So maybe go Barrett's actually. Ooh, um, kind of like that, that. That I like. That I yeah. like. It was just but yesterday that Blacklist learned that lesson the hard way. They picked. Uh, was that a Nolan Nathan lineup? Yeah, it was. <laughs> right, like when yeah. you have a Nathan in your lineup, you want something chunky. Yes. Mm -hmm. You get have two cores that are uh, soft like that. Quick spotlight onto uh, Core H2 here. 13 to 16 on that Ling, but we're not going to be seeing Ling here. We're going to be seeing the Barats. Yep. Mm. Absolutely a good hero, uh, like we mentioned. Great hero. So, I think you ban Benedetta and Paquito, or any kind of uh, Edward hero that goes to the yeah. backlines. That would be a problem for the Nathan, right? So... I think I'd rather ban Benedetta than yep. because the of the Petri. That's right. And also, that the idea of the Yuzhong, I guess, is also a, uh, oh. a ban. But I do have to mention here, Blacklist historically doesn't pick Yuzhong as much. That's true. And also because you can just pop the Purify on Nathan. Yeah, that's true. Oh, that's good true. ban. Great ban actually from Blacklist. Taking away the Rafaela because Rafa Nathan is also pretty strong too. Mm. Yeah, and because they now have enough of a front line, they can put okay. a utility in the room. Yeah. Is that the previous correspondent winner? Yep, defending, yeah. defending. Uh, correspondent of the season champion, Dani Caswazo. The reigning defending. One of these days, I'm going to intro her. Yeah. And that's exactly how I'm going to deliver it. I haven't been it, hearing yeah. from our correspondents much. Yeah. Uh, it would be mm. nice to, to get I, them in. Yeah. I just missed the RSG uh, correspondent. Former. The former yeah, RSG, RSG correspondent. correspondent. That's right. Mark Adrian Butters. He's on. Yeah. One of the greats. One, one of the greats. All time greats in the history, in the long history yep. of team correspondence. Three as he's on. That has uh, spans in season 12. Hot take. Hot take. He got robbed. Last season. Nah, nah, he nah, nah, nah. He got robbed last nah, season. Nah. That's my hot take. <laughs> you're, you, 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 you had your fair share of hot takes so far. That is season. my hot take. You're saying you should have won. Yes. I, I, I'm i saying. I agree. I'm not mincing my words here. I really? Agree. I'm the only one in Swazo Army right now? Yes, you are. All right. Fine. <laughs> We're going to have to talk later, gentlemen. <laughs> All right. Here we go. One more ban for Blacks International. Hmm. Um, are you going to take out one more roamer here? <laughs> well, you do. Oh, <laughs> also yeah. Good one. They are, they are they are really yeah. giving the uh, the goat here the OG goat Ooh. a lot of trouble. So you you want to look for a hero that can speed up this uh, speed this bar barrett up, maybe. Ooh, so <coughs> what if they go savior actually? Oh, oh they they snatched up a Paquito. a mid lane savior yeah. And the persecuted. Oh, but in this scenario, I've so actually okay. Okay, let him talk. Let him talk. let the guy talk. All right, thank you, Paquito. Are you good? He's done. Okay, He's done. Okay. He does? Okay. If we were talking about like Benedetta and stuff earlier, I would have preferred like the Blackest ended up with Benedetta. It looks yeah. like they will. It looks like they will. Oh. Yeah. yeah. On point. You can't ban everything. Yeah. Great job. So you're left with maybe Fredrin here if you're Blacklist. Freddy. <laughs> or Akai, actually. Fred or Akai. That's what I'm looking uh, Akai at. Akai would be good because Omega plays such a tight position. Like a heavy spin to disrupt that would be good. Okay. Man, okay. so I'm seeing Lilia actually here for Exhort. But like I said, maybe the Xavier is 
not a bad option. It was yeah. picked up by another team yesterday. Aqua. It was RG. Aqua. RG. It's not yeah. going to take a while. It's not, not going to take too long. If you play the Xavier. It is. Xavier it is. plus Nolan. Mm. But it's yeah. going to be at the oh, no, dawning Nathan, light. Sorry. It's, it's a long range battle, right? Yeah. Okay. Nope. Oh, oh my god. This no. was in the back of my head, but I didn't want to yeah. say it because it made no sense it's to me. It's all in, bro. It's all in on Big J. Oh, is this a. No, they're doing Whoa. the blacklist. It's a jungle. Wait, it's a what? jungle. Wait, wait. Wait. What? They're, they're pulling the mirror. The yeah. They're mirroring blacklist. You saw x even gave H2 like a little bit of a high five. Like, oh, you can do this. Jungle look, look Nathan. Look like, oh, mid Barrett. What? Tatsui's like, what? He's like, jungle just, Nathan, mid Barrett's. Mid Barrett. Five ruby. I, I Officer, like, five florin. I kind of like mid Barrett's. <laughs> By it's the a, way, gold, gold ruby. There it is. It's, it's exactly wow. what Ohe played. Everything. Last week? Dude, it's, it's such It's nuts. <laughs> Everything is nuts! I like it. And uh, when everything is nuts, you turn it upside down, you get stunned. Oh man, this is why Butters lost last season. What? Don't don't, get, don't okay, remind me. Don't sorry, remind sorry, me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't remind me. So Game number all two. Way. It's all on the line this time for the Barangay as they try to make it to game three with such a risky gambit, putting a page <sighs> out of blacklist right in front of them. This is game number two. Will it work? No purify. On Nathan, against a Minotaur, against this Benedetta with the Petrify, I'm scared. I'm legit scared for H2. Yeah, let's see. Uh, John Paul's got to protect himself. And so he has made it work, and I can't believe Omega are really drafting. Like, they're long time round. It's such an Omega thing to do. You field your veterans, and you, in their first full series, is against <sighs> Blacklist, you make them draft lineups reminiscent of Blacklist. Okay, here's a quote. Uh, I'd like to think from season 10 or season 11, where coach Brian Pandalim of RSG said, I don't want to face Omega, because when you think they're going to do one thing, they do the complete opposite, and it throws them off. Yeah. I don't want to face Omega. They are Lason. La no. Close enough. Did you get it now? No. Okay, so H2 close. receives the, the flower, which obviously is great. Uh, it's a uh, five percent adaptive attack, and that's definitely good for some some a hero like Nathan that kind of have ooh, a ooh. you know has a mixture of both magic and physical. Yeah, definitely. Oh, you got a bit of smack there. H2 is still looking for level four. Part of his rotation disrupted by an invasion of uh, by Blacklist International. You gotta take it slow, or is that yeah. counterproductive? Does, does Omega wait for a power spike on H2 here? Or do they, well, they they have no choice, or unfortunately. They pick random fights that even Blacklist weren't expecting. Well, uh, I, I, unfortunately, Dan, Leo, Kubangai, they really have to wait for H2. Well, There's they really shouldn't. no way. They shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. And at the same time, I think they have to be proactive. It's not just waiting, but being proactive about it. And they're not going to be able to contest this turtle because uh, out of rotation is the Nathan. They're going to be taking their time. See, Haji actually is in there. I like to find a blow. Entry in by Edward. Just provided a little bit of space. Blacklist gets a turtle without a problem. Oh, okay. whoa, 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 H2. Haji has been on him this entire time. Petrify, Shadow Slash by Edward. First blood, not the start Omega wants. There's nothing H2 could have done there. Abu Jijing, talk to me about why they were so deep in front of oh, H2 like that. Man. How'd they get there? Well, they do have uh, they do have this Minotaur with the Flicker that freshly got off level 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 four, and they know that H2 will need to farm. And there's like I said, no no purify on the Nathan. There's a natural cleanse for that hero, but it will now never be enough. So at two and a half minutes, Blacks International got away with murder, and it was in your face. Did they just straight up walked into Omega's front door, into their jungle, and said, you know what, H2? This has to stop. After taking first turtle clean, too. Yeah. And I'm looking. Oh, Ryota versus Edward. Ryota brought low. He ate oh. up an electro final blow. Petrify not on there for no Edward. We. No, we don't do it. No, we. No, we. Oh, no, that, we. That's uh, Ryota's name for people yep. wondering. That's right. What's his last name again? Makasa. Makasa. Oh, there, there. Thank you. Former national athlete. Won the gold medal with exactly. Seabol last yeah. year in Cambodia. Exactly. He was uh, one of the people with the uh, year of triumph. Yep. And with AP Brent's version of In Seabol. fact, Omega has two gold medalists. That's right. Uh, him and Rebo right yeah, now. Yeah, that's true. Wow. In, in, in <laughs> active deployment on the map right now. This is, this is not dangerous what Rio's doing. Oh! oh okay. Sword meets so, um, fists. <laughs> I, 
I, I forgot yeah. oh, the way for it, but here comes Haji. Mino and Fury hey, hey. onto two. Oh. HJ able to get away on time, but this is actually the purple buff going to the Sensui. Exhort and the members of Omega pressing forward. They're trying to chase after Haji, but they don't jump! Big With a flicker! I'm offended, Ultimate by the Ruby. And even Omega were a little bit surprised because it doesn't look like they're completely ready for that one. Jump not trying to survive, but Oheb takes him down. Big J coming in clutch. Another hero play. Four minutes in. I mean, it slows down Blacklist. Gives Omega some bit of a clap back. Now Turtle Fight coming up. They have Retribution this time, Omega. Yeah, and since so he's far. Woohoo! And they get the Turtle. What a turn of events. Big J with the play. It all started with Exhort with that flicker play going for Daytona's welcome. Actually, land, um, when he popped the flicker, he managed to land that stun onto two members. Then it was quickly followed up by Joe with that flicker play for himself. Eventually, was taken out by Oheb, which is, by the way, we haven't been talking. Oheb is having a lot of good time down the bottom lane. Yeah. So he's okay. But then Omega, definitely a disastrous first two minutes, but it was salvaged by two hero plays. Yeah. And so far, I think the only reason why we don't get to talk about Oheb much is because Jome lets him have the lane. Again, Jome is still down on XP, right? Yeah. True. And then Oheb knows that he's not needed elsewhere on the map is because there's enough pressure onto Omega's weak points this early on. So we can expect maybe KL1 to come into play in a few minutes, especially once Lord comes up. Talking about it, yeah, he's oh, wow. still up a thousand gold on yeah. Jome. Yeah, a just thousand a, gold. It's the war axe on the ruby. Man, at this point, well, we know that the, the, the three item power spike of a Ruby is much stronger than the three item spike of a Marksman, but eventually in the late game, oh. there will not be enough damage for Jome. Here we go again. Big actual echo. His Blacklist knows that they cannot fully commit into this. Even uh, sometimes it feels like uh, even Blacklist is a little bit scrambled with their rotations because how Omega's rotations are kind of scrambled oh. by nature. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Entropy actually committed by H2 in the mid lane to get away. He almost ran into Edward and Sensui. Yeah. Uh, bit of good news though for uh, H2. Quick cooldown on Entropy. So yeah. uh, not something he has to worry about. To be specific, Very fast. there is but, uh, what, 20 something Ooh. seconds once Ifer it's fully leveled. Ifer Nile already committed there by Edward. Ryota, ooh, eats up a Star Shatter. By the Navaria and Blacklist are just gonna continue controlling the mid. And the fact that the minion waves in mid are controlled right now, by Blacklist means, I feel like it's gonna be too risky if Omega try, no. but. H2, by the way, stole the purple buff with using oh, the oh, ultimate. H2! He eats up the Petrify, the full combo of the Benedetta. Oh my God. That should not have been the case. Omega now trying to scrabble, trying to find a play. They have to somehow focus on Satsui, but they're somehow whittling down the turtle. They're gonna try to go after Satsui, charging it up. No, Exert was actually trying to go after Edward, trying to interrupt the Fredrin. Somehow they're gonna try to steal this turtle under the notes of Blacklist International because if they get it, Whoa! somehow what? Ryota with a punch, a knockout strike to take the turtle for Omega. And that means Omega can team fight. They have the Barretts with them. How the heck did they get that bottom lane? Oheb. Gets its first tower down. How exactly is unbelievable? Sheer math. It was a four v four. It was a four v four. No jungler for Omega, and then Ryota com comes in. I got this. I'ma do my own thing. Gets it for himself. You gotta have to come in Blacklist International though. The moment they saw H2 already utilizing the ultimate, they jumped. They committed all the petrify as well as the the flicker play from Haji. Okay, Jome, can you Jome? TP out? Whoa! Oh, that was so close! Woo! The pop of the concussive blast! Big J knows how to put on a show! Edward goes ahead, cuts right through the back line. H2 in Rebo, trying to get some farm onto yeah. Omega's jungler right now. And again, the slower the game goes, the more back and forths we get. Yeah. I think there's more of a chance Omega can actually take us to game three. Maybe. Let's see if that happens right now. Their lineup. Having a lot of problems there. x actually uses the Deathless Welcome. That's Jome under the tower against three members of Blacklist International. He eats up the ultimate of the Minotaur as well. Ryota, he sees Oheb. He's going to be able to take him down to the tower. Gets taken down there. Full on knockout strike. The stun as well coming from the floor in. Oh, I'm trying to survive. Oh, Brace's Wrath. H2. Actually, no, but no. H2. H2 with an entropy. And the turnaround is it because Oheb, the gold leader of Blacklist International, is down. But in the bottom lane, Edward was pushing it out. Small win in the fight for Omega, but they're losing map control still. Clutch Entropy by H2 there. He may have been benched for the longest time now, but he still has a killer instinct set in. Oh, oh. mid lane push from Edward. Haji! Haji, Haji really low here. Oh, oh. Ryota has to go for it. 
Expecting you. Uh, they don't get the tower. Oh, Star no. Shatter. Oh, it's not no. going to kill him unless. Oh, oh Edward, Edward, really Edward, Edward, Edward might. Edward just might. Oh, what a Ryota trying to find it. Uh, I for no! Oh! No! No! Ryota! What the flaker? Here comes Big J. I'm offended. He is able to find you. Uh, Ryota oh, again. Oh, oh. All right, the scramble has what? led to Blacklist getting a free go at the Lord. And something tells me Omega knows, but something has to kick in somewhere. All of these fun fights and plays yeah. are resulting too much for the Barangay. Atoy R, leader of the Atoy Army, now they're pushing. Oh, Joe misses it. Could have been big if they were able to take down Oheb there. The tower's gonna fall though. Omega trying to equalize Edward, finds the angle. Cool. Not to take away from Omega. Cool, cool. is cool. Cool is cool. Cool is cool. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable play coming out from Ryota. Flickering in and then uh, landing the jab actually to get the, the extra shields. Yeah. And obviously the retribution coming out from H2 came in clutch as well. However, they still lost the Lord. That's still an important objective here. Yeah. As flashy as Omega's place where we gotta have to commend Edward because not only did he push two turrets in the bottom lane, he also pushed the mid lane turret. Yeah. So there's a lot of map control problems for Omega now. And so these are symptoms of the first game. Oh, oh, that's as true. Cool as it is, and as as many signs yeah. of, of life Omega may put on, they're still losing on a fundamental sense. Yeah. Uh, again, majority of these players on the side of Blacklist International oh. went through the M5 World Championship where controlling the map, minion wave control, was so important. That's the modern day game of MLBB, while well, Omega, as you mentioned, Ryota, as oh! the card! He wins the 1v1! He wins the 1v1! <laughs> Makasa gets now, the knockout. And now they're gonna be going forward, x is gonna be able to get the dead on his welcome there onto Sensui, but Sensui is gonna be tanky. Haji and you are trying to find the damage to Wrath gets dealt out. Oheb able to free hit right now, it looks like Omega can't reach Oheb. Ryota once again from the back, Hodge. he's gonna be able to get Sensui, he finds Oheb as well. Omega turning it around! Omega Ooh! has turned it around! The Barangay scores a four for one trade. They're gonna go straight for mid. And just like that, Yue can only watch. This is old man strength. That's what I'm talking about. It's a thing and you're seeing it. I'm seeing it from Ryota. Turning back the clock with this Paquito making the hero plays that Omega needed. Three kills in the last two minutes because of Ryota. Noe. No, no, we no win for Omega. Ooh. Oh, wow. The last time Barats was played in mid was by TNC Pro Team in Season 8. So I'd like to think that was an experimental approach to the hero. And here we're seeing it again in the same light. But Omega's making it work. That was the key Ooh. to victory. We talked about running back the clock in terms of showing the history of the league. And that's with a big pick right there in mid. Multi-generational talent. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Edward is nodding in approval like, hey, I, I would play the Paquito just the same way. That That's yeah. the right play there, uh, Riota. Good call. How did he burst him down that much? See Halberd, Malefic Roar, Hunter Strike. That's how. The yeah. Trinity in the hands of Riota. It felt even better for the Riota because he was also able to find Oheb a little bit. And that little bit of knock up onto Oheb was more than enough for Omega to find the opening to eventually take him down. So now it's even. I can't believe it. Now it's even. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is a uh, Luminous Lord spawning in the lower quarter. H2 going for it. Spotted still by yeah. the Echoes. Yue, very hard to miss. Full and now interest. the dance begins. Lord here approaching half health. Exhort obliging in the dance. Four members from Omega, four members from Black. Once again, going for the soft reset. 1v1! 1v1! Ryota and Edward, sword versus fist. Ryota trying to find the opening there. Edward slashes away. Ryota with the combo, a lot of damage, forcing out Ooh. the Electro final blow. It's four versus four. The two EXP laners are playing chicken with each other. But so now who's gonna get this here? That's the hard reset coming in. One more time, let's dance. Haji trying to get for the pull. And just like that, Sensui dives in. This is dangerous. Yeah. Oh. And Nature is also purple buff dependent, by the way, but it look he takes it so easily. Whoa! Ryota because push. of Ryota's 1v1, I'd call it technical knockout. He gets yeah. a push! Haji on the 
Right side. Oh, why Bush? Watch the map as we're watching the Lord. Sasui here. Haji, great position by him. Oh, here as well. Oh, H2 spots him. He spots him with the entropy. He's not going to get close. Exhort with a Bonk. flicker. Death as well. Come on to Haji. The roamer with a massive middle one. Fury. Is this enough time to ask you? Oh! Sasui goes in. Appraiser's Wrath and Naga, but that's what? the kill of the Minotaur. Who got the Lord? It was Agent Zero. Yet again, the fight was split between the two, and it's Blacklist who tried. Triumphs, two kills plus the Lord. The synchronous engage by Blacks International could have sworn there was a Cyclone Eye underneath Sensui. Yeah. The way he flickered in with the Minoan Fury, with Haji. Oh my god. And it led to such a big win. Blacklist, yes, trades two for one, but still walks away with the Lord. Exactly. They got the Lord because Edward was there. And even when the two junglers are isolated, the damage uh -huh. out of Edward was m more than enough. And the fact that they took out Ryota. That's gonna be massive for Omega. My, my, my mind is for like... For a blacklist, I mean. Yeah, I'm sort of wondering, did it look like that because it wasn't just a dash by Sensui? Was he like pulled back by either an ult by the Ruby or the missiles of the... Uh, maybe the missiles, parents? because uh, Ruby was in front of the Lord. Ah, uh, yes. was in front of the Lord. So pushed into by the missiles from and Exord, dash. and then maybe even displaced by one of uh, H2's skills. True. That gave him a little... I don't, it's displacement, man, but it went all to yeah. Blacklist's way. Now Lord's going to be marching in. Again. Big five-man echoes. Oh, oh my Agent God. Zero goes in, but he gets dead and is welcomed. Similar to what happened in the game number one, a little bit too eager was Edward. And Omega are going to try to punish Blacklist by... Let's see if they can get map control after this. Hey, can somebody check if there's an imposter hiding inside Edward's skin? Because <laughs> that is... That's two Edward mistakes in one series. You, you know what I'm, gonna say? I'm, I'm saying now? <laughs> that's so weird. But I understand why he went for that. Because they landed an Echo, which means that the Petrify will be, yeah. oh. you know? It's, oh. a five it's always petrify. tempting. Oh, wait, it's wait, wait, always wait. tempting. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Running it back in mid. Going for the full on engage. Finding a Siege. Uh, Nope, I think Omega overshot. All right, we'll just take something yeah. else. Ooh. Still hurting there with the Star Shatters. Purple buff will be get taken away. I think it's because of the TPs from Omega. I'm not going to say Edward's tilted, but again, the Filipino term, gigil. Uh, he, he's hungry. Which so years later still does not have a direct translation. Uh, yeah, something true. else to note. Something else to note. Real quick, look at the items. Uh, I'm trying to think of why Edward would have done that. Maybe even after the five, the promise of five-man petrify. Yeah. Yeah. No one on Blacklist's lineup can actually dive in as deep as him. Exactly. So, like, what exactly. was the call? Yeah, that's a weird call. <sighs> and I don't think that they have minions anyways in the bottom lane. So, yeah. So many weird hmm. interactions. Like I said, somebody check who's hiding yeah. beneath Edward's skin. I I'm going to pose, like, one last theory. Okay. I think he's just really trying to gamble and get an EXP laner for H2 trade. Like he was trying to trade himself okay. for H2 somehow. Uh, because again, yeah, H2 yeah. is one of the few ways actually Omega defends. Yeah, That's right. Omega has very bad wave clear. Yeah. Yep. But I also am sort of in the camp of fool that maybe he's wearing an Edward bodysuit. Yeah. That's the theory. <laughs> press 1 if you believe, press 2 if you think it's... It's impossible. <laughs> oh, man. The way that uh, Edward has been playing with uh, these little fumbles, I'd like to think more that maybe it is a doppelganger because that, that's more of a thing than old man strength. Here we go. <laughs> Lord Come Dance coming up. Lord less than half health. Okay. Sensui with the pull. Soft reset. Neither team letting go. Again, the 1v1 XP laner matchup still happening. Close and to Omega's oh. purple. No welcome. No Detonis welcome. Is anyone going to reset? Jom! Andrew Jom goes Haji! Oh, he fights Haji! Minnow one Fury. Okay. Still, Edward. Come, Edward coming in, Petrify like to find a blow! Agent Zero! Now there oh. is something that isn't a mistake. Calculated, no. intentional, cold-blooded by Edward. And now he's going to be chasing after Ryota. Are they going to duel it out again? He has an immortality. Ryota only has his shield, his fist. There's Yue, there's Haji. Oh. And Ryota will be able to flicker away. But he's going back. Omega still at the Lord. Run, no, we run. Doom again, double pull. Big damage onto this ruby. But he falls. Ex uh, exhort. Actually able to knock by the members of Blacklist through the wall. But no, that's it. Blacklist gets this Lord. There was no Un recompense. <laughs> I don't know what Joe was thinking, man. Me too. Unbelievable jump, though. Coming up from Edward. Waiting for the right moment. One shot potential against H2. Well, there was Haji that flickered in afterwards, but that's besides the point. Oh, no. No purify on the Nathan. 
How many times should I say it? That's a problem. You know what's more beautiful? It's the fact that it was well communicated that the entropy has already been used. Exactly. Yeah. That the switch has already been pulled and there was no way H2 was going to walk away from anything. If he could get away from something, he would have to literally walk. And I like to think it's a little bit of a breakdown in communication by the members of Omega. They needed to help H2. There was no one there with Ouch. him. Everyone else was looking forward to just staying forward. Oh, here we go. Another echo. Potentially the final siege here by Blacklist. Penetrating through mid. Next stop down bottom. Where's the fight going to take him? Lord taken care of here. They lose two inhibitors. Yeah, no flicker for Haji, so no surprise initiation there. So they're backing off. They're backing off just for now, waiting for the minion waves. But uh, they're going to make a play here for this tower because it's still almost two minutes plus. Or, or around two minutes or so and counting, ticking down. Before this Lord spawns, Usually teams would just commit a play there, play around this area, stop them from getting any resources. Yep, so uh, it looks like Blacklist telegraphing uh, that they will yes. make a play here, make a siege. And then from there, go for the next Lord. Oh, wait, okay, wait, wait, there's wait, a play. Wait. Joe with the pull! I like to find a blow to counteract it. Edward is dashing and damaging the members of Omega right now. Whoa! Exhort, able to get away. Sensui has immortality. Abrazer's wrath gets interrupted by Jumpstone. Oh! oh! But the Star Shatter by the Navaria takes out the Ruby. Omega lose one. Five versus four. But Black was a kind of low. You have to back off just a little bit, but it looks like they're going to try to play around it. Close, but not quite. You yes, right side. they do get their health oh, down. Oh, no way. 100% echoes. Star Shatter onto H2. Entropy committed. Haji with a Minoa and Fury. He gets a knock up H2 as well. But H2. No, look at Edward. He finds the mark on H2. He finds the Nathan and Blacklist International. Find the sweep over their rivals. Over the Barangay. Can confirm this still is the same old... Same old Edward playing for Black International, able to find H2 back to back to back to score the sweep. 2 0 for Black. And how about that, UA? Back to back games with perfect usages of the Echo, giving so much of an advantage for Blacklist International. Then Edward. Edward, my man. I really doubted his mistakes because it was very, you know, I don't know, uncanny yeah. for Edward. It didn't look like Edward. But that last two jumps <laughs> on to, onto H2, that really looked like Edward. Yeah, uh, great positioning and uh, just hunting down by Edward, being able to find H2 over and over again. Uh, the older version of Omega, old man strength Omega. Take a bow. But that was a hell of a series. It's called OG Omega. OG as they Omega. now take Woo! their walk. GG well played. OMG. A lot of concepts that they tried to make work here yeah. in this two game series, in this matchup against Black, but not quite. They'll be taking a break to try and figure that out as we hear from Marakino and Hans now on stage with Blacklist. All right, agents, let me hear it from you, Blacklist. Break the code, and they've been breaking the code. Congratulations. An incredible performance. Galing sa Blacklist International, Haji. I'll be giving the microphone to you. Considering na you've played with a lot of MPL Philippines' generation, you playing season two, Edward, at tagal mo na nandito sa MPL, and also with Sensui and Yue, na you could say that the new generation is in. How does it feel na you're still here, you are competing, and Napaganda ng performance mo noong game number two into bringing you to victory. Um, ano, una -una po, uh, chamba lang po yun. Uh, pero ano po talaga, um, uh, pinipilit ko po mag-improve ano, everyday ganun. Sa mga bawat troll. Tapos yun po, um, dinadaan ko lang po sa experience. Ganun. Going with experience and you know, kahit na matagal pa, kahit matagal na siyang nandito sa MPL, the improvement doesn't stop there. Way to go para kay Hachi. Alam mo, tinanong ko si Coach Juan katabi ko ngayon, tinanong ko, magbabakasyon ba kayo? Meron ba kayong pupuntahan? Oh, oh. Naisip ko kasi baka mag-brakay sila. Baka they go somewhere. <laughs> Pero I picked up something. Coach, hindi daw kayo magbabakasyon, sabi mo? Ah, hindi. Wala kaming ano, bakasyon kasi unang-una kailangan namin uh, mag-grind pa dahil tayo kami kahapon. 
And siguro, talagang kailangan pa namin mag-improve dahil sa mga pinapakita ng mga top-tier teams ngayon. Talagang uh, kung pag-agabanin man nila kami ngayon, parang uh, hindi, hindi siya 50-50 eh. Mas mababa pa sa 50-50. So sa harap na mag-vacation, talagang i-gagrind na lang namin. So dahil hindi daw na sweet, walang vacation. Pero ito naman, on a lighter note, tapusin natin yung ginawa natin kanina. Okay. Coach Sige. Master the Basics, ikaw, nasa iyo yung, yung mic. Okay? I'm gonna put my hand on top of everyone. So, sabihin mo kung OA or nonchalant. Alright? O, um, umpisa natin kay Coach Von. No, nonchalant. Nonchalant. Okay. Ito. Ang kalesan? Uh, double OA. <laughs> double OA. Double OA. Ito, 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 ito. Ito. OM. Uh, nonchalant. nonchalant. Okay. Si Dex. Do, 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 triple OA. Triple OA. Uh, nonchalant. Uh, nonchalant. No comment. No, <laughs> no comment. Nonchalant siya na siya. Nonchalant. Ito, ito, kayo, kayo. Edward, Edward, siya naman. Hindi ko alam. Siyo yata may gusto mong ano. Ito, ito. Siyo yung gusto sumagot. Ano yun? USC coach ba? O A ba si coach o nonchalant? Neutral. Neutral. Takot, takot sila. 50-50. Ayaw, ayaw din na magkamali. Ayaw din na magkamali. Once again, congratulations to Blacklist International. May you have a great two-week break. You may now take your bow and take your walk of victory. All right, agents, let me hear it from you once again. Blacklist. Congratulations. Ang lupit no na kahit nagkaroon sila ng sweet ngayong araw na to, Hindi sila magbe-break. Kailangan grind pa rin ng grind. Kumbaga hindi sila na kontento doon sa performance that they've shown today and I'm sure na babalik na mas malakas ang Blacklist International right after our long break. Tingnan natin kung kontento nga ba ang ating mga casters sa kanilang analysis. So we're going to go back to them and break it down for you. Casters, pasok. Marin Hans asking if uh, we were contented with what we saw, uh -huh. uh, I'd like to think there was enough on showcase there to yes. close up mm. week number two of MPL Philippines season 13. Uh, but is it just me or does it seem like despite the sweeping win, it's like Blacklist definitely felt like we could have done better? Yeah, it looks like it. Um, going into this, Omega definitely were the underdogs, especially this version For of sure. Omega from their performance uh, in day number one of this week. But they gave them hell. They made them fight hard for it. Yeah, I, I think I, I, I do agree. Like uh, it kind of felt like Blacklist surely won that, but it, it didn't look very clean at all. Maybe because of the fumbles that we've seen huh? from uh, players that we don't normally see fumbles like that, right? Very, very um, uncanny performance from some of their players. But at the same time, uh, Omega, I, I think that they should not be relying on this kind of win condition where they have to be crafty. You know, yeah. it's it, it's just. Sometimes you what you you just you have to I don't know maybe uh, swallow a sword just to win a talent competition. It's, it felt like that. It's a whole nother discipline, especially yeah. if you're not trained to do such a thing, uh, which I've never seen in real life, by the yeah. way. <laughs> Let's talk about game number two. Let's award our MVP here, playing for Blacks International. Wolf, what you got? Should be Edward, right? But then again, yeah. two, two, and five after what? A massive, uh, well, not really, not really a blunder, but some mistakes that we saw from Edward. Game number one, game number two, but he well made out for it. Like in a way, when he looked for H2, lands the one shot combo with his item, Heptasis, Deadly Blade, then uh, Hunter's like, and Malefic Roar with a little ignition. It was more than enough to go up against H2, which kind of makes me think: Why did Omega still force this jungle? Nathan, when we know that the Purify is needed, I mean, on top of the Entropy that you have a way to naturally cleanse some of your debuffs, but it's evidently not enough. And look at the outplay from Ryota. He is him moment from Noe Makasa. Going for the Flicker, then going for the jab for a little bit of an extra uh, shielding. Then he goes for the for the solo kill on Edward, then gets the second kill on Sensui. Then we'll get another one on Oheb with the combo that he has. Double kill eventually, but three kills in the past minute. However, there it goes, Sensui being pushed back. And it was actually Haji just staying long enough and Joan being separated from his team that allowed the Blacklist International to eventually secure that Lord. And look at Edward, beautiful play from the back lines. Even Sensui and as well as Haji 
dipped back to that and didn't even need it. And another play. Look at Yue as well as Edward. Again, Alecto through the base building takes out H2 and then ends the game for the side of Blackness International. You can see that even when, you know, even with a scrappy team fight, Blackness International appeared to uh, have been showing signs of their past selves. But then again, like uh, Leo said, and I think that many viewers have noticed, there's a lot of there's a lot of problems that Blacklist International still needs to fix. However, if you now translate that to Omega, this lineup, it looks good if it works, but it it's just so difficult be because of the fact that four out of their five heroes are done in a creative manner. Ruby on the gold lane. You have Nathan, jungle, no pu you don't purify. You have the bats in the mid lane. And then the Florid. Florid itself is always played in the Rome role, but it's not a meta pick. So Omega just make it so difficult for them to win. It it kind of felt like they're choosing the the opposite of least path to least path of resistance or road path of least resistance. Ah. yeah, whatever that yeah. idiom is. No, I yeah. understand. <laughs> it doesn't make a lot of sense. But yeah, it feels like Omega needs to find a little bit more stability yeah. with the fundamentals. It's great that they can make these creative ideas work. No, yeah. they haven't gotten a win with it, but I mean, yeah, they put Blacklist uh, to the test here. But yeah. yeah, it would be good to see if they could replicate this with stable lineups exactly. based on the meta. Hey, maybe when we come back around after the break, uh, they might try to play with Phase Technician Chip, Ooh. that new hero. It's now available with instantaneous teleportation at your fingertips and unrestricted portals offering endless possibilities. Come join the game and develop your own unique strategy with Chip. Yeah, just get the hero and skin for only 469 diamonds in a bundle during the launch week and you can enjoy eating chips with this passive just like Leo did. Yeah. Oh, okay. I haven't had, have you ever tried Chip? Not yet. I have. I, I've seen it play, like I've watched. Because I don't have diamonds, frankly. Uh -oh. yeah. Sadly. I don't have them. I don't. I actually don't. I feel like that's a lie. I'm gonna show it to you. The diamonds, right? right? Yeah, no, no diamonds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. I'm. Uh, I don't believe it. I have the least amount of diamonds in this desk. The I'm more you say, the more it becomes sus. I'm skeptical. But yes, please do, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Chip is uh, bound to change. You know what? Let me post this question. All right. Folks at home, do you think Chip is going to be meta or not? That's it. Meta or not? Tell us. Meta no. or not? Meta. Meta. Wolf. Meta. Must be. Like, day meta. one, prior ban. You know what that feels like? That feels like a hero developed for the Philippine playstyle. Not even kidding. Yeah, it, it, yeah like, uh, controlling the map. Yeah, controlling Basically, the map. controlling the map. Could this be the kryptonite? to the Filipino dominance in international stages. Could, hmm. if, 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 if some way, somehow, Chip becomes the hero that allows for other regions to figure out how to make this work. I don't know. We're about to find out because we go back on Ooh. the air next, next week on the 5th of April. Yeah. That's week three, day one. RSG and Minana Evo is going to go head to head, followed up. By the Battle of Besties, AP Brand versus Omega. Oh man, Omega needs a lot of waking up because after yeah. the long break, if they haven't figured out anything, if they haven't changed, they're gonna be facing up against a team that doesn't need to change anything. Yeah, <laughs> AP Brand. Like I said, we're running out of, of adjectives to describe the team, and Omega has to face that tall mountain. Yeah. Well, RSGPH Minana, I feel like it's gonna be the, its own brand of special as well. Oh yeah. In Minana, Evo's put uh, AP Brand. Well, backs against the wall in that game number one. Uh, RGPH need to be ready. Yeah. Kirk v. Nats. Yeah. That's going to be a... Uh, oh, Kirk already faced up against Flap. Maybe against uh, Nats, it will be different, you know? Maybe Nibor. Or Nibor. Yeah. With that said, we're going to go ahead and call it a night here. As we throw it over to our hosts, on behalf of Wolf and Ren Mar Santa Cruz, my name is Leo. At your service. It's been awesome. Let's go to Hansen Mara. After today's matches, I am now 100% sure na may miss ko ang ating MPL Philippines action, especially next week. And speaking of next week, since we'll be having a break from our matches, ano plano mo, Mara? Ang plano ko, I've been wanting to see the sunset, okay. hands. Oh, so ang gusto ko to see the sunset on the horizon with the waters, I'm gonna be by the beach. Manifesting for yes. good weather for you. For good vibes, good weather. How about you, Hans? I mean, I'll just do sports. That's basically... The thing that I'll try to do as much as I can since, you know, we have a lot of time in our hands now and I 
Fortunately, we can do a little bit more of that during this break. I'm wondering what you guys are going to be doing. Put it down on the comment section below. And I hope you guys, all of you that are watching, will have a fruitful break as well. Dahil mapapang magpapamiss muna ang ating MPL Philippines. Muli, ako po si Mara Aquino. At ako naman si Hans Galeria. Nagpapaalalang, magkakaiba man ang ating pinagdadaanan. Sama-sama pa rin tayo sa laban. Para, para sa, sa tagumpay. tagumpay. Keep it good vibes, everybody. And see you on April 5.